Welcome to Group B of the Mythic Dungeon International Great Push Season 2023. I'm Dratnos, joined by Tettles over there, Mix, Zyro, and uh, Nagura as well. Oh, yeah, up over there. Great job, Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. We this practiced weekend, this like 10 times. <laughs> this was a spur of the moment decision to, uh, to go with that. This weekend, we've got some incredible teams that are going to be competing in some dungeons over the next three days as they try and push their keys up to the highest levels that they can go. Here is a quick look at our teams. Tettles, can you give us the quick, uh, what's the one sentence summary of each of these teams? Uh, NA's Last Hope is the team with uh, Dorky, Drogo, Goop, Junkrat, Smacked, basically the best NA team. I think also the only NA team that qualified. So uh, they're, they're the top seed of the weekend, the three seed. Uh, Legendary is the four seed. That's the team with Lapan, Wexy, Tobo, that style team. We saw them in the MDI. Uh, very good. Um, last moment is the El Broblio Enhancement Shaman Dream Team. They're a team that consistently is like one of the top five teams on live. Uh, their comp got nerfed. I'm interested in seeing how they're going to do. I think that they're uh, potentially, they potentially could play spoiler depending on how they've adapted. Uh, Ready Checks, that's a team with like Roybin and Shelly. This is a team that we've consistently seen in the MDI and the TGP for a while. Cool Beans is a team with Dr. J and Fem. Again, MDI, TGP mainstays. It's not inconsistent to see these guys uh, pretty often. Then Pixel has Lamike on it. So pretty much every team has some form of MDI or TGP experience or both. Yeah, last weekend we were talking about how it was going to be a, a group of death that weekend. This weekend seems almost more brutal in terms of just every single team here is really strong. And there you can see, of course, those uh, those wondering, where's Echo? Where's Echo? They'll be coming next weekend along with uh, a bunch of other names you'll recognize too. Uh, makes any any favorites from among our, our teams here? Any any uh, any special yeah. shoutouts or, or teams you want to mention in our group B here before we can actually see how well they all play? You know, I appreciate that you threw this question to me because I have a little bit of Germany bias coming through with last moment. Three of their players are from Germany. And uh, as you can see, I had a lot of fate and I knew that all of you <laughs> were going to pick NA's last hope. So I decided, OK, let's give them something else. And I picked two teams that I think actually have a really good chance to come in and be very strong, but I also want to say that this group particularly for me feels like a wild card group. Like every single team that's in here, I could see going all the way to the top, which is not something we have a lot. Yeah, the only, uh... not even second. Ah, yes. Yeah, switch it up a little bit. Or, come on. Not even wild card either. The, wow. Well, because I'm not Tettles. <laughs> Good point. Good point. <laughs> I think the thing for me is like time trials were one on a previous patch and so that can throw a wrench into things because the meta has evolved a lot um, and two like none of these teams really have like a ton of TGP experience just as like a unified group like last weekend we saw mandatory and perplex taking on those first two spots but these are teams that have played MDI and TGP together for a while and so you kind of expect them to have that level of cohesion now I think that this this weekend in this group is going to come down to a lot of practice like how many teams uh, have put in a lot of hours on the new patch and then what does your comp look like how does how has that evolved it has a team like cool beans got a lot better because they have dr j that mage specialist like it, it like does the meta evolve to be a lot better for them or a lot worse it's going to be really interesting to see like what comps in and decision making looks like for these teams yeah we've seen some uh, class balance come in this reset compared to last reset Zyro, any uh, any standout changes you think might affect things here in the class tuning, or do you think we're still going to see largely those three of those four nerfed specs still showing up? Well, the big thing is to look at the nerf column, obviously, right? Three of the staple DP or specs in general of our of our comp that we saw from last weekend got nerfed: augmentation, shadow priest, and guardian druid. Unfortunately, for people who don't want to see the same god run, good god comp run by every other team. Uh, we're still going to see that in every key, more than likely. I think, unfortunately, like, the wrong classes got nerfed. And obviously, Augmentation was extremely strong in terms of its utility, but, like, Fire Mage still is going to do the insane damage that it's doing, and it specifically needs Shadow and Augmentation to have that same effect on the group. Bear, like, got quote-unquote nerfed, but it's still, yeah. like, 
going to be the best for massive pulls, right? So, like, I don't really know. The, the nerfs clearly weren't enough, and the buffs were to classes that weren't ever going to be classes that took over the spot of the Fire Mage, because that's really the only interchangeable piece in the group comp. Like, as much as I would love to see, like, maybe an Affliction Lock in the Algathar Academy, I don't even know if we're going to see that, that this week, and that's a pretty uh, brave thing to say, considering we have Shelly Tyven in this group, right? That dude is a Warlock god. He, whenever it's even close to being good, he'll play it. So, unfortunately, meta's probably sticking right with where it was last week. Now, you mentioned the Algathar Academy. That is our returning Dragonflight Season 1 dungeon this weekend. The teams knew about it in advance as well, so uh, we didn't want to just spring a surprise old season dungeon on them, which means we're pretty likely to see that be the place that they're going to start off with today. We're going to reveal our other dungeons in, uh, like, one or two minutes here. But what are we expecting to see in the Algathar Academy? Any, any cool new, you know, Season 2 twists that might get brought here? I think um, we'll see some Wernstone things. Because that dungeon yeah. has had a lot of snapping, e even in the first season in the MDI. The Lasher's being snapped onto the Bird Boss and so on. And I do think with the Wernstone, which is like a 100-yard one, teleport, um, there's probably a lot of things we'll see with that one. I would have to guess. Yeah, we'll have to see what... Uh, oh. <laughs> Zyre, Zyre, we're gonna zoom in age. on your, on your, uh, your thermometer there. Ninety-three degrees. Yeah, my AC is out, and I, I live in Texas, so that that's the temperature it is in my room right now. <laughs> we'll we'll get through it. I promise. Well, free sauna. Uh, what, uh, Zyro, most European People countries don't have that. air conditioning. You, you should be thankful that you even have it most of the time. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did my time in the dungeons in London. All right. I don't want to. I don't want to go back there. Procking cauterize IRL up there. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> gonna be rough. Well, we're getting very close to when we will reveal our dungeons and affixes for this weekend, and we'll be able to get our teams underway. Of course, the way it works, we've, we're going to have five hours that open up. The teams will be gaming during those five hours with 20 minutes of breaks interspersed throughout that they're obligated to take. Uh, and there are six total dungeons this weekend. We're going to reveal four of them today and have one saved each for Saturday and Sunday. But crucially, at the end of each day, whichever team is lowest does get eliminated. Here are our day one dungeons, though. Tettles, anything jump out at you from the... Uh, the keys selected and the affixes available? So I, th I think that the tyrannical is typically the thing that I'm normally looking at whenever I'm looking at like these these affixes because tyrannical, I feel like it has capped the keys pretty hard in, uh, so in some of these instances. Freehold tyrannical was something that the teams played a lot during uh, qualifiers. So I think that they should be like, especially familiar with that. But what is tyrannical Algothar Academy really gonna look like? Um, like Overgrown Ancient and Croth were two of the largest pain points, especially in season one. And now you no longer have like access to Stasis Dispel from like because Preservation Evoker is not like super heavily favored in the meta. So like what what are those two bosses going to look like? I think and I think like how long is that going to like how long is that dungeon really going to fare? Because it's only a thirty two minute timer. Oh, looking at NA last hope, we already see some hovering going on from the Evoker there. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes, to no one's surprise, they're all in the Academy, right? Because that is, as we said, the dungeon that they knew is going to be part of the pool. And they didn't know which other dungeons of the Season 2 dungeons are going to be part. And therefore, this is the dungeon they have most prepared for. Yeah, and a last hope having some mobs snap down. Or maybe not snap, they're walking down. Because Goop on that Augmentation Evoker did hover all the way up there and tech them. And now they can play them together with those Lashers. Yeah, and honestly, this Algathar Academy, we didn't really have too much time to talk about it in that little like, preview there, but I think something that we're going to see here, since the teams, like we talked about, did know that this was going to be their dungeon this weekend, and they were able to practice it, we're probably going to see a lot of the evolutions in this dungeon that we saw throughout the MDI get put all together as a push key in this TGP. So things like snapping tech, things like what we saw from Inez Last Hope, and pulling trash past that barrier. Those are things that we're going to see a lot of this weekend. And also, I mean, looking at the affixes that we have on the dungeon, I mean, Tyrannical Algathar 
is a very scary place to be, right? Even though a lot of the bosses got nerfed over the course of Season 1, the damage output on these bosses is, is nasty, right? Uh, Overgrown Ancient, this AoE explosion, it's going to do a lot of damage to them. They'll need to have their personals up. Very similar, actually, to the Azure Vault that we saw last weekend. Uh, Croth is going to be nasty. Veximus is probably still, like, going to be one of the hardest bosses in the game to deal with once you push up to higher key levels. So I'm not really sure if this is going to be a dungeon that can get pushed up too high. I'm not sure uh, where it will where it will land. Obviously, there's the, you know, we don't know what, what the Season 1 to Season 2, like, scaling changes are going to be for this dungeon, but... I don't know. I'm really interested to see what they have cooked up for this dungeon. Yeah, I do think like the damage profile from the bosses is very like somewhat bursty, I would say, right? A lot of them have like big mm -hmm. hits, uh, and then not so much after. So maybe the evoker survivability that they provide with the group in combination with the mass barrier and um, the cooldowns from the paladin might actually like make it possible to do on somewhat high levels, but we'll see. This low key here, this 22 that they start with, is definitely going to be three chestable, especially with the route that's, uh, routes that these teams are running right here with all of these uh, huge pulls coming in. But uh, already a little bit of a difference between the teams, as we've seen two teams go towards Overgrown Ancient first, which is something that we saw a lot on live servers. People just loved to go to the Lasher part first to just commit your bloodlust there. But mm -hmm. uh, what we've seen a lot in the MDI specifically and the speedrun keys is that a lot of teams went left first, Veximus, to kind of lower the amount of travel time you have to do and to be able to uh, snap some of the lashers onto the second boss, onto the bird boss, onto mm -hmm. Croth. So we'll see if that's something that, um, like if the teams are going to do that, that went left side first. Yeah, and the other benefit of going left right, you get the Bloodlust on the Veximus, which we assume is going to be like the hard part of the dungeon here. Now, ready checks? It looked like they were going for some sort of skip here um, that they didn't end up pulling off here. Something that we saw a lot was uh, was teams uh, sk skipping past this trash pack, right? And then moving moving forward mm -hmm. with, like, you know, Shadow Meld or Invis or something. Actually, we're seeing them do it right here. Mage pulled it with the Ring of Frost, kept it there. Now he's going to Invis the aggro off. It's going to reset, and nobody's going to be in combat with it. I wonder what they were trying to do with the bear that just didn't work out for them. I mean, it's a little bit of time lost. Hopefully it doesn't cost them the three chests, but, you know, it's still too early to tell, and we don't really know what the timer is going to look like in this dungeon so far. Yeah, we will see. I mean, they keep going, so I assume it's not gonna, it's not super close, because obviously these three chest timers and two chest timers are something very hard uh, for us to know how close it is. They know, of course, the teams, because they practice these dungeons, and they know for sure, or they kind of assumed that the keys are going to be starting at the 22 level, because the same thing happened last weekend. Therefore, they, I'm, sh I'm sure they practiced the three chess thing. But yeah, looking pretty good for all of these teams, except this one that we see on ready checks. Now, uh, Anae's last hope did go to, uh, on the top left side of the screen, did it go to Overgrown Asian first? They're the team with um, close to the most trash already and with that boss stat. So they're doing a really good job. They're, of course, the number one seed coming into this weekend as well. Uh, but Pixel's having some issues there as they actually go down on this mini boss on the platform. They do have a battle rest. We'll see if they mm -hmm. commit it to rest a Velo here. Uh, I imagine they probably don't need to on this on this low key level, right? The augmentation of Ochre can definitely. Nope, never mind. They end up using it. Okay. Uh, well, it's probably faster for them to keep it up, and of course they're going to be hoping to go for that three chest. We don't really know how tight the timer is yet again, right? Only the, the teams will have a good idea of how tight the timer will be for practice, but we don't know until we see what they've got in store for us, so we'll have to Oh, how did you do snapping now? Them. This was something we talked about a lot during the MDI in Season mm -hmm. 1, um, where if you had a rogue, you just use tricks of the trade onto the tank, you attack the mobs that are downstairs, and then they snap up to the tank onto the miniboss platform. And if you have something that is like a delayed ability, like a Demon Hunter Sigil, for example, or like a Moonkin's Explosive Mushrooms, if they uh, don't put you in combat immediately, then you can also snap them up. But I wonder what they do with this comp. I can't think of anything. Maybe they use the Wormstone? Or maybe they have some other ability they can use to actually snap them, or some sort of Priest shenanigans, but they don't have night elves. Doesn't look like there's any shadow melting going on. 
I'm not 100% sure, and maybe we can get Tuttles or Dratnos or someone else, maybe even Mix, uh, one, one of the guys not casting, uh, to, to like, chime in, but I'm pretty sure near the end of Season 1, the um, the Gusts were changed so that you could take them in combat. Um, it's only, I, I thought it was only from the platform down and not up, so from like the mini boss down you can always go, but I might be wrong, Like maybe they changed it on both sides. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any like super special snapping tech that you have to, that you have to do anymore to get it to work. Maybe. Could be wrong. Obviously, there's not a whole lot of research that we could have done on this dungeon because it's not in the current season. Uh, I guess we could have maybe practiced on tournament realm, but unfortunately, I did not do that. So maybe we'll <laughs> need to get a little bit of insight from the teams that are doing it, or maybe one of our other casters can fill us in. But I, I'm I'm pretty sure that 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 a lot of the uh, the barriers to taking the wind gusts were just removed at some point, and there's not a whole lot that you have to do anymore. That being said, we have a little bit of an idea of how fast this dungeon can go in his last hope, seven minutes into the key here. Already more than halfway through Croth here. Looks like they... Oh, this is really interesting. So, they went for a different technique on the boss than what we're used to seeing, right? Back in the day, mm -hmm. the way Croth worked was... You know, you have these two goalposts that you can throw, and there's the wind side and the fire side. The wind side, people, people tended to avoid until the last second because it moved you around, and it spawned these tornadoes that would really mess you up. However, it gave you a little bit of a haste buff, which is kind of nice, but it didn't really last that long, so people didn't really like it too much. The fire side, however, when you activated that, it stuns the boss and makes it take increased damage for like 10 seconds, which is like a really nice opportunity for a bunch of burst damage, which you absolutely have access to with this comp, right? The fire mage, when it has access to, you know, PI plus Breath of Eons, plus all the buffs that the Augmentation Evoker can give them, you can really chunk a boss down in 10 seconds with the, with all those uh, buttons lined up. They went for the haste buff first, and I don't think they chained it into the fire buff. I think they just kind of went as quickly as possible here, and that boss melted. I mean... It didn't last long at all. Yeah, that is very interesting. I, w I wonder what their reasoning behind this is. Maybe they just, uh, maybe the healer was close to left side first and they didn't care on a 22, or <laughs> there's definitely uh, a plan behind it as well. It could be like maybe not overlapping haste buffs later on because they already have other haste buffs, something like that. Uh, I don't know. Interesting. We'll see what the other teams do if they do a similar strat or if they do go with. We've also seen the overlapping, right, where they put both wind and fire simultaneously um, and then just nuke the boss down completely. We'll see what the other teams do. As three of them are now in Croth as well. Looks like um, Cool Beans did also go with the wind first, very interesting, and on the bottom right side. So the fire one they is still there, yeah, very interesting. I guess it's also like has something to do with them like partially not caring that much about the wind possibly. Like, of course, evokers with hover not being too bothered by it, mage is also not uh, the biggest problem with movement. Shadow Priest, though, on the other hand, they don't like it that much, right? Shadow Priest is a little bit more immobile compared to the other classes. Yeah, I don't think Shadow worries too much about it. I mean, obviously, they like to stand still and cast still, but it's not too big of a deal for them. I, I think this is just, uh, like you said, I think it's just a low key. They don't really care too much about it. They're just kind of sending it to send it because the boss is dying in like two minutes for them with their gear level in the amount of damage they have available to them with their comp. Hmm. So, the Algothar 3 chest timer. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'm about to do math. Hold on. It's 24. Should be 24, 48. 36. 36? Damn it. Bad math. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> uh. Alright, good enough. I totally did the math. I did not write it down from makes. Oh, I, I added the 24 from 0 instead of subtracting it from 60. Mm. Ah, I'm so bad, ah, man. Such a silly mistake. <laughs> Either way, NA's last hope is very far ahead of that timer. Now with 80% trash, they're about to finish off this trash pack, which will put them around the 90% mark, maybe a little bit less than that, if, if I remember properly. Maybe even... I think it's a little bit less, right? Yeah. Might be a little higher. It's a little higher. That's okay. We, we haven't been in Algothar in months. And, I mean, then all they really have to do is deal with, I think, two of the trash packs up top in the final boss after dealing with Veximus. So, yeah, this is extremely easable, th easily three-chestable for them. And yeah, they might even pull it into the last boss. This is something that um, we've seen in the MDI a lot. But we've also seen a lot of teams really struggle with that pull. So we'll see if they want to do it on this 22, because as you said, uh, the 24-minute three chests here, pretty easy for them. They don't necessarily have to risk anything. But of course, this is a time-based tournament, so 
Saving a couple of minutes here and there can matter in the long run. So we'll see what to do. But yeah, in the meantime, if you guys want to check out any player's gear or embellishments, legendary trinkets, whatever, then you can actually use the extensions on Twitch if you go to the top left. Um, off the screen, there's a little bit of an animation that if you hover over, you can click on it. And then you can select the player and you'll actually get um, all of that information by mouse overing, which is really, really cool. So definitely go ahead and check that out. Oh man, I'm, I'm really stupid. This heat must be really getting to my head. I set the two chest timer earlier. That's not what we're worried about. We're worried about the three chest timer. The three which chest, is, yeah. Which yeah. is 1912. I didn't even right? notice. So. Whew. All right. <laughs> focus up, focus up. All right. We're good to go. <laughs> I mean, okay, that's actually going to be really tight then. So they have six and a half minutes after dealing with Veximus to run up, deal with two trash packs, and deal with that Code Virgo. So, okay, they still have plenty of time. The three chests should be totally fine here. Um, other than that, I mean, the 25 is going to be difficult for them. Also, this is extremely unprofessional. I'm going to call for my AC technician. Give me a sec here. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. We can take a look at these <laughs> runs in the meantime. So, yeah. Uh, an ace last hope on the top left side on the screen. They are now moving towards that last boss area. This trash pack they're just skipping. Not sure what goop is. Oh, are they maybe stepping this? That looks like a Wernstone tech. Interest oh yeah, so it's just a wordstone skip, basically. So Goop does not have to quote unquote like waste his um invis pot. He just uh, waits for his partner in case you don't know how wordstone works, it's an augmentation evoker ability. Um and you can teleport to like a member of your group and they can teleport to you as well, as far as I understand. And it's a hundred yards max range, so you can teleport really, really far. You can use this to snap any kind of mobs to from one location to the other, or you can use it as a skip of trash if you have, like, if you connect with another person that has invisibility or has stealth, then you just wait for them to walk through and then you can teleport to them and you don't need to use your invis potion, which is actually really nice. Exactly what they did there. And yeah, they are pulling the trash on top of the boss, as we mentioned earlier. So this can be somewhat of a dangerous pull, but they didn't pull um, too much of trash onto this boss. It was just only these three mobs here, so it's not too bad. I wonder if they do the mind control tech. I yeah, yeah, they do. You can see the buffs in the group frame. So there's actually a mob they can control. They can use control mind on an invoker, and then you can buff a player with a shield that gives you, I believe it was haste that it gave you, uh, until the shield is broken. So it's actually yeah. really, really strong. The problem is, like, like you're mentioning, is that shield is very small. So if it gets broken, mm -hmm. you lose the haste buff instantly. And if I remember the way that barriers work, and wow, the smaller shields are always absorbed first, right? They're always they're, the damage always goes into the small shields first. So you can't really cheese it with the molten barrier, the mass barrier from the fire mage, or you know even healer barriers. So you take any damage, you're going to lose that damage buff. So it's really about making sure you dodge as many mechanics of the fight. Of course, the passive AOE damage in the fight will eventually will eventually just knock it off. But it's still a nice little damage boost, especially if you time it nicely, like on the mage with all stacked with all the other buffs, because of the way that exponential haste buffs scale. So should very very easily be a three chest for a nice last hope here. Remember, they have about four minutes left to beat that timer, and this boss is already below thirty percent for them. Look at last moment on the bottom right side. We've been we haven't seen them on the screen, but now we actually see them. And Elbro is not playing Enhanced and Shaman. Is actually playing that Fire Mage. We were discussing if they maybe pick the the Shaman instead because Elbro is known to be uh, Enhancement Shaman main and has been playing it for a lot. But it does look like he also did actually reroll um, to that Fire Mage for TGP, and they seem to be even faster than an Ace Last Hope. Not too. F like too much faster, right? Just a couple of seconds. But they are actually finishing off the boss first here. So yeah, and they. Uh, I, oh my god, I'm gonna mix this up. Because they both have last in their name. And Ace last hope and last moment. Oh god. But yeah, last moment, <laughs> winning the one v one duel here against Na's last hope, beating them by seven seconds approximately. Yeah, very impressive run from last moment there, and uh, we'll have to see how it scales up in higher keys. A 16 minute 22 with about three minutes left on the three chest timer. It's going to get about 35% harder on a 25, so 35% more HP and damage. 
due to the way exponential scaling works. Can they potentially three chest to twenty five? I actually think it might be barely within the realm of I, possibility. It looks like a perfect. Yeah, goal. I also think so. Yeah, I do think so. I mean, at least for those two teams. I think for the other teams, it's definitely much closer in the three chest. If you look at Pixel here and Ready Checks, Pixel actually had a um, cast go off there from an incorporal. A little bit unfortunate as they had some of their cooldowns running there. So they're going to be a little bit slower. They still have plenty of time, though. As we said, the three chest time is around 24 minutes. So they do have mm -hmm. enough time for sure. But uh, yeah. Wait, is it 24? No. For the two for the two chest timer, yeah, it's around. Uh, the three chest is. Uh, three chest is nineteen twelve. Nineteen twelve, yeah. If my NA math is right. It is nineteen twelve, yeah. Okay. <sighs> okay, at least I got that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's acceptable. Yeah, Pixel will be getting the three chest here as well. It's just going to be a little bit closer for them. I. Remember, this is the team that had like a random death somewhere in the dungeon on their healer. They also picked up a second one later on. They battle rezzed one of them, and I think they had to out of combat res the other. I wasn't actually, I didn't actually see where the second one happened. But they are going to get the three chests. That's the most important thing here. Now, the question as we move into the higher key levels is which of these two strats is going to be the more scalable strat, right? Going left versus going right. I mean, earlier on here, it didn't seem like it was that big of a deal, but. When we get into the higher key, key levels, the lust timings are going to become extremely important. This is a 32 minute dungeon, so that means theoretically, with a perfectly crafted route, you can get four lusts in. Now, the question is, are each of those four lusts actually going to be good lusts at good times, on, at difficult sections of the dungeon? Or are you just going to be pressing lust to press to get it on cooldown and get an extra one in the dungeon? And if that is the case, is that even worth it over getting three good, three good lusts? And also, can you get four good lusts with a left route versus a right route, right? We don't know which of them is technically going to be better lineups for the team, so we'll have to actually keep an eye as we get into the higher key levels and see not only where they use their lust, but if the timing for it is good. Because you really do need to hit it on cooldown when you get into the higher key levels. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Because like, it is uh, tyrannical, and as you said earlier, some of these bosses actually get pretty difficult on, on high key levels. So, because right, if you want to get four lusts, you need to last a trash pull, because there's no boss you can actually pull straight away. You have to do the trash for Vaximus first, and you also have to clear the lashers for um, the Overgrown Ancient. So no matter what you do, you have to last trash if you want that fourth lust. Now, we'll see if some of these teams decide to change their bloodlust timings to three lusts instead and just save their lust for the bosses if, if they feel like they need it. Because I do think Vaximus is definitely one of these bosses that uh, maybe not required lust, but he definitely made it a lot easier if he had it there. Uh, and so are some other bosses too. I mean, even Overgrown Asian can be uh, very difficult as well. Mm -hmm. uh, let's actually see Poison Dispel. Uh, oh, they have a lot of them. They have, yeah, of course, the Guardian Druid can dispel, Evoker can dispel, and Paladin, right? So they have three. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They, they are 100% okay. They can they can slam poison to spells on cooldown if they really need to, so tanks should, tank death should never really be an issue. Also, I mean, with the state that Bear is in right now, they can probably live through a massive amount of stacks anyway, so they probably don't care too much. But, again, the comp is perfect for it anyways. So it shouldn't really matter too much. The big thing is going to be actually, you know, can you live through the explosion on the boss? Burst forth. That's what it's called. I, I, I was trying to remember what the name of the cast was <laughs> called. It's been, it's been a few months. Bear with us. This is It's been a while since we've seen this dungeon. But yeah, that burst forth cast can do a lot of damage. Now, if you're somebody who played only at the start of Season 1 and didn't see the changes that were made to this boss later in the season, they made the cycles in between uh, trees spawning on this boss a lot more lenient. You have a lot more time to kill the tree off and clear your bleed before the burst forth happens. So the boss, a lot of the damage overlaps in the boss got removed near the end of season one, and we still have that version of the boss now in season, in you know, on the tournament realm for season two. So it's not like the overlap of the bleed damage plus the burst forth is going to be what kills them. It would just flat out be the burst damage of the burst forth, which when you, I assume when you get to like the 30, 31 key level, is going to get into that one-shot territory. Now, is it going to be the one-shot territory for Season 1? Absolutely, but Season 2 one-shot territory, where you have you know, stacking damage reduction from your Augmentation Evoker, uh, or Mastery from Paladin, Mass Berry from the Mage, 
I'm, I'm assuming you can probably live a, through a lot of them, similar to, like, for instance, what we saw from Laymor last week at Azure Vault, where, yes, there are massive bursts of damage that were incredibly dangerous during Season 1, but with this comp during Season 2, it's not as bad as we initially assumed it would be. Yeah, they also... A lot of them are running dwarf, so I guess they can also just dwarf that bleed off. We have the one cauterize. This time around, we don't have the status, um, stasis cauterize, which is something we've seen with the preservation evoker, where they would just uh, copy their um, cauterize onto multiple players before the bleed got applied, and then they could cleanse four people off of that bleed. But now, of course, the augmentation evoker cannot do that. They don't have stasis. They can only cauterize one person. But still, uh, with the dwarves and with the immunities, as you said, Bok as well on that um, Holy Paladin available. So that's going to be really nice. Same goes for um, the, the bleed on Croft, actually. That is something that can be pretty dangerous for tanks on really high um, tyrannical keys. And unfortunately, druids cannot be dwarves. So there's no uh, dwarf racial on the druids. That means they cannot get rid of that bleed with any of their spells. They can get bopped by the paladin, though, if they have a cancel or a macro to get rid of it immediately to not have any of the other damage healers die. And they can do that in case they run out of defensives on one of those higher key levels. All right, well, we do see that the 25s are going pretty well for all of the teams. Um, on the screen right now, zero deaths, they are sticking to their strategies as well. So the teams that went left in the 22 are also going left now, and the teams that went right are also going right. We'll see if that changes on the higher key levels, but for, so far they are also doing the same pools. I didn't see any of the teams do anything like smaller. So we'll see if those teams can get close to three chessing, at least for NA's last hope and for last moment. I think it is, might be like barely doable if they have like a super clean run, but it's for sure going to be difficult. So we'll see how that turns out for them as they come a bit closer to the end of the dungeon. Yeah, I think we'll be seeing the the strategy start to change once we get up into that like 29, 30 range. But I think that for 22s, 25s, they'll probably both be, or all be on their kind of same speed run strat. Just because like at this key level, if you spend five minutes you know, rerouting to save three minutes in the dungeon, that's not that's not a good time exchange unless it gets you over that three chest barrier. In which case, you know, maybe it is worth, but that's a big risk to take uh, with your time as, ooh, Vickland goes down for Pixel in the bottom right. They are able to land the res though on Veximus. Gonna be a little bit dangerous for the rest of their run. And I, I think the two chest is probably a realistic outcome here for most teams, but I agree the three chest is mathematically possible, but you only get the one shot at it. Yeah, we'll see how that works. Pixel, though, on the bottom right, that they, they just had a death on Viklund, and I think their run earlier also had some issues as well, and they were kind of... They were not so far off from the three chests that it seemed possible for them to three chest to 25. Yeah. And we'll see. Uh, so this death on Viklund, I don't think it cost them that much because the PI was not ready yet, and he didn't have any other cooldowns running. So it probably didn't cost them too much except the five seconds death penalty. Oh, we can see the snapping now on the bottom right. You see pixels on the uh, the evoker, the augmentation evoker. Oh, all right. Okay, yeah. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think that was the tech. Okay. <laughs> Man, that was Observe. all the pressure. That's my bad. I told everybody to look. <laughs> yeah. So the the what probably happened there? Wernstone has a one hundred yard range, right? So mm -hmm. maybe that wasn't maybe the Wernstone partner. Uh, was too far away for that to be executed. Uh, so that may maybe yeah. was the problem, I'm not sure. Because you can use it in back. combat, right? Obviously. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. otherwise the snapping wouldn't work with them. Mm. Uh, so, unclear exactly what went wrong there, but my, my guess is that the Wordstone partner just wasn't close enough to the edge where the Evoker was coming from. Um, yeah, it's probably the mage there, it looks like. You can see the mage heading over to the side i guess i guess at this point pixel are just saying you know what just keep going we'll get we'll get the count later the snap is dead we're going boss so definitely uh i would say zero chance for a three chest at this point for pixel they've just got to hope that no other team is able to do it either yeah good news for them is that i believe the two chest timer um they have some wiggle room there for sure yeah. i believe so i think that they're still fine for the two chest as long as they don't have any other major mistake going forward but um, yeah, let's take a look at which team is the furthest into this dungeon. It does look like it's 
probably a nice last hope because uh, they're it looks like they're similar to legendary here but legendary is 30 percent ha uh, higher on the boss so a nice last hope definitely looking very good and looking, I mean, comparing the splits is a bit weird between Legendary and NA's Last Hope because they did different routes and went different sides. But it is still very similar. Maximus died at 421 for Legendary, and NA's Last Hope killed uh, Overgrown Ancient at 4 minutes 8. So, and the percentage of trash is also very similar. Now, if that means anything, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's interesting to see that both sides kind of take the same amount of time. It is tough to compare because not all percent is like created equal. You know, you have mm -hmm. you have these areas where going left versus going right, you're going to have different amounts of travel time uh, and the bosses take different amounts of time as well. But what that'll be really useful for is if they stay on these separate strategies in the higher keys, then we'll know, oh, if, you know, usually they finished Overgrown Ancient and Veximus at the same time as each other. So if one of them is like way faster or slower, then that'll be, we'll know in the future runs, right, that that means something. Yeah, for sure. Now, Anais Last Hope is done with Croth, and it definitely looked like uh, Croth was not that easy. Like, in a 22, they were just, like, blasting through it. Yeah. But in a 25, it definitely looks like there's some damage um, going on onto the groove, so not super easy, and it will for sure be even crazier on those, like, 28, 29 keys that we'll see in just a bit, because I do assume that these teams are going to push up this dungeon to, like, the... I think the most comfortable, like, high level that they, that they can do without wiping, right? They're not going to push, like, the highest possible key here because, of course, today is an elimination day and the, the team with the least amount of points is going to get eliminated at the end of the day. So they don't want to spend, like, three hours in, in this dungeon. They do want to do the other three dungeons as well. So I assume they're going to go up to maybe, like, 28, 29, depending on what they think is, like just easily doable, and then they will move to the other dungeons, I assume. Yeah, I think that that... You, you probably want to spend at least one hour in here, so that then you mm -hmm. can maybe take your break to do some strat for the other dungeons during that time. Um, but That's a I good think, point. Like the, can you explain the breaks? So, you have to take 20 total minutes of breaks during the day, but it can't be in the first hour. I don't think it can be in the last hour either. It has to be mm -hmm. in those middle three hours of the day. So, uh getting through the hour while doing useful stuff, and then, then you make it to a point where you can take your break. And during that break, you can't be in the dungeons, but of course you can be doing some strats. You can have some people doing some strats while everybody's getting up and getting a drink or whatever and uh, taking their break. And you can use that to, to sort of sanity check your strats in the dungeons against the affixes that have been revealed for them uh, and make sure that, those are, that you're happy with what you're going to be doing. And then head to those dungeons, because like you said, you can't just focus on the push today to the highest keys. Because if you do that, you're going to leave a dungeon or two open, and you're going to not get any points in those, or you're only going to put up like the 22, and you're going to leave three chests on the table. And that's going to lead to you getting eliminated at the end of the day, especially with this level of all six teams being all like insane players. I don't think anybody is going to feel safe to leave, you know, a dungeon even on like 25 at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely not. Especially even, as you said, like even those like lower seeded teams coming into this week uh, have a lot of experience or veteran players or have some like uh, life key pushes on their teams. So I think all of these teams can be incredibly scary. So yeah, I have no idea which team uh, is going to, like I don't think there's like one team that I think is the weakest is going to get eliminated for sure. Uh, I think this time around, it's just going to go to the very end. So for sure going to be interesting at the end of the day. But for now, we're, we're nowhere near that elimination as they're still pushing up this Algathar Academy. They're all on that 25 key. Every single team did three chests. They are 22, which was the initial key level they started with. And now they're all on the 25. We did discuss that it might be possible for some of these teams to three chest the 25. Uh, the three chest timer is 19 minutes and 12 seconds. And looking at Anais Last Hope, they just now engaged Veximus on the bottom light, uh, left side. And uh, they... Uh, yeah, three chests maybe not so doable. I mean, depending on... How long do these bosses take on a 25 tyrannical? Like, three minutes? You do yeah, have the I... buff from the invoker on the last boss, right? That's be very true. tight. Yeah, they. I mean, they are done with their count pretty much as well, right? They can just take count onto the last boss, so 
They have two and a half bosses to do and five minutes to do it. It is gonna and they have a lot of movement to do as well. Mm -hmm. That is actually pretty nasty. Yeah, we'll see. I mean maybe and they don't have bloodlust either. They just committed to the trash pool earlier. The the invoker haste stuff that they're gonna get with that control mine and the trash that they still missed, they're gonna be pulling onto the boss, onto the last boss. So technically there's only this boss left and then one more pool. So yeah, the walking might take like 30 seconds to a minute, possibly. I'm interested if they can do it. Legendary, on the other hand, um, they're fighting Overgrown Ancient. They're at the same percentage approximately as um, an Ace Last Hope is on Veximus, but they don't have as far to walk, right? They don't. They are basically already there. That's the, the benefit of going left first. If you go to Veximus first, then you don't have to like do this extra kind of movement at the at the end, and therefore Legendary gaining a little bit of time here because of their pathing, which might actually uh, make it for them, especially because they also have Bloodlust available, it looks like. Yeah, and Overrun Ancient is just dying faster than Veximus as well here, so Legendary definitely, even just on in terms of when this is going to die, so the problem for Legendary is that they still need a bunch of count, right? They're going to have to do a big so pull. Pounds, yeah. So I think it probably evens out between the two teams, but I, I do like what you said about routing Especially in these lower keys, you know, if you're if you're working against a 19-minute timer instead of a 32-minute timer, that travel time is like almost twice as bad. The time where you're just walking from the Veximus area to the last boss, uh, as compared to in a higher key where you know more of the time is going to be spent fighting the enemies. So, I think especially for these lower keys, that's a good argument to be made in favor of pathing to pathing to the left first, so that you end right by where the last boss is when you're finished with the first three. Here goes Legendary yeah. now, setting up that pull. We'll see if they can Ooh. take this onto boss. They need to get this boss pulled soon if they want to have a hope of securing that three chest. It's going to be very close. This also is just like a very scary pull to pull off on a 25 tyrannical key yeah. with Incorporal as well. And then, of course, another thing with Incorporal here is that the priest is control minding the invoker for the haste buff. So that means if two Incorporals spawn, you can't have. A control mind on one of those so you don't get the damage reduction and you don't get the quote-unquote easy to see on it so you have to use two others to see spells maybe something like sleepwalk or shackle or sheep to get rid of those oh my god they're sort of restopping so incredibly low uh, immediately getting lay on hands by the paladin to make sure they don't go down here but that's at all offensive cooldowns being popped and we do see some of these uh, haste buffs also going to come out soon from the shadow priest too and yeah, the boss is dropping. Let's see on the timer. They have uh, a little bit less than two minutes left. That might be... Uh, this, I don't know. It's going to be it's gonna be a bit too tight, I think. So they're going to get another round of cooldowns. That is going to need to kill the boss. I agree it's going to be extremely tight here. I think it's probably not going to happen, but it's going to... Oh, I mean... No, yeah, I think, I think, it's, I think it's over. There's no way. What There's no cool way they have that much damage. Cool beans have 2 minutes 12 seconds. Okay. On the top right side, they're also they're actually looking pretty strong, but they have all of this trash as well that we mentioned. It's a very similar route to what we see Legendary do here. So maybe they have a, sh a shot, but yeah, Tyrannical Boss just has so much beans. Satsi dropping so low. I don't know how he's still alive. He actually just took so much damage in such a short amount of time. It somehow managed to live that. But uh, yeah, they're executing this pull really well on most of these teams. It's pretty crazy to me that they can even do this at all. This is just insanity. Yeah, this is a, a level of danger that I, I don't remember this boss actually being this scary in last season, but yeah. all of these damage events are so dangerous. You can see the cheat death actually popping for splat there up in the top left for legendary. So they are going to be approaching and soon going over that three chest timer. 20% or so on the boss is going to separate them from that that result, which it's bad news for Legendary. It's very good news, though, for teams like Pixel that are not on track to even be close to the three chest. They are not going to lose very much for not three chesting as a result. Yeah, that is true. And Ace Last Hope in the bottom left are also going to go over that three chest timer in just a second. It is 19 minutes 12, so they cannot kill off uh, Echo of Duragosa here, unfortunately, either. 
The only other team that is somewhat close to being able to three chest is Cool Beans on the top right. They have 40 seconds left approximately, which I don't think is going to be enough for them either. So yeah, a lot of teams close to the three chest, but just barely not uh, making it because these bosses just have so much HP on uh, this tyrannical affix. So none of these teams being able to three chest, but I mean, even getting close, of course, of course you want to three chest, but still being quicker than the other teams um, it's going to just give you an advantage uh, overall because, of course, you only have five hours per day. So doing dungeons uh, two or three minutes faster, even if you don't get an extra key level, still matters in the long run. So at least something for these teams. All right, as our last keys of, uh, well, I guess as our first few 25s are finishing up here, Cool Beans up in the top left, just about to get this two chest done. But one person who's neither cool nor a bean is Zyro, who I believe is back now. Uh, <laughs> still, still in his super duper warm house. Uh, welcome back, Zyro. You can you can have your spot back now. Okay, okay thanks thanks for covering. <laughs> I got uh, you. Man, first they're supposed I to come. I think you're at both cool and bean, Zyro. Don't worry. They're supposed to come at 4 p.m. That they just call <laughs> me 20 minutes after we start. Hey, we have a technician in your area. <laughs> okay, guys. Great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I remember the, one of the last things that I said before I got yoinked out of the call was the nine, the, tw the 25s were going to be right up close to the timer. And yeah, they were really close to the timer, right? But none of the teams really just barely were able to make that three chest happen, which, you know, Sucks for, you know, the teams that thought they could maybe get it, but everyone's on equal footing, right? Everyone's going to get the two chest. Everyone's going to be able to go to a 27. So it's going to be really tight across the board. And I mean, with how easy these are two chestable, that then begs the question, how close is the two chest timer on 27 going to be? I mean, I think for the teams that are going really fast in this dungeon, like Legendary, like, you know, NA's Last Hope, I think the 27 should be extremely easily two chestable for them as long as they keep the runs clean of course as we saw last week you know it's really hard to keep these dungeons clean once you start getting up into the higher echelons of keys right like it, 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 we saw very easily how teams were you know pretty comfortably timing the 29s in azure vault to really struggling with the 30 to having to put in multiple attempts just to get the first pull done on a 31 to make the key timeable in the first place so, of course, we're going to see that evolution throughout the first couple of hours here. But, of course, we have to remember, you know, it's day one of the weekend here. The teams don't really want to push keys to the point where they're failing to time the key on the first couple of attempts. They're, you know, once they hit that point, they're probably going to venture out into our other three keys to make sure they're safe for tomorrow. Yeah, they definitely have to do that in a little while. I do believe... The best course of action, at least for the teams that can two chest is 27, as you said, like an ace last hope that are that is in the 27 already in the bottom left and legendary in the top right. I think those teams specifically, um, the best course of action will be two chesting this 27. Uh, but as I say that, they actually do lose their healer on an ace last hope and goop dropping incredibly low, using a battle rest to uh, get them back up. And they should be able to continue here. But yeah, having some issues on the 27 key level. And as we said, the two chest timer nine might not be like as easy. Now their strat is very fast and ace last hope. Like they they looked they almost three chests to the twenty-five, right? So I do think they're still fine for sure. But yeah, I cannot make uh, that many more mistakes going forward. But yeah, once the two chest is twenty-seven, if that happens, I think doing the twenty-nine and then moving on for now is probably a good idea for them because as soon because every time you three chest a key or you two chest a key you don't actually get the score unless until you do the dungeon right like there's no mm -hmm. point in two chesting at 27 and then not actually doing the 29 because otherwise you're not going to get those two extra points and as soon as they start one chesting keys and not getting the two anymore i think it makes sense to move on and do other dungeons at least for today because there's four dungeons that were announced today and they have to do all of them which gets a little bit tight uh, in a five hour window, right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. that is not that much time for pushing up four dungeons. And of course, anyone that can do math, so like anybody not me, can pretty easily figure out, you know, you got four keys, you got five hours to do the four keys, so, and then you also have a little bit of break timer to put in. So, you know, a little over an hour spent in each key is kind of what you want to spend on day one. And then of course, you know, you get your 
free run at the end of the day if you start it right before the end of the day, right? Because you can keep doing your keys past the timer as long as you're already in a key. So, I mean, I imagine they're totally okay with running a key for a little over an hour, even if they're kind of at a point where the key's difficult. Because, you know, you still have plenty of time left to go to the other couple of keys. For sure. Let's take a look at how much damage these 27 tyrannical bosses now do, as both Legendary and Danae's Last Hope on the right side of the screen are fighting both Overgrown Ancient and Veximus simultaneously. So let's take a look. It looks like the stomp from NA, uh, from Overgrown Ancient is not that big of a deal, but the bleed does stick for a lot of damage. And as I said, they are running those Dwarf Racials, but they're not available right now, so uh, it did tick for quite a lot of damage. The stomp didn't seem like the biggest problem because they have so many like group defensives available that they can use for that. But yeah, the bleed does hurt for sure. And looking at Veximus, uh, it also looked like the D.Va hurt quite a bit for them. But um, still for sure fine on a 27. Like, definitely still doable. Oh, yeah. 100%. I mean, they, they haven't reached the breaking point right yet, right? I mean, they'd have to actually make a mistake today at this point with the mm. experience that the teams have, which... You know, we have seen mistakes happen. It is really easy to have a little lapse of judgment and, and let a kick go off, or you know, stand in a swirly that you weren't aware was there. So, those those things still will take you out in a key of this level. But the experience, and of course, again, we're going to keep going back to this because it is an extremely important beat to hit with the way that we're running TGP this time around. This is the first TGP we've ever had where the teams knew one of the dungeons in advance. So, again, they were able to practice this key. All of these teams have a lot of practice in this key because they knew about a week ago this was going to be their seasonal one key for the weekend. Uh, I, I, I imagine we'll definitely see more mistakes once we see them start branching out into other keys. Yeah, I think so as well. I do want to take a look at if we can get one. Oh, Ready Chuck's actually having a full team wipe and the town portaling out. Very unfortunate uh, for Ready Chuck's now. Thankfully, it was pretty early on in the key, so they didn't lose too much time overall. But not something they want to see on that first day when there's just so much, so many things they they want to do technically. But um, yeah, uh, I did want to take a quick look at Legendary to see how if they are doing um, any of the snapping here. As we did see one of the evokers attempt the snap earlier, and it didn't quite work out. Uh, let's see if they do it on legendary side. No, the evoker did jump over first. It is possible. Oh, it looks like it was the mage. Yeah, there we go. So some of these mana fiends coming in, and it looks like it was the mage um, doing something. To, at least I saw some fire ability flying onto that trash. So maybe some mage plus invis going on, um, something like that, very interesting, but yeah, now they are fighting those mana fiends with the sentry, guardian sentry. How is guardian sentry for guardian druid? Probably not that bad, right? Because I remember that mini boss actually being, doing somewhat uh, oh. decent amount of damage to a tank in season one. You're right, I forgot about this guy completely. So, <laughs> for me personally, with the people that I played with, it wasn't the tank that I was so worried about, it was the healer. Th these tornadoes are literally healer seeking oh, yeah. missiles. They yes. they spawn under your feet and if you aren't moving when they spawn, you're dead. You will get one shot even on tyrannical. I I forgot that it actually did a lot of tank melee damage too. So, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem to be posing too much of a threat to them right now, but we did see I believe this is also where Velo died for um mm -hmm. for one of our teams like earlier on, right? One of the holy paladins. So, this could be a run killer, actually, in our higher key level set. <laughs> you know, w when you haven't run a dungeon in a few months, you forget some of the intricacies and some of the things that could, you know, really ruin your run in here, but you do completely... I, I had completely forgotten about how dangerous that mob can be. Yeah, I also forgot that the, the whirlwinds, they had, like, a travel time, right? Or the animation had a travel time, and I don't think they ever fixed that or changed that. So basically, if you stood really far away from the mini boss. And if a tornado spawned on you, then if you didn't already move before you saw the animation, then you would just die. Because the reaction time, if you were further away, was basically non-existent. It just, like, you saw the animation and it, zero point two seconds afterwards, it did the damage. <laughs> if you're melee, you had more time to move. But yeah, on range, mm -hmm. it just seemed like the animation had this weird, like, travel time and didn't immediately show yeah. up. 
So therefore, you just kind of have to pre-move, which everyone did and everyone knew, knew about. But yeah, it's easy to forget stuff like this. But uh, so far, none of the teams did uh, seem to have issues with that, except Velo earlier, which might have just been something else as well, because they are, of course, snapping trash on top mm. of this. And yeah, you saw in the last moment on the bottom left, uh, the Paladin just had to use one of the immunities or lay on hands, because I think there was a bleed from the Battle Axe uh, being casted onto their Holy Paladin. And that one is for sure very deadly. We know that uh, from season one. So I, if I'm not mistaken, I, th I think the tech that they're doing is mage is pulling trash with a beacon from the Holy Paladin. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mage will invis off aggro. The Paladin will and be then in the combat still with has them. Aggro. Mm, so then they'll okay. snap to the Paladin. And then the Paladin will have aggro after the snap, you know, before they you know, stop being snapped mobs that have weird characteristics. For those of you who don't know how snapped mobs work, whenever they do snap, for like some sort of I don't know, some some time frame, five to ten seconds or so, they're they're immune slash, you know, don't uh don't get affected by abilities. But here we go, we have a good uh, good example of what's going on here, Dr. J. Pulling the mobs together. Making yeah, sure it was alive. It, hello. It was exactly what you were saying, Zyra, about Zatsy making sure oh, they're staying it? in combat. Yeah, okay. and so then he's he's invising this off, and so oh, perfect. And, and so some teams are using like meteor, right? I think we saw legendary earlier dropping a meteor on the mobs using travel time to to mm -hmm. like snap mobs around. But this team, Cool Beans, doing exactly kind of what they did during the MDI and during like Last Stand, where they're just invis juggling. Why is it they're not using the Warren Stone, I wonder? Is it because they need it for, like, a skip? Because they're skipping some trash there as well. Are they using the Warren Stone for the skip and then they can't use it anymore for that snap? Because that, to me, seems a lot easier than anything else, right? It might be inconsistent. It might be something, like, n n nobody's, nobody's tested it, really, except for these teams that are playing on the tournament realm, right? It might be mm -hmm. something that we have to talk to the teams about going into day mm -hmm. two. Like, what does the consistency of Warren Stone look like? Well, even then, that might not be some, something that they even want to reveal if they do have good tech for it. So we'll have to see if we get any uh, information for that. But thanks for that insight, titles. That was a great clip. That actually, because we were, you know, we, we've been talking about that for the past, you know, forty-five minutes or so. So, thanks for pointing that out to us. Thank you. Cool. So now we have a better understanding of what kind of cool snapping tech they're doing, and we have different ideas of how they're doing it. And we're actually watching Cool Beans in the bottom right go for it again here. Doctor J pulling the pulling all of the lashers. He's going to alter back. And his whole idea is just to make sure he stays alive long enough here so that his healer's upstairs, everyone's situated, and then once that's done, he can go into this corner here close to the to the middle and viz off the aggro, and that will eventually decide to snap to his healer. I'm not sure if like some of these lashes seems to still aggro Dr. J. Yeah, Maybe it didn't it work didn't out for right. them here. Yeah, huh. Satsi does go down oh, and dead. Dr. J also oh. going down. So this is a big problem for Cool Beans. Um, it looks like they're hmm. gonna continue and not immediately time portaling out here. But this is a big problem, because now he's Invis is on cooldown, he's not an Night Elf, so he cannot do the same thing with Shadow Melt. He'll have to do this differently now, and this is costing him quite a lot of time. And it is at 27, and they want to two-chest this. So, huh, I wonder if they should just pour it out. Well, so here's the thing. Oh, if it, this it isn't looks something like that's consistent for them... Oh, they did eventually snap, did they? Oh, so it did looks they? like they snapped, it's just they lost the two players. Yeah, then it's fine. Like, then they okay, can then for sure continue. Yeah. Yeah. Even then, if they, if they, if it was something that wasn't consistent for them, I feel like you may as well keep going just to practice it. You might not want to. You might not want to finish the key if you can't two chest it. But you know, they should definitely continue the key if they think they still have a chance of two chesting it. And remember, the two chest timer is a lot more lenient than what the, uh, the three chest timer was, so there's still a possibility. This is why actually it was so inconsistent for them. They were snapping to cross platform, where most teams are just snapping up to the guardian sentry. So that is some. Uh, that is some crazy tech if they're able to pull it off consistently without the deaths. Yeah, I agree. Um, Alright, there we go. And his last hope did have a death earlier on Croft. Um, it was Scoop that actually went down. They'd have to commit the last battle rest, so they're not going to have a rest for 8 minutes. Which is somewhat scary, because they still have to do Veximus and Echo of Duragosa, which are both our pretty dangerous bosses, at least the way they're playing them with trash on top of Ecuador Gosa and Veximus just being generally a hard boss, even without any trash on top. Uh, it looks like they're... Um, are they playing this or skipping? Now it looks like they're playing. All right, so they're gathering up a big pool here. I, if I remember correctly, on the 25, they lasted this trash pool here. Um, but because, of course, they're not 27, 
and they their bloodlust got ready on Croth because it took much longer for her to start up the dungeon. They ended up just popping it on Croth. So changing up their bloodlust timings here a little bit, making sure they use it on cooldown. Because as we talked about earlier, this dungeon theoretically has four bloodlusts. So um, adjusting your bloodlust timing for the full uh, dungeon timer might make sense. Even though we said we they could possibly two chest it. And the two chest timer is around 24 minutes we set. And in 24 minutes you do have a little bit more room to get that third bloodlust in. You don't necessarily have to use it on cooldown. But uh, yeah, you have four minutes. So if you want to have it on boss pool, on the last boss, since you're pulling mm -hmm. all of this trash on top, then you do kind of want to just press it on cooldown. I mean, with how tight the timer of the dungeon is... Well, on this key level, you're not going to be pushing up against the 32-minute timer, right? But, like... No. On on a super high key level, like, on our theoretical maximums of, like, you know, probably, I'd guess probably 30 or 31, there's no way you're going to be able to have a fourth lust up for the pull of the boss and still time the key, right? So... At that mm -hmm. point, is it just a three lust key where you're getting three perfect lusts? I don't know. There's a lot of thought that has to go into putting together a dungeon like this. Yeah, for it's sure. Rough. It looks like all teams are lusting Croft as well. Like last moment and cool beans on the bottom left and bottom right are both lasting Croft as well. They've got that blood lust timing up here. And it makes sense to, like, maybe they always intended to last Croft, but on the lower key level, it's just not ready. And what are you going to do? You're not going to change your route and pull some other stuff before you get to this boss on a, such a low key level. So it makes sense uh, to just send it on the trash afterwards. And yeah, Legendary in the top left having a very clean run on their side. Zero deaths. Uh, of course, their route is going to Veximus first. So they are now in the overgrown ancient area, clearing all of these lashers before the boss spawns. We commit the bloodlust. Um, looks like they actually lusted just recently. So they either lusted at the very end of... Um, Broth, or they lusted at the start of this trash pool. Maybe the trash pool. Also, mage well, damage. We didn't, we mean, didn't mention mage damage just yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Look at the big number. Uh, mage damage on this pool we knew was going to be ridiculous. This was a pool where in beta keys, you know, when we were scaled to like 380, you could burst for over a million DPS on this pool. Uh, we didn't see what the burst was, but... Now that I'm noticing, they're finishing the pull at 1.3, so I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if there was a burst for like at least two and a half to three mil on this pull. It's just, yeah, ma Mage is ridiculous right now. That that tiny nerf they got for their AOE was it, it wasn't enough. It they're still too good. Buff Warlock. Thank you, Cyrus. Say that. Say it louder. I hope everyone's Buff listening. Warlock. Anyway, <laughs> Buff Moon King too. Why not? Yes, do it. Oh, that, that felt cool. disgusting. To say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cool beans on the bottom right, they're having some issues as Dr. J does go down on Croft and they do not have a battle rush available. So that means they have to finish off this boss with only, basically with one and a half damage healers dead. Because whenever you do play with an augmentation evoker, if one of your damage healer dies, it's only half, maybe not half, but uh, a lot of the damage from the evoker is also gone. And therefore having a damage healer dead like that is actually a pretty big time loss for mm -hmm. them here. They can still finish it because... Um, I think the healer mana and the survivability should be fine. Unless they get really high stacks on the streets, right? Croth was always a boss that the longer it took, the scarier it got because you get the debuff on the screech that stacks up. And you can only clear it with them um, throwing in the, the orbs into these um, goals and getting that buff. But yeah, at some point, you just run out of orbs and you don't have any more goals. And if your screech debuff just ramps up, at some point, you just get one shot. Let, let's get Cool Beans back up on the screen, because they're a team that we really need to focus in on. They, they could very easily be the first recipient of, like, a key failure of the day. And I, I'm going to go ahead and go out on the limb and say that not two-chesting this 27 probably should be counted as a failure, because I think the top-end teams are going to be able to do that. And Cool Beans, if you forgot, they already had that mistake with their snapping earlier on in this key, so having a DPS dead for the majority of a boss pull could end up you know, costing them the two chest timer. So there's somebody we'll definitely need to focus in on as they get closer towards timing their key here. But while we're waiting for them to pop back on the screen, let's see where we are across the board here.
Legendary continuing to just absolutely blast this dungeon. NA's Last Hope did have a faster 25. Legendary had a faster 22. Legendary appears to be going at a slightly faster clip here in terms of boss damage, but of course, NA's Last Hope does have a lot more trash count on Veximus, so they'll be able to skip past a lot of this upcoming trash because, you know, they pull it down on top of their first pull with the Lashers at the start of the key, whereas Legendary just opts, opts to go for a big pull here and then also pull a lot of trash into, into Echo of Doragosa as well. Yeah, so Legendary is going to have just generally a little bit less boss damage because their mage is going to be full-out AoEing, while NA's Last Hope doesn't necessarily have to do that, right? Their mage can do single target and they can just slowly leave those mobs down because I believe they only have three trash mobs really on that uh, on that pool. At least that's what it looked like in on 25. So they control mine one of the invokers and then they have like two Echo Knights and like one more mob, which is uh, not too scary for them. So let's see, let's take a look at Legendary as they're gathering up their big pool. So top left side of your screen, they're gathering up a lot of mobs here. Um, and we're going to see them pull them into the boss if they want to. I wonder if they... Let's see the timer. So 24 minutes is the two chests. It looks like they're playing it safe. Yeah, so they don't want to risk this because they know they can pull this trash, they can kill off this trash um, without the boss and then do the boss by itself. So they don't have to risk anything here and still get the two chests. I like this a lot just because I think they can probably do this pull on the boss. But um, if they're comfortable to get this to chest, actually, can they? Yeah, they can. They, they should. If they're comfortable actually, like this, then it is for sure better just to play it safe. I'm extremely delirious and dumb. And when I did my math before, I was so far off. I wasn't actually an entire minute off. It's 2536 is the two chest timer. So there's actually a lot more time than we initially thought. Um, no, are you sure? Is so it 2436? It should be 25. Um, I'm, 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 I'm pretty confident. If I'm wrong, I need to, like, go back to sleep or something. Yeah, it's, it's 25. 2536 is the two chest timer, so, yeah. Pl okay, plenty well, of time for that. I got the math from Tettles, so I tend to believe you over Tettles. So 2536, okay, that, that's the final number then. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's, there's tons of time left. And his last hope have over five minutes, and they're heading towards Echo of Doragosa now. They probably actually also have time to just finish off this trash and not have to worry about pulling into the boss, but that's not something that Dorky is, is known to do. He, he he presses W, he attacks the key, so not going to be just <laughs> killing the trash on its own. They will for sure be two-chesting this 27, as long as they keep it clean on this final boss. Yep, definitely looking really good for both of these teams. Legendary now slowly but surely walking into the boss room. They know that uh, they have time, but at some point they do have to pull the boss here, right? They also want that um, to mind control the invoker there, making sure they get the haste buff on everybody. And once they only have some of these Echo Knights left, then it's not going to be too big of a problem for these teams anymore. Especially with the full range comms. In Season 1 in the MDI, a lot of teams would play a pretty heavy like uh, melee comms, and then whenever you saw whenever you get gripped into um, the boss and you have these Echo Knights just casting your Whirlwind, it could be a little bit dangerous. But these ranged players don't have that much issues with the, with the uh, grip into the boss because they can just blink out of it or hover out of it, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal for them. So no issues for Legendary either as they're finishing off the last trash pack that they pulled onto Echo of the Ragos as well. And as you said, both teams should have plenty of time to get um, the two chests in. And they just hope even delaying their last a little bit, it looks like. Uh, maybe waiting for the, sec the next PI to come up in combination with Combustion. And Breath of Ian still a little while off, so maybe they just wait for everything here and just line it all up. There's a lot that you can do to line things up properly, right? You, you can wait for an AoE pulse from the boss to go off. That way, you know that you can put out the shield from the mind control dad. Uh, mm -hmm. and then it won't get broken right away. And then you also, of course, want to line that up with the normal suspects, Breath of Eons, Combust, Power Infusion, the usual suspects that we're used to seeing the past couple weekends. Yeah, th there's some really good perfect lineups that you can wait for, so it totally makes sense that they, waste for, that they wait for that just a little bit here. Something that we're not used to seeing, though, peep the damage meters here for NA's Last Hope. That's, that's a Shadow Priest topping the meters right now. Actually, you know what it is. He's probably uh, focusing himself with the... Um, with the shield from his mind control dad. <laughs> you can shield oh, multiple Junkrat. people, right? You can, you can shield, shield multiple, multiple people, but 100% uptime <laughs> on self. 
Wait a minute, I, I mean, thought that's you what were, happened. I thought you were huh? Junkrat. How are you well, casting yeah, and playing at the same time? I can, I'm Junkrat, I can do everything. <laughs> Why are you even question me? Why do you think there's no camera on screen right now? Oh! <laughs> Very impressive. Uh, you know me. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so actually for legendary it might ooh, might be a bit closer legendary. They just had Bloodlust come up. Uh did line it up with their with their cooldowns, yeah. So Breath of Ian's PI being used, Combustion now also being used. They do have some shields rolling as well, one of them being on their fire mage, of course. But yeah, looking at the timer, yeah, they have a little bit more than one minute left, 130 approximately, which should be fine, especially... Yeah, yeah, okay, it's fine. I was looking at their boss health, and it was like 40%. Like, huh? But now that they popped all of their cooldowns, the boss is dropping so fast all of a sudden. So yeah, they were just waiting for their cooldowns to come back up. They're fine, they're fine. Yeah, no issues for the teams in the top two half of the, half of the screen, but as I was alluding to earlier, in the bottom right, cool beans. Okay, now the top right, as I say it... Man, this... <laughs> ah, this guy likes trolling me, man. Oh, he's just moving it around all over the place now. Okay, on the main screen here, Cool Beans, with the mistakes they've made in this key, they're not going to be two-shasting this. It's not even going to be close. And actually, we have to start... They, are they even going to time this key at this point? Right? This is this is a really rough-looking key for them that has not gone well. Now, the question is, you know, 10 minutes ago it would have been worth resetting if you knew you weren't going to two-chest it, but now that you're close to timing the key, do you just finish the key and then move on to the 28? putting yourself guaranteed one key back of everyone, it's a rough spot for them to be in, but I'm not really sure what the what the right thing to do for them is. Yeah, I think whenever they fail to snap, in my opinion, they should have reset there. But, like, it wasn't a clear yeah. call, because the snap still went through. It was just, a, like, Setsy and Dr. J died, and Dr. J had to run all the way back um, while they had already snapped everything, which, of course cost them a lot of time. So if they would have reset there, it would have been fine. But then they didn't. They thought they can maybe still do it. Then Dr. J died and Croft. They didn't have a battle rest mm -hmm. left. And at that point, at that point, I think it probably would have still been worth to reset. But only if they know for sure that they can two chest at 27, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't two chest at 27, you have to do two 30 minute runs. Well, if you reset after, let's say, 15 minutes and then do a two chest, then it's still like you still save time overall. You still save like 15 minutes approximately. So it would have been worth to reset halfway through the dungeon. But the problem is, of course, it's a really risky move because if you reset a key after 15 minutes just because you want to two chest it and then you don't actually two chest it the second time around either, well, then you wasted a lot of time. So I think uh, maybe that's just maybe it was just a little bit um, too risky for them to attempt the two chest there and they just said you know what we failed the two chest let's just play the 28 we don't want to risk resetting and maybe even failing the two chest again yeah i mean we actually saw that happen to direwolves last weekend right they they reset yeah. their Neltharian's layer on 28 thinking okay we can two chest this if we play it safe and then and then they had to one chest it on their second attempt so yeah and, i mean yeah you take the plus ones where you can get them i mean the thing is all of the players on that team are, you know, well-known veterans of just the dungeon running scene in general, whether it be MDI or TGP or even live keys, right? They've, they've all done it all. Even some of them have, you know, won competitions before. So they know this is not, you know, a sprint. It's a marathon. They just need to get their score where they can get it and hope that consistency throughout the weekend is something that they can pull out and eke out against the other teams. It does suck to be one key level down early on, but... You know, they should be able to pull through. They're they're a very, very veteran team. But looking at our other two runs, last moment also pushing right up against that two chest timer. They have thirty sorry, even less than that, fifteen seconds left now to get through thirty percent of the boss. That that's just not gonna happen. They, they yeah, didn't last moment also not uh, two chesting this. No, they definitely they only have this one death. So their route just being a little bit slower or maybe safer. Maybe they didn't uh they just didn't dare to do one of some of those bigger pulls on that 27, just playing it a bit more safer. Uh, Pixel on the top right. 
also very close for them. They have uh, they have a bit more than two minutes left, so it's for sure doable. Um, but they don't have Bloodlust anymore. They're everything is on cooldown right now, so they need to wait for a second set of cooldowns to come up. And ready check on the bottom left, also attempting that two chest timer. They do have a little bit of more time left. They they should be okay. They have a little bit less than four minutes, so ready check should for sure be okay. Um, last moment, not getting the two chest and pixel. A bit close. We're gonna have to take a, look, like a closer look at Pixel here. Pixel should be fine. They have a little less than two minutes now. Like you mentioned, 2536 is the two chest timer. To do 45% of the boss's HP, they've gotten through the trash here, so this, this last half of the boss shouldn't take as long as the first half did, which, you know, took them a little over two minutes. So they should be okay. They should be totally fine here. They've got their next set of two minutes coming up in a little bit here. They've got the power infusion off cooldown. And stack it with the breath whenever their mage is ready to go. So I, I, I imagine okay. they're going to be totally okay here. Nah, they're okay. All Trust. Right. If you believe. I believe. <laughs> Alright, so we, see, we do see uh, the Et is still mind control. They have to actually finish it off um, to get um, the extra percentage as well. But they don't want to finish it off too early. They did it now. Uh, they only have a shield and a priest here, so no haste buff on their mage player. Plans are running, at least some of them are already done. Less than 20%, they have a minute left. Okay, they have a minute for 20%, no cooldowns. Combust, uh, the only cooldown coming up. There's not going to be any more PIs, any more Breath of Eons. So only Combust from here on out. And no more haste buffs either, I believe. Uh, from the Invoker, or from the... It's actually Invoker, no. What's the mob called? Restorer? Remember? Uh, oh, Restorer, the... yeah. Yeah, Alright, 30 seconds, 8%. Yeah, they got it. They've got it. They're good. All right, yeah, they got it, they got it, they got it. All right, our next team that we've got a sweat in the bottom right corner, ready? Checks are in a very similar situation to Pixel, maybe a little bit ahead, actually. They've got the boss lower than Pixel did. They've got about two minutes left with the boss at 35%. They do have to cleave through this Restorer as well, but with the group comp, with the Fire Mage cleaving Ignites onto it, they should be totally okay as well. And, you know, the next question I was going to ask, with the key level being pushed up to a 29 now for the top three teams, is this a situation now where it's time to start branching out into the other keys and we have our first look at teams moving on to other keys? Legendary, opting to go to Freehold, opting to go to Liberty Town, as I've seen it called in certain <laughs> translations. <laughs> and his last hope, I... I'm guessing they're taking a break since their green dot hasn't moved on our scoreboard there. That's how we know what key they're in. Last moment as well, maybe maybe opting to take a break. Maybe just sitting in town figuring out where they're going to go. Pixel also going to Freehold. Okay. Cool, cool. Is anyone going to opt to go over to Brackenhide or Neltharian's Lair? Not going to be last moment. They're also going to Freehold. Hmm. What about Cool Beans? Let's see. Yeah, they got it. They have... Around 45 seconds left, uh, bust on 7%, so they're fine. So the only yeah. two teams that didn't two chest um, their 27 is Last Moment and Cool Beans. Definitely a little bit uh, of a problem for those two teams. But it's not going to be a problem now, right? They, of course, all have the 27 points, so right now it's not going to be showing on the leaderboard. Uh, this will only um, have effect once they do that academy again, which will only happen at the, end of done, at the end of the day, it seems like, because all of these teams are now moving on. As we talked about earlier, the first hour of the day has already passed, and that means that they kind of want to move on, making sure they get all of these dungeons done. Some teams taking the breaks, because uh, you cannot take a break within the first hour or within the last hour, but you do have to take a 20-minute break overall. So, yeah, maybe NA's last hope, as you said, discussing some routes, making sure their strategy that they practice for these dungeons on the tournament realm is also going to work with the affixes that they um, got handed to today. Yeah, and I mean, it's rough to keep this level of play up all day, right? It's very, very difficult. We were extremely impressed with the play style from our top three teams last weekend, right? But if you go back and look at day one, there was only one team that had a perfect day one. Only Perplexed didn't have a single failed, you know, plus three, plus two, plus one, whatever you want to call it in any of their attempted keys. Mandatory played well until the very end of the day, when in their first attempt on a 30 under rot, they had a little bit of a mishap on the first boss where the boss 180'd and frontaled them and they didn't really get to finish their key because their timer was already up for the day. That was their after, after hours key, so they didn't really get to do it. So, you know, 
if teams of that caliber can make mistakes and still not complete a perfect run, you would have to assume that, you know, a team like Cool Beans is probably still in a pretty okay situation if they're able to play perfectly throughout the rest of the day, get their, get their three chests, get their two chests when they need them, etc. And we do have a new key being attempted. Not everyone is going to freehold. Cool Beans getting prepared to run the Neltharian's Lair. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Um... We'll see in a second the, the affixes because I forgot. Let's see what the affix. Okay, fortified volcanic spiteful. There we go. Yeah, that's that's uh, like a very easy affix combination, right? I think the freehold combination is also really easy. You have the entangling and bursting, so that should mm -hmm. not be a problem for them. The problem is, of course, the tyrannical in freehold, and the problem in now flares are fortified, right? Because uh, fortified. Mobs in this dungeon can be very dangerous, not only for the tank, but you also have the pelters, the scorpions at the very end, uh, the avalanches that you have to dodge, the shapers that you have to interrupt. Uh, so it can be somewhat dangerous, but technically speaking, it shouldn't be an issue for these groups if they are very well coordinated. We see a huge pull coming in by Cool Beans, just pulling everything, uh, literally everything that is in this first area. And uh, yeah, definitely three chestable, the Nail Flare. One of the one of the dungeons with like a really easy timer on lower keys, so they should be able to do that just fine. And the twenty two freehold for legendary in the top left should also be pretty easily two chestable. I mean, for any t any two, twenty two dungeon should be two ch uh, three chested by these teams, right? On twenty two, yeah, hundred percent. We mm -hmm. should we if if a t if a two if a twenty two isn't three chested, something has gone wrong for that team, or they just didn't play aggressively enough. And it's kind of a tough. You know, it's a tough thing to do because, you know, there are some trains of thought where, you know, three chesting a 22 is a little bit like, it's not something you would expect to see in a key pushing competition where you want to push for the highest keys. But if you kind of extrapolate it out and, you know, you run a high key strat in a 22, you should be able to three chest a key with the strategy, with the routing, with the damage that you can put out. You just need to not make any mistakes. And that's something that consistently teams are doing across the board. I mean, even even the teams that are lower seeded should have a very easy time three chesting the twenty two. But you know, on the mm -hmm. off chance that that mistakes happen, you can very easily drop a potential key level in these lower keys. Now, Neltharian's Lair is actually a really interesting key in that the tyrannical version of the key, I would argue, is actually easier than the fortified version of the key. I think fortified Neltharian's Lair is one of the hardest keys available pretty much in any form of Mythic Plus content. I mean, remember, if you remember last week, right, when we were watching teams do the tyrannical Neltharian's Lair, the bosses really weren't the pain point of the dungeon for them until, like, the very, so? the, key, yeah, until the, the very end of the key. Until the very end of the key, when yeah, you yeah. were running up against the the weird timing on the last boss. But that, mm -hmm. that's not the difficulty of the boss, right? That's just weird mechanics of the boss. People weren't generally dying to damage from bosses on Tyrannical or, or bleeding out to that. It was just because of the way that boss works, because its HP, HP pool is higher Tyrannical, the timings get weird. I think the trash, though, doing extra damage, having extra HP, is so disgusting. Most of the wipes we were seeing in Melt Slayer, if you think about it, in Redirables, how we're having so many issues with the trash packs leading up to Naraxxus. I think we're going to see tons of wipes on higher key levels on the trash, like, in between first and second boss, and in between second and third boss. That's going to be where we're going to see, like, tons of runs just fall flat. They're going to run their run their heads into a wall trying to go for some big pull that just won't work because there's just too much damage going out, and the, and the, and the pack just lives too long. Yeah, that is for sure very possible. I mean, Nail Flare on Fortified is very scary. I think the only dungeon I'm more scared of on Fortified is probably uh, Vortex Pinnacle because all of the mobs there try to murder you in various different ways. And I have a one minute interrupt, so. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, another thing, like none of these uh, teams are going to Brackenite. And I just saw the affixes again. And I'm not sure if I just didn't see this before, but Brackenite is fortified in Corporal Sanguine. And that is, that must be like one of the most difficult affix combinations uh, that we have available. So yeah, there we go. Brackenite fortified in Corporal Sanguine. That is incredibly difficult to deal with, especially in Brackenheit, because in Brackenheit, there's numerous things that make Sanguine difficult. Number one, the mobs run away when they're low HP at the start, which means they're going to run into Sanguine. They're going to drop Sanguine everywhere, and it can just be very annoying. 
And then on top of that, you have some mobs later on in the dungeon, like the oak trees, that are very hard to move. Like, even if the tank moves away from the, from the tree, it might just stand still there for five seconds and sit in a sanguine pool and just have a good time and not move. So I think <laughs> though that affix combination can be pretty difficult for that queue. The boss also has one of the best boss names in any dungeon ever. <laughs> He's a tree and he has a mouth. <laughs> He's that tree is, mouth. Yeah, I love tree mouth. <laughs> Absolutely love it. <laughs> Perfect. Why not? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a rough dungeon. I mean, Reckonite is such a trash, rich dungeon. It's, some, it's something where this comp actually really shines. Fire Mage, of course, with its massive AoE damage augmented by the, by the two other DPS classes. They're going to pop off in that key. They're going to do over half a million overall, even with the nerf stall of their classes, probably. You know, uh, I, I am interested to see, though. I mean, some of our more difficult keys last week were the Sanguine keys, right? It's the highest skill cap mm, yeah. affix, I think, in the game, because, you know, it requires your tank to be extremely aware of their positioning at all times, making sure that they're keeping mobs inside of your flame patches, but also making sure they're not keeping it inside of Sanguine. And I mean, remember in the Halls of Infusion, where... Uh, one of our teams lost an entire minute in the first four minutes of the dungeon just due to raw sanguine healing. So it's going to be a rough one to see. Of course, no one's there yet, but they will have to go there. All of the teams will have to go there before the end of the day, and we'll see that get pushed up to a pretty reasonable level, too. I can't wait to see. I, I heard some things. And, like, I'm not sure if this is true, but apparently there's a mini boss at the very start of the dungeon. I'm not sure if you heard about this. Uh, his name is Fishface. The mini boss in Brackenhide at the very center of the dungeon, top left corner, and fish that face? yes, <laughs> it's literally called Fish Face, and he gives like close to five percent count, and does barely anything. Like he hooks the tank once in a while, and he does a frontal stun that he can dodge, and that's it. And he gives a lot of percentage. So I was thinking about doing this route in with bolstering. Because uh, in Brackenhide, bolstering can be weird. But I wonder if, they, if the TGP teams uh, have a route where they pull fish face. I would love to see, see that. I peep over at chat and I see Mode Boat say fish face pog. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, that guy right. is great. <laughs> it's a thing. All right. Guaranteed seeing fish, fa fish face route this weekend. <laughs> I would love to see the fish face route. Yeah, I, I I didn't even know that guy exists. To be to be fair, I haven't done a lot of pushing this season, uh, but so most of my experience in Brackenhide is just you know farming crests for you know upgrading yeah. gear on my alts. And generally, when you're doing lower keys, people just want to get out of there, that area as quickly as possible because pugs don't know how to kick properly, like almost ever. <laughs> so I I can't say that I've done a lot of exploration of that first area. Me neither. I mean, there's also like areas where you just never go. Right? Like sometimes you can go left or right, and some people don't even know that he, there's another path because I mean, <laughs> you never go there. So <laughs> the, because some of the trash there is illegal. But yeah, I've never pulled fish face except uh, when I when somebody told me that that map is there. I pulled it on Mythic Zero to see what it does. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of wait for fish face, but. Before we see fish face, we do have to <laughs> look at these Nail Flares and Freeholds first. Legendary already in Harlan Suite uh, on the top left side of the screen. Easily three chests in this key, of course. Zero deaths. Um, looking at the timer, the three chest timer is 18 minutes, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, so pretty easy for them. Yeah, should be no problem for any other teams uh, either, of course. Now, on the 25, it's a little bit of a difference. I think on the 25, we didn't see anyone three chest um, last weekend, right? No, I don't believe so. I think everyone two chested. Two chested, yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't be... Uh, yeah, I mean, they were somewhat close. So I don't think three chesting 25 is possible. What do you think? Uh, I doubt it. I mean, looking at the timer, mm -hmm. there's just not enough time left, right? With, yeah, with, the, yeah. with the ramp up in health and damage, I, I don't think we're going to see a three chest of 25. I don't think it's even going to be close. I do think two chesting the 25 is very, very easily doable. And then, of course, we've also seen two chesting the 27 is also very doable as well yeah. from last weekend. So should definitely um, be something that the teams are striving for. Like three chest into two chest into two chest. Pretty much exactly what we saw 
in the Algathar. And then, of course, move on to another key. Make sure you run all those keys up to the end of the day so that you can have your opportunity of doing the 29s. You know, in an ideal world, you, as like a top-end competitive team, should have all of these keys available at 29 with about, I'd say, an hour left in the day. 45 minutes to an hour left in the day. Oh, I'm not factoring break timers. <laughs> say 45 minutes left in the day. And then you can okay, run two, yeah. two of those keys on 29. And like that, I think that's your theoretical like cap on score for the day. So that would be a perfect run. So we should see teams going for that. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, still four teams that are technically that technically can have that perfect run. Now we do mm -hmm. have two teams that lost the two chests in the Academy 27, which is Cool Beans and Last Moment. Doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to be any of the teams getting eliminated, but definitely a little bit of a um, downside for later on in the day. We'll see how that affects them exactly. But yeah, we do see those 22s. Um, now being close to finish on some of these teams, getting that three chest timer in, um, and then some of the teams that took the breaks, they're a little bit behind, like NA Last Hope, for example, on the bottom right, they're only nine minutes into this dungeon, because they did take um, 10 minutes of their break timer, it is 20 minutes in total, so they'll have to take another 10 minutes at some point later on in the day, just not within the last hour, because uh, that's not allowed, I mean, you can do it, but then you get, uh, I think, minus three points, minus three score, which is insane. So definitely don't want to get that penalty. As the Cool Beans on the bottom left is now engaging Naraxas on their 22. They're a little bit uh, longer in this key compared to NA's Last Hope. But looking at the split, so let's see, 8 minutes 27 for oh, Ola Rock moment. on Cool Beans. Oh yeah, what's going on there? What is going on? This looks like it was a failed skip. They were trying to skip from Trothak towards Harlan Suite. And it did not work out for them. Now, they have all of their trash count already, right? They only need literally one singular more count to finish off their count. And I imagine they'll probably just kill off one mob after they finish off Harlan's suite. Ooh, that was a nice rescue attempt. They had someone get into a uh, mammoth, and they rescued the mammoth up top, and all three people got pulled up. However, not pulling off the invisibility skip here at the start of the boss. They really oh. didn't need all this count. They only needed one mob. Fortunately for them, they have the bloodlust, they have all of their cooldowns available, so the trash pack might not live very long, but that's damage that's going into doing AoE rather than focusing the boss down. On a 22 fortified key, does this boss die in less than three minutes? I mean, it should. They should still be fine, but that, that was a shaky first freehold for them. Yeah, and the fact that they're missing one count is also... I'm sure there's something that went wrong, right? Because you don't want to have one count missing at the end. Because, yeah, after the boss is done, or at the end of the boss, you can like pull a trash pick in and kill one of the dogs or something. But that's not very efficient, right? You do want to make sure you get that one count somewhere else. Maybe they missed a swabby somewhere with neutral mobs or missed something else. But, yeah, last moment definitely has to um, maybe fix the route a little bit for the 25. And especially for the 27, if they wanted to chest that one as well. Because uh, we did see them only one chest the academy. So they don't want to have the same thing happen for this freehold here. I do know, like in regards to last moment, that as far as live play goes, Elbro is like widely known to be... I don't want to necessarily say a one-trick enhanced shaman, but if you looked at the, the ladder for keys for the past like four seasons, he's been at the top of the ladder as an enhanced shaman. And he's swapping to play Fire Mage for this competition. I don't really know how well versed he is in Fire Mage. Obviously, like, a really good player can pick up another class and perform it to, like, 95% of its potential extremely well. But that 5% can mean a lot, especially when you're, like, the sole solo damage carry. And if anyone else on his team is also, you know, swapping their role, swapping their class up, they might not be getting the better output that you would expect from, you know, one of the top-end teams. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. They were a little slower in the Algathar, right? They didn't get the two-chest on the 27, brushing extremely close to the three chest timer compared to our other teams on the 22. We'll have to uh, see if that's a trend for them, or maybe it was more just like a routing thing, and I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to see. As uh, Ready Checks on the bottom right did have some issues as they pulled some trash packs on top of Eudora and Raul. As Royben did go down on that Hoyle Paladin, but uh, she did get rest immediately. 
now they're out of battle rests, so they have to be a bit careful from here on out, not making any uh, major mistakes to make sure they're not missing the three chests, because if one of the damage dealers is dead for like a whole boss fight or something, that cost that would cost you enough time to maybe miss that three chest timer. That uh, it's not super easy in this freehold. We've seen some teams get pretty close to it. Pixel on the top left side, for example, they um, of course have the 18 minute to three chest timer. They're pretty close to it. One minute, 15 seconds left for a three chest. That is of course, uh... wait. Oh yeah, it's Tyrannical, yeah, Tyrannical 22. So, hmm, I mean, I think they can do, let's see, Combast is coming up, PI is coming up. Breath of Eons is ready, so they can nuke the boss here quite a bit. They should be fine, but it's gonna be somewhat close if they don't get a lot of damage out here. Um, really, really close. 45 seconds. 40 seconds now. Now, the boss is actually at, like, 25%. Mm -hmm. Remember, that takes double damage for the last 30%. So, yeah, it's going to be extremely close here, but they are going to have to have absolute max DPS for the last 25 seconds here. It's going to come down to the wire pixel. Can you pull it off here? They're, they're fresh out of damage. That combustion might not even come back up here. It's just going to be one final SKB proc as well. Oh, can they get it done? 15 seconds? I think they're just barely ahead of the timer. This last SKB proc will finish it off for them. Just cannot have a final death to the cannon barrages here. Finish the boss off. Pixel 2%. There All we right, go. That was a scary, scary key for them, but they got it done. Got the three chest. And they should be good to get the two chests in the 25 if they play the same. It's a lot more lenient of a timer for them to hit. Meanwhile, and his last hope, putting together an absolute banger of a 22 Maltharian's layer. 1434. That is a blazing fast time. That's like a yeah. first season Legion MDI Maltharian's layer time. They, they blasted this key. Yep. Yeah, Nelflare, I don't think that should be a dungeon that anyone has issues with free chesting on a 22. Like the timers. Very easy there. Now, maybe they're not going to be as fast as NA's last hope, but uh, they can be two, three minutes slower and still get the three chest. So <laughs> it shouldn't be a problem for any of these teams. While the freehold looked a little bit sketchier for some of them, but so far everyone did three chest. Uh, cool Beans now going to attempt a 25 on the top left side. They're waiting a little bit before they go, making sure they discuss. Maybe there's something that went wrong in a 22 or, or they weren't like 100% sure about. Making sure they get uh, everything ready. There we go, jumping down the waterfall, starting the key. And uh, saving a little bit of time there. And yeah, all the other teams looking pretty good as well. Ready Checks just having this one death on the bottom right, as I talked about, on Roy Ben. But they're still going to be fine on that three chest timer if nothing else goes wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh... Should we talk about the Nelts tech? Because I feel like we're just kind of glossing over a little bit. I mean, it's been in the game yeah. for so, so long, but there's probably still some people that don't know about it. I mean, yeah, really quickly, I mean, Nels Slayer, ooh, as we're watching the Nels Slayer in the top left, Cool Beans, Fragments goes down, having to expend their battle res right at the start of the not key Not resetting. Here. Oh, that's, this is reset. It's okay, reset. now they okay. will. Okay. They'll, they'll go again. Not, not too much time lost. So essentially, the tech for Nels Slayer, very common you know, strategy for any key where... There's like a forced movement phase at the start of the dungeon. If you jump, if everyone jumps into the stream, the little river down the hole, and then you start the key, when the key starts, you'll just get pulled down the river right away. You don't have to worry about the 10 second start timer at the start of the key. So it saves you a good amount of time at the very start of the key. Probably actually in the realm of like, what, 15 seconds? Because you actually get like dragged halfway down the the cutscene, right? So, and then you don't have to I wait for the 10 it's second a... timer either. Yeah, because I cannot use that tech because I'm a Moonkin and I have to get Astral Power, which I can only do <laughs> when I jump down. Therefore, I cannot use this tech as a Moonkin. And I always arrive approximately like seven seconds later, I would say. But I'm also fast because I can swim You're in the fast. water with um, travel form. So maybe a normal person uh, would be 10 seconds behind, 15, as you said. Yeah. It's good tech to just save time at the start of the key, and of course all these teams know it. They've they've all been yeah. playing this dungeon forever, so they, they all know the tech. It's not like anyone has an advantage, but it's just something you can use at home if you want a little bit of extra key, or if you want to flex on your friends and, you know, be down in the water and, like, sheepishly say to your friends, well, where are you guys at? Let's start the key. You know? Maybe the person that has the key is actually not going to start because they saw them jump down, and now you ruined their <laughs> key, Zyro. <laughs> you see someone jump down, it's like, come back! 
Actually, I didn't start yet. <laughs> I'm well, the tech wait is for to be the person. The tech is to be the person with the key. Jump That's down when you still have the key yeah. start frame up, and then start it yeah. on yourself while you're on the on the little shortcut, right? Mm -hmm. That's the fun tech. The funny thing about because uh, I, as I said, as a moon can always jump down, and uh, my group leader uses the the blizzard countdown a lot instead of like mm -hmm. the DBM or Big Wicks countdown. And it has like the number in the middle of the screen, but it's covered by my key starting window. Right? So if I'm the person with the key with an L flare, <laughs> uh, I don't see when they jump down, I don't see the, the timer. So I have to like kind of guess when it's three seconds. Because usually what I do is um, I see when other people prop their cooldowns and their potions. So I know, oh, the timer's on zero, I'm just gonna start. But in L flare, I, they don't pop their potions at three seconds when they jump down the waterfalls and I don't see it because I'm downstairs. So either I need someone to call it out on, my, on voice chat, or I just have to like take a wild guess. If you, I'm well, usually you can also get an add-on that can move the key. No, it's, it's no, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, you can't do that. <laughs> what do you mean, I'm no? playing a very fun game here, OK? Don't ruin it for me. <laughs> oh, OK. All right. <laughs> I hope I start the key at the right time, guys. Whoops. <laughs> minus, minus 15 seconds. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, so this is going to be interesting. And his last hope blasted the 22. I mean, they were so far ahead of the time. They were like five five minutes ahead of the timer. So, could they three chest the 25? I think they can if they play the key the same they just did. They're, they have... They have I, I actually, I'm going to focus more on what they're doing in this key as well, because... How fast they went really doesn't make sense. They must be doing some bear pulls here because they they did that faster than I think any of our times we saw last week. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because Nagura just told me to continue her shift because everybody thinks we're the same person anyhow, and it just doesn't matter. But hi, Zyru. I heard Wait, we were talking Nagura, about your some, mic sounds some... a little different. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. I, I also changed my mic because chat was complaining about it. So if it still sounds bad, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> oh wait, this <laughs> Nagura I has get to it. Play, right? This is Junkrat. A... First time yeah. Junkrat has ever talked on stream. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Nagura. <laughs> Junkrat makes we're all the same person. Sure. Sure. Why not? You know, what you while I was what listening to you guys, mm -hmm. I tried to get more info on the fish face thing. Because oh. I was so intrigued. I was like, bet. I want to pull fish face. I want to see the fish face tech in Brackenheit. Um, but from everything I've gathered, it isn't really feasible. I'm still kind of here, though. So if any team wants to get bonus points, I think they should run fish face. What does a mix bonus point consist of? What, what are the benefits? It's just general sympathy, you know, not just of me, <laughs> but of chat too. So I think it's really worth it in this tournament. Okay. All right. <laughs> mix bonus points on the board for any team that puts together a fish face throughout this weekend. I, I have a feeling that it's not something that's too good. I mean, if it is yeah. really off the beaten path and it is only like, I think it's like 4.1% count. I, I don't know. I feel like there's so much count on the way to the bosses that going out of your way to pull extra trash count doesn't make too much sense. But I don't want to be a fish face hater. You know, I'm yeah, I'm neutral yeah. on the fish face debacle. <laughs> you would like to see it too. You can say it. It's okay. I'd like it to might see not it. be the most efficient route, but I would like to see it. Speaking of, we already made quite a lot of progression in that first one and a half hours of today, right? Talk me through uh, a little bit what I might have missed as I was fixing my microphone. Sure, yeah. So, essentially, we've had teams run up their key in Algathar. Everyone did three runs. Uh, four of our teams went for a three chest into a two chest into a two chest. So they have a 29 available. Two of our teams, Last Moment and Cool Beans, three chested into two chested, and then they only one chested the 27. Ah, great. Mm. Good visual moment from our production here. Perfect. So they only have 28s available in the Algathar. Now everyone has branched out into different dungeons here. Everyone has three chested their first run in the key that they've gone to. Of course, Readychex hasn't completed their first run yet. Um, but I believe last I checked, they were on pace to three chest their first key. Um, 
And that's where we're at right now. Everyone's running their 25s, except for Freddy Checks. They're still in their 22. And we're seeing pretty much across the board that the freehold doesn't seem three chestable in the 25. It looks like the timer is just kind of out of range of that. As you can see, Legendary in the top left, they were our first team to complete their 22. They were about... You know, they, they had about two and a half minutes left on the three chest timer in the 22, mm -hmm. which would probably move up to around like a mid to high 18s, low 19s on a 25, which is what I'm expecting to see from them here, which is a very clean two chest, but three chest just seems barely out of the question uh. for them. Um, that's kind of what we're looking at in the freehold. However, in the Nelth Slayer, in his last hope had a ridiculous Neltharian Slayer timer. It was like 1430. They had five minutes left on their three chest timer on the 22. So I would not be surprised at all if they could potentially even three chest the 25 if they can put together a similar caliber run in the 25. Uh, I'm not too sure about Cool Beans. They're, they were about a minute slower. They could also potentially put together a three chest run too with a clean run. Remains to be seen. But uh, that's pretty much where we're standing right now. Thank you so much for that. I always feel like newer teams specifically undervalue the early plus two plus threes a little bit we saw this to an extent last weekend and i think we might be seeing it again with last moment which is really unfortunate but it just saves you so much time if early on you're able to get that extra key level for free basically mm -hmm. then you overall save so much time because these teams are not just running into any old key they have to push up the key that they have in order yeah. to get to the highest highs so maybe just to reiterate that that's definitely something they need to look into and i think even need to practice when signing up to the tgp where it's like oh you know what's a good speed kind of running strat for this dungeon yeah. more mdi style and then later on you can actually work on the 27 28 29 even 30s maybe yeah we talked a little bit about that earlier right on right like there's there's definitely something to be said for the teams that participate in both the mdi and the tgp that have a little bit of an advantage they're they're more used to running this like low 20 key level extremely fast they can put together extremely quick runs and they can execute them as well so when you see a team like legendary come into this competition they're almost no, it's like it's a breeze for them to three chest the 22 as a matter of fact if they didn't three chest the 22 we'd think there'd be something wrong with them because they <laughs> do that all the time in the mdi yeah. even if they make a mistake they should still three chest it uh, it, you know that that that's that's something that kind of goes without saying now if you are a high key pushing team like last moment is if you put together a clean run you should still three chest the 22 easily and they did they have both times it's just a matter of what do you do on the 25? What do you do on the 27? And they have missed out on one, you know, one key level in the Algathar. Now they're not, you know, they're they're not out of the competition by any means whatsoever. It's just a potential point that they've lost moving forward in the day. They still have to push up, you know, all the other all the teams still have to push up the other three keys. Ample opportunities for other teams to make mistakes. They can get back in it very easily just playing clean for the rest of the day. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at some point mistakes may be bound to happen to anyone so uh usually the playing field stays quite open we did see a little death there on the side of pxl mm -hmm. in the bottom left but they could recover and finish it off now here is a legendary and unfortunately right above that three chest here with harlan sweet on 22 percent just in a couple of seconds he's going to get that big damage buff and then they can kill but it is going to end up with a plus two uh, makes I get a little hit of dopamine whenever I like predict yeah. a time and a key, and I'm like dead on. <laughs> Remember what I said for for 25 free so hold high 18, low 19s. I'll look at the timer. It's gonna be like 19:02. Oh, I love getting predictions right. It makes me so happy. But there you go, two chests <laughs> on the 25 for legendary, and they're probably our fastest team in this key. If they can't three chest the 25, I really seriously doubt that any of our teams will be able to. So two chests the 25 probably the play for every team and with that timer you know five minutes of leeway for a two chest they should be able to two chest the 27 pretty comfortably as well they should i'm i'm not sure i agree with legendary being the fastest team i think there's still an open field on that and we could see teams being faster in the freehold because you know sometimes 
it, there's like a team that's really good in that one dungeon, right? And even though they might not be a super favorite coming into the weekend, you're just really good at that one dungeon. It's something we're seeing with the TGP again and again, even in the MDI sometimes. So I'd wait until at least like the top three contenders have gone through to, <laughs> to make a statement on that. I think that's NA's true. last hope out here, I think... They have a, a lot to give in those fast dungeons as well, but they're currently on Raxas in the 25, and as you said, they had a really good 22 before, so we're expecting them to be pretty good on the timer once they finally reach Dark Roll, but I do have a little bit of um, a gripe, I believe is the correct English word here, with uh, our affixes, because I was mm -hmm. hoping, praying, that we would get a tyrannical Neltharian Slayer, because I've again? heard about some class variety in this dungeon. No, not again. It's again fortified. Last week was also fortified. So Wait, I've what? been waiting on a tyrannical one. Would have been so cool, but doesn't doesn't happen. It's not. Was maybe it? we can give them that for day three. Was it fortified last week? It was, because otherwise we would have seen a different tank. Oh, okay. I'm I'm stupid. It was, yeah, you're right. It was fortified. I thought it was tyrannical for some reason. You know, when the bosses get to the five-minute range, you just kind of assume they're tyrannical. Yeah, okay, it was fortified. Fair. Hmm. Yeah, it was really hard on the fortified. Yeah, like, if it you was. just remember how the keys went, I can see why you thought it was. But with a tyrannical, we would see a different There's class. No you know, time. I'm a people We're pleaser. I've seen chat now. crying about it. I just I want to give them that. It appears yeah. The treasure you so you, you think we would have seen the Prot Warrior like for sure if it was tyrannical? Of this beast. Yeah, one hundred percent. There is a ton of spell reflect value in this key. Yeah, that that is the case. Damn, we really should have. Why didn't we put this key on tyrannical? Yeah. We we really. That telling you? <sighs> Man. Maybe maybe for day three. Yeah. Just see, yeah, I just swap it to tyrannical for day three. <laughs> hey guys, you put up a fortified key. It's tyrannical now, by the way. Have fun with that. <laughs> I am sorry. Oh, that would be so cursed. Don't, Don't say that. You're giving protection to the yes. I have witnessed your so let's look at what NA's Last Hope is doing sure differently in this key compared to the teams that we saw last weekend. Their routing is different. They're ending up pulling one of these Scorpions, one of these Dominators, which we didn't see get touched essentially at all last weekend, right? It, they, we saw it a little mm. bit on the lower key levels when they were pushing Patrick up the keys. Patrick yesed it a little bit. I think their route had the Scorpions in it. Yeah, but by and large, when we got to the 30 and the 31, or the, just the 30, um, we didn't see the Dominators get pulled. We saw both Dominators skipped, because the damage at that higher key level just... it does too much to pull them. Now, I wonder if NA's Last Hope is going to swap to that strategy when they get to the higher key, and this is just like a low-level speedrun strat? Uh, it remains to be seen, but again, they're just blasting this key. They're going to have their trash count done here. At a little over 15 minutes into the key, they're going to have about four minutes to finish off this last boss on Fortified. They have their Bloodlust ready. They have all their cooldowns ready. This boss is going to melt, and they're going to three chest to 25, like almost guaranteed. I'd absolutely agree with that. We're looking at 19.48 in the timer, which is so much time to give. You can see them already line up. They have so much space, which was an issue before. We can see the um, mage just vanish off the aggro there, make sure they're not in fight with the scorpion, because they do pull when you pull the boss, but it's something we've seen in the knock hoods in the MDI last season as well. Just utilize that mage. Uh, get rid of this pack, get out of combat, and you can just pull the boss by itself, and the gruels should be melting extremely fast. I doubt that they even get to the chart skin phases that are actually scary here. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, on this low of a key level, we're not really getting to the point where the molten sculptors, or the magma sculptors, are just are pushing up towards the magma wave timer, right? That That's the biggest problem on this fight. That's what we saw perplexed by a couple times last week, is getting to that fourth sculptor and <laughs> not being able to kill it off before it ate a second spike, and then they didn't have a spike for the magma wave, and that was a wipe. On this key level, it's not going to happen. They'll get, like, this second sculptor in a little bit here. They'll burn it, and then they can just kill the boss. I mean, this boss is dead in about a minute. They, they have such a fast strategy in this key. It's actually kind of unreal. Uh... I don't think we've seen a key run in this in this in this else. I don't think we've seen a key this fast in a while, and I'm not sure if it's the uh, the affixes that are letting them do this, or if they just have that much faster of a strat than what we saw last weekend. 
Yeah, look at them. 19% to go, and they're just zooming through this key. Now, we already saw how this dungeon can look, like I said, on the Fort of Fat last, last weekend. We saw that it taps out pretty quickly with some of these bosses towards the end, so mm, with the new scaling, definitely a different kind of beast to slay. Ooh, oh, what's going no, on for ready checks? All right, that's one of our first resets of the weekend. We saw the Town Portal Scroll coming out from Roybin there. Going to go again. Not too big of a time loss, only eight minutes, but it does tend to add up over the course of the weekend. Not going to be too happy about that one, but no time to, to sit there and wallow. Got to go again in that 25 freehold. There is no time to wait. Until Unless they want to take a break, until you take a break right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna see them go again. I'm pretty sure they'll just send it back. I think they're a little bit behind to the other teams, just looking at how far they come through the dungeon thus far, so they probably want to try and reclaim some of that delayed time before they go into break. You know, it just feels bad when you're when you're going into break while already being a little bit behind the others. But Cool Beans, top left, we're going to see them do the same thing that we saw from NA's Last Hope, and they're also going to play the Scorpions here. Look how slow they are compared to NA's Last Hope, though. Like, they haven't even really made any mistakes, they just have the one single death. But just to give you a comparison, NA's Last Hope was finishing off this Dominator at, like, if I remember properly, right after 15 minutes, right? It was like 15 15 yeah. when they pulled the boss here. Cool Beans is going to be pulling the boss almost two minutes later. And this last boss took in his last hope. I want to say a little over two minutes to kill. So Cool Beans, they got to get a move on here if they want to have a chance of three chesting this key. What did you say the three chest timer was again? It was 19. Um, yeah, I definitely know that on the top of my head, it is going to be 1948, yeah. Okay, they do not have much time left. They they cannot sit here and finish off these spiteful shades. They gotta go. And also, another thing not in their favor, they don't have the bloodlust. They, they just have the mage's personal second lust, and that's it. Uh, this is gonna be a rough one for them. Two minutes, 20 seconds to get the three chest here and match NA's last hope. Dr. J again doing the invis tech, pulling the scorpion, invising Agarwaf. Did he get actually get it off though? He didn't get it no, off? No, 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 no. He didn't get the invis? He just oh, has to die. He has to die. That is unfortunate. They're oh, no, in fight though. In combat. They have the scorpions pulled. Oh no. Oh no. That's tragic. That's exactly not what you wanted to have happen. But they, they are going to keep going here. I don't think this is a reset, right? You already spent like 20 minutes in this dungeon. You just send it off despite knowing that uh, plus three is out of contention, you can buff back up and you'll try it again, but really, really tragic with that skip there. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe he was too close to the scorpion? I didn't see either. There's some, there's some, there's some finicky things you have to do properly with the timing of the scorpion reset, where it does mm -hmm. pulsing AoE, right? So if you, if you invis and you get hit, it can break you out of the invis. Now, if you have greater invis, I don't think that matters. Maybe you just didn't have greater invis. Maybe you tried to use regular invis and it just didn't work. I didn't see which one it was that he used. But did you also see what they did to to recover the wipe? They used the uh, the engineering toy for the expansion. I don't, I don't actually know what it's called because I actually haven't seen it been used ever. But it's the one that Savior, thank you. That's what it's called. Think production in my ear telling me what it is. <laughs> I was like, I didn't I, say anything. <laughs> I, I've never, uh, I've never seen someone actually use that in game, like in person. But it works similar to like how the failure detection pylon used to work back in Legion, where whenever one dies, it reses you. But of course, mm -hmm. as all engineering toys do, it has a chance to just catastrophically fail and explode. So, <laughs> fortunately, that didn't happen for them. But you know, all good. I but, just checked it because mm -hmm. I was curious whether or not we were running Greater Invis on Dr. J. And because we have this really cool overlay on Twitch, just, you know, plugging, um, mm -hmm. I actually could see that he is running it. So I think he was maybe too close and just... Oh, I didn't see... We Okay, we have a gear tool now. Awesome. We do. We it's really nice. Weekend. Sick. You can check every team. You can check the players, what they're wearing. You can Very also see what cool. key they're in. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for putting that together. <laughs> Whoever's been working on that. Awesome. We've we've been needing that for TGP we for love a while. Production. 
I think I think in the past what we had to do is we just had to look at the actual player routes on on uh, Raider IO, which was fine, but it wasn't like an active up to date thing like we have now. That's actually really sick. If you're looking for it, because it's a little bit sneaky, if you're hovering the team that's in the top left, it will appear on the left hand side. It's like a little. I would say wow looking arrow that pops out and you can click it and then you're going to see it. You might also have to refresh the stream. If you've had the Warcraft stream open since last weekend and you just never closed it, as I know some people do, no, some people just don't like closing tabs, just refresh the stream if it's not there. It'll be in the top left corner. That's really cool. I'm glad we got that put together. But looping back to the conversation we were having about cool beans, there is again, you know, there's a mistake for that, right? So cool beans. There is. They're not going to go for the. They're not going to get the three chest. They're going to have to settle for the two chest, which is a problem. In fairness, they already look to be kind of on time for the two. Like it was not yeah. an easy plus three. So I think we're maybe not as worried about the plus two for them. But of course, it's not ideal when another team gets the plus three. You also want to get the plus three. Otherwise, you're losing time in comparison to them. But at the end of the day, it is going to be two teams that qualify on Sunday, so uh, if just one team is better than you, then that's okay. Yeah, I mean, in his last open, this key looked like they're going at a ridiculous clip, you know, compared to compared to Cool Beans, which is the only team that run it. Now, the problem for Cool Beans is they are the only other team that's running Elf Slayer, which means they don't have the option to go back in time and look at what NA's last hope did and copy the route to go even faster, whereas every other team that hasn't gone to Nelth Slayer yet does. You know, once they go on their break and they think to themselves, we want to go to Nelth Slayer, let's see who's doing well in Nelth Slayer. Oh, NA's last hope had a banger time in their 22, let's see what their route was. They can take tidbits and pieces from that route, put it together, and potentially eke out the 25 3 chest which, you know, would set Cool Beans behind, which is actually even worse for them because they're one of the two teams that didn't get the two chest and the 27 of Algathar as well. So Cool Beans, it's been a rough start to the day for them. You know, fortunately for them, we're only two hours in, still have three hours left plus overtime, so they still have time to get it together. And as we've already mentioned several times there, full of veteran players, full of MDI winners and MDI competitors in the past. So I would imagine they can put it together. This group definitely is, is super close, I feel like, in just what they can put out and what we're expecting of them coming into this. But, of course, one team is going to be eliminated at the end of the day, and that will be the team with the least score normally. We do have tiebreakers for that if it should come to it. So the one thing you're looking to do today, if it's not going great, is don't end up at the bottom. You need to, you need to put in enough score to at least make it to day two and then you're fighting again looking at what went wrong yesterday what can we do for today that is going to be better which many teams actually profit a lot of like sometimes you can see like a day one is kind of semi good and then day two they come back and they stomp the competition but you need to reach that day two so that will be the big talking point for end of day but of course for now we need to put timers on the board for all of the dungeons first and we can see teams are pushing up the first two dungeons. Now, Zara, what do you think we're going to see last? Probably the Brackenheide, just because of the lethal affixes? Yeah, Brackenheide's probably the last key that most of the teams will go for. It's it's going to be the most time-consuming, right? Long, one of the longer dungeons, more trash count. You put Sanguine on it, which is mean. Um, it, it's going to be a tough one for them to put good runs together in. Uh, so they're going to spend the most time on it near the end of the day, if I had to guess. Um, but I, I don't know how high it's going to be pushed up today. I'd imagine it's going to be pushed at the same point the rest of these keys are, which is like, you know, you do your third run of the key, whatever that may be, and then you just move on to another one. And then, you know, once they've done three runs in every key, I, I would be surprised if Brackenhide is where they end up. I think we'll probably see the 29 Algathar run. We'll probably see the 29 or 30 Nell Slayer run. We'll probably see the Freehold on 29 run before the teams even consider going for whatever their fourth Brackenhide run. Look what Check is maybe. doing. Okay. Did you see that? Shella is not. just chilling oh. up there on that mountain. Yeah, he, this is the uh, this is the tech that we've seen from a few teams where they run forward to Trothak, and then he's going to Wernstone back to the group. 
I believe, any second now. But he did that during the fight, so the rest of the team is still in the Council of Captains, and he just walked off casually, you know. Oh, he's gonna grab the pit Lock broker things. And now he's going to activate it. Yeah, super cool. Saving a lot of time. I wonder how much of a time save this actually is if he's not there augmenting his teammates, right? I mean, like, if he stays there and he breaths and buffs mm. and then goes and does this, and he actually stays there the entire time, grabs the pig, saves... I wonder if that saves a ton of time. But he stood there doing nothing for a while, and he didn't even actually end up grabbing the pig either. So they're still going to have to do that. I'm not really sure how much of a time save this particular, you know, iteration yeah. of it was. It's not, it it's not like the timer on this 25 is... <laughs> It did and it ended cool. up being. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, not... I think hmm. he might have needed Roybin to actually get up there because of yeah. the range that you have on the Warren Stone. I don't know if people know that, but it's only 100 yards. So you can't go very far with that Ogvoker teleport. So maybe he needed Roybin to actually walk to the spot that she needed to be to actually pour it back and it wasn't as coordinated as it maybe should have been. So maybe the plan was never to grab the pick, just go over quickly and then come back. Yeah, that's... There's a lot of problems that you have to solve with that, right? Like, you need to have someone, probably your healer, run in range of you to teleport to. But that's also hard to do because the way they were pulling trash on top of the Council of Captains made it tough for them to not have their healer there. So he did. Up, he didn't end up just kind of standing there for a while. Uh, I think. I think we might have just happened to see them go for that at like the worst time possible, and unfortunately, that was the first time that we actually caught them like on our player cam doing it. We didn't see yeah. that. We didn't like see that at all in first Unluck. person last weekend. Even though we knew they were doing it, we didn't actually get to show you guys that they were doing it. We, we, mm -hmm. we could just. We just got to talk about it. Or maybe that's just how it is all the time, and they just kind of end up having to sit there waiting for their healer to find a good spot to get them to teleport. I don't know. We'll have to see. That's something we should uh, keep a closer eye on this weekend. We will, as we will be having three full days of freehold. I think last time around was like, you know, they pushed up the freehold, but it was on a different day, so there was lots of other stuff to see. So now, more freehold as both PXL and Legendary finish up bosses here. PXL a little bit behind Legendary, just an overall dungeon progression. You can see, oh, the, the complete plane breaking. But I love these skips that they're doing on the evokers with the mount. It's really, really cool, the rescue tech there. Oh yeah. I I, I love any time you can just manipulate mounts around. If it's a grip or a rescue, it's always fun to see just entire groups of people moved around. Yeah. Oh, imagine if WoW had like an eight-seater mount as well. That'd be fun. <laughs> but I don't, think, I don't sure. think they'd ever add one of those to I'm the game. I'm not sure I'd like that. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Cool Beans taking a lot of damage here on Rockmore and the 27, but it will fall eventually and they can move on. And with 450, 452 uh, on the timer, I'd say that's actually pretty slow for the 27. Oh, you know what they could actually do if they had access to this mount in the Tournament Realm, which they don't? What was that okay. one, like, secret mount that you had to go to oh, the, Suramar for? The brain-sharing mount? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it you called? just have everyone get inside the same mount, and then you can just move four people around. That could work. Hive mind. The hive mind, yeah. Thank you, chat. But I don't, I don't I think I think brain-sharing was close. I don't think they have access to that mount on TR. We, we give them very specific mounts, and... That's it. That's why you see them all using actually very similar mounts. going down for Legendary. Oh no, Legendary. Tobo also ended up using the block on this pull, probably to get bursting stacks off if I had to guess, but maybe he didn't actually have to do that because they had the uh, master spell. I mean, okay, we should really take a look at the top two teams though, because these are probably the two standout teams that we've seen in the first couple of hours of the competition. There are other teams that are like on pace with them in terms of like progression in dungeons, but these two teams have been going noticeably faster in their runs than everyone else, and they've kind of put themselves, you know, a little bit above the competition because of that. And they can give us a good idea of how difficult these dungeons gonna be are going to be on their key level because, you know, they're completing them first here. Legendary and the 27 free hold here. Plenty of time left on the two chest timer here. Just have this one trash pack left to do, and then, of course, they'll be dealing with Harlan Suite after the fact. Should have... 
probably a minute and a half or two minutes to spare if they're playing clean. It is a high tyrannical key, though, so plenty can go wrong on the boss, especially when you just decide, hey, let's just pull it into the trash pack. Why not? I was not? waiting for that. I, so I was last too, week, but halfway through was weird. <laughs> last week, we actually saw some teams skip the trash first and then go over with Harlan to add the trash later when Bloodlust would come up. And now we've also seen teams do first the boss, then the trash. And I was kind of waiting for them to pull it together. So maybe they just wanted to finish off some of the trash. You know, maybe the enforcers, they do a lot of extra damage that you can just split. But the enforcer is still there. So he's the only one being left alive as they finish the trash pack off. It's maybe just a, a tank strat, right? Or, yeah. Maybe they're waiting Lepan for Lapan is saying, I want to tank all of that at once. I don't care. We have so much time. Easy. <laughs> but there you go. A little over four minutes left on the boss. Going to be no issue whatsoever. Just have to live through the nasty dagger plus cannon barrage overlaps, and they'll be totally fine. We should see the two chests from the 28 come in easily for them, which means it should be relatively easy for the rest of our teams attempting the 27 as well. NA's last hope, however, in the top right-hand corner, starting to show you know show the signs of the key level progression here the 28 here still dealing with ulrog craig shaper 13 minutes into the key whereas you know if you remember back to the 22 they were essentially in the last boss room at this point in the key that's what that 10 percent exponential scaling will get you when you get into these higher key levels and we'll see them probably start to consolidate some of their pulls and go for more reasonably sized poles, right? We're still going to see a relatively large pole after this boss here, running down to the water, if I have to assume, pulling the Nashers, and they'll end up pulling them back into this three-pack we see on the right. And if they do end up going for this, this is a pole that we saw wipe a lot of teams last week. This is a dangerous pole if they're going for it. You can see Goop turning that way, and they are pulling it. Uh, but just the Nashers plus that three pack isn't enough for Dorky. He's got his cooldowns up, he's ready to go. We're also going to pull the first two mobs, this Geomancer, into the pull as well and uh, make it a nine, a nine, nine mob pull, I believe. Yeah, nine mobs yeah. in the group here. We'll see Dorky how to deal with it. And instantly, over. as if on cue, Dorky goes down at the start of oh, the pull. Oh no! You cursed it, Zyro. I, I wouldn't say it's a so curse. Well. I, I, I. Okay, I just said it was going to happen. If I if I was cursing it, I'd say there's no way they could wipe. Oh man, it is a rough pull, okay? <laughs> in all in all defenses for NA's last hope, this pull is massive. It beats up your tank and you can, as far as I know, also line of sight here, which is one of the reasons why we saw um, Drogo actually run down and grab the alligators first, so maybe that there's a better connection between them, but uh, yeah, really, really tough beats up your tank. They were able to recover it, which is going to be the biggest, most important factor here, and we're not too worried about it, as they are very fast on the overall timer. Turkey's going to be in a bit of danger here. Doesn't really have too much available Ooh. now. The rest Ooh. of the group, not out of the woods either. Just the amount of raw damage that can go out on players in the group here is really nasty here. Got to keep an eye on the bile from the lurkers and of course the aggro reset whenever they tunnel. But if one of those grubs spawns on top of you and you don't move away from it, those things melee. And they melee for a lot. They can they can bonk you for your entire HP bar. So got to keep an eye on your feet. Can't be too close to melee to get AoE'd. But it looks like, you know, just with the one tank death, they're going to get away by the skin of their teeth here and live to see the next pull. That was a... Uh, well done by the team to, to pull that together even though their tank went down at the start. I think we had two deaths. I think Gupo also went down by like not having a tank, but they had two battle rests, so they were okay. Um, definitely there was two deaths in the overall dungeon timer, but like you were saying, the timer is looking so good for them. They're not looking for a three chest in a plus 28. That would be ridiculous. So they're looking for that two chest if doable, and even if it's just a plus one, I think you're still going to be very happy with that. We do have something going on this weekend, because you guys can purchase the pet pack to support a blue check Ukraine. All proceeds will be donated to this important cause, and it will be available until August 29 this year. If you want to know more about that, you can do exclamation mark charity for uh, cute Sunny and Flurky. I hear somebody in our caster team already yoinked that name. Well, like on the room. I would call her cat Flurky, you know? It's pretty crazy. 
I, this is this is a great cause though. Definitely uh, into supporting that if you can. I wish they also gave us Corbo though. Oh well. Hmm. Cool beans on little rock there in the top right. And something that I wanted to talk about, I think last weekend already, because I see, I pug a lot. Okay, I don't have many friends. I pug a lot. And something I see a lot is people running around when the hands come in and they instantly get smashed by them. So just a quick tip, if you are running this key with a puck or not, when they come in, just stay still, see where they are and walk after. Because if you're moving while they are spawning, sometimes it hits you. Yeah. Test it for you. Mo <laughs> momentum demon hunter things, you know? It's also interesting to mention, there are some interesting strategies that teams have figured out during the course of the, uh, the TGP, and they've reported it. Of course, you know, in the spirit of competition, if there's ever anything that the teams have figured out strat-wise that might potentially break a boss, they there's a system by which they, you know, t ask our admins if it's acceptable, and mm -hmm. the admins will respond to them. And sometimes it's not acceptable, and sometimes there are just bugs that get fixed. And I think one of them was actually on this Naraxis boss, where, you know, a lot of people knew about this. If you go stand behind the worm before mm -hmm. the rock throws from these devouts, it was, only, it was only 70 yards. So if you stood behind the boss, you just didn't take damage from the rock throws over the course of the entire fight. That got hot fixed this week to be 300 yards. So there's no more cheesing of Naraxis going on. That's not something that they would need to do on Tyrannical, but, you know. We like to see. Yeah, there was a similar tech fixed. with the spike tongue that I yeah. think is also not allowed because it's not in the spirit of this boss fight. So they yep. have to run. Coming in now for NA's last hope, and you can see Dorky going all the way to the back of the room, making sure the spike tongue doesn't pull him in, which is not going to be a problem for this team here. And I think they're doing really well on the overall timer. Spike tongue is out, tank is back, and we can zoom. Doing great, honestly. I, this twenty-eight, they were never. I mean, obviously, let's be let's be, let's be real. They were never going to three-chest this twenty-eight. Um, Two-chesting still on the table, though. Surprisingly enough, I think we did actually see a, a twenty-eight two-chested last weekend as well. So NA's last hope really uh, showing they're one of the teams that can be a competitor of our top couple of teams from last week if they're able to pull this off here. They've got about, you know, a little over five and a half minutes left to go for the two chest. Are they still going to go for There's the single no dominator pull, though? Let's see, because once you start getting into this key level, I am sorry, one guys. tick of that it dominator the you see. really <laughs> starts to hurt. You can't take any other damage. Let's see uh, what the strategy is from them. <laughs> Pathetic. All right, Nene's last hope. Oop on the right hand side, sneaking around here. Sleepwalk coming in, making sure they don't come into combat here. But of course, we have the Soothe also deployed by Junkrat. And yeah, I think we're doing the same pull. In comes the Dominator with this pack here. Maybe we're going to see the CC come out. Yeah, here it is. So a little bit of a sheep situation in the top left corner you can see it there in the background making sure it's not going to give them too many problems as if there is multiple of these breakers the avalanches the damage it just goes crazy you're just moving you're not going to be able to do much damage so they just sheep one off i'm going to add them later and deal with the dominator first mm -hmm. finish off the dominator as quickly as possible you do not want to be taking that pulsing aoe damage you can see every single time that aoe pulse goes on two ranged players drop a ton. That was a little bit of a damage reduction there. Let's see how far down they go. Okay, you know what? It's honestly not too bad on this key level. They're dealing with it pretty well. This is probably scalable up to 30 if they play the same way. I mean, really? Really impressive play from them here. They're, again, just crushing this 28. Now, if I remember correctly, on a 30, this last boss ended up lasting about four and a half minutes. 28 yeah, probably ends right. up lasting a little less than four. Which means it depends they get... a little bit on the team, right? We saw sure. much variation here, depending on, like, was Bloodlust available and how much right. damage were they able to conjure it? <laughs> but NA's Last Hope having Bloodlust, I would say, like, 440, around that, 450. Yeah, okay. So on this key level, 
we're, we're talking about 30, obviously. On this key level, I would guess that's probably about a minute shorter, because you have to kill off one less sculptor, you have to do one less magma wave. These, like, ad-based fights really kind of ramp up in difficulty a lot. This might... The two chests might still be on the table here, Mix. They, they might be able to barely eke it out here. It's going to be a close one. We'll have to turn to the titles spreadsheet just to make sure we get an exact timer. It's 26, 24. Oh, yeah, they have tons of time. Okay, perfect. Four minutes, 24 seconds to kill the boss off here to get the two chests. They've got the bloodlust on pull. They'll probably actually wait until they get the combustion PI off cooldown. So it shouldn't take them too long, though. Yeah. This is going to be great for All them. Right. Just, get the, just the get the skip. Just get right. Yes. Working. <laughs> <laughs> Cha ching Everything's good. We're that actually is not going a to rest right thing we've seen. away here on the pole with all the cooldowns available. I really like this. Gonna make sure that you're really quick in overall boss HP progression. I think on the very high key levels we might see them return to lusting on one of the Charskings, but for now, I think absolutely right call. Just nuke it out of the world with and we're going to have a very good time. You can see their goal already on 67% here, dropping lower and lower. And ah, I don't think they need to be worried about the timer at all. Yeah, I mean, that was a big burst, but it looks like they're going to be able to kill the boss off with the next set of two minutes whenever they do end up coming up. The, the damage is absolutely there from them. I mean, this is a pass-fail boss, right? If you somehow manage to accidentally smash the crystals as a tank, you can still wipe... But Dorky's not going to let that happen. This is the first time Dorky's been in a TGP competition in a long, long time. I don't think he wants to throw around like that, so it's ne never going to happen. But there's plenty of time on the board. They probably only have to do one more Magma Wave. They are sitting very pretty in this key. They are. I'm actually really happy Dorky's here, you know? He's been uh, uh, doing a lot of, like, watching streams of MDI, and now he's here competing as well, which is going to be good, and despite me not picking this team in predictions, I think they're definitely one of the favorites. I just wanted to mix it up a little bit, so I already caught some flame from him in chat, <laughs> which is fine, which is fine. I respect that. <laughs> that wasn't flame. It was just a little bit of Bant's mate. Yeah, it's part of it all, you know? You got it. <laughs> yeah. Charskin goes down, Dark Rule continues to drop for NA's last hope, but we're not worried. They have so much more time until they reach that timer that they're trying to beat. And the plus 28 looking super good on the plus 2. Yeah, this is going to be probably the last magma wave they get. All bunched up behind the crystal, all perfectly safe. Sub 20% on the boss here. This this last Charskin's not coming out for a while. They'll just be able to run the boss. This is a very, very clean two chest timer from them. They didn't even get close to it. Almost two minutes left on the two chest timer. Extremely impressive first half of day one from NA's Last Hope. Still perfect on the board. Still no major mistakes from them. The only thing we've seen go wrong from them is that tiny hiccup that happened in this key earlier. The, the one tank mm -hmm. death, you know, plus one extra death as well, which wasn't that big of a deal. And they're looking awesome. They're, they're looking they're looking like a team that can make NA proud. I mean, they're NA's last hope after all. I would hope they do what they say they do. But we do have a little bit of a caster swap ready here. I believe Adratnos is back and Zyro can take a break in an ice bath or something as uh, he's still in a very hot Texas Bless. without a working AC. So take your break and then cool up, I hope. Thank you. Yeah, much as the competition is heating up here, things are still heating up in Zyro's house. So we'll see if we can check back in with him later and see if he's <laughs> able to survive. <laughs> but yeah, Cool Beans now getting ready to get into Dargrul themselves in their plus 27, also on that two chest pace potentially here. That would be very good news for them to secure this. That's a, that's a two chest that they would... It, it's a lot better to two chest than to one chest of 27. You save yourself oh, like 30 minutes, which is a lot of time in this competition. Yeah. Especially in a dungeon as high as this one, right? If you're like not three chesting at 22, it's like, okay, it's like 15 more minutes. But here we're talking about 25 more minutes, which makes it so much more. But... 
Stratnos, we're gonna get into the pleasure of seeing the first Brackenhide for today. Wow! And I do want to say this dungeon's affixes are something. Production was cooking when they made this one. Yeah, we have Sanguine. Uh, it's it's Sanguine Fortified, right? Or is it? It's Sanguine something. Yeah, yeah it's it's, uh, it's, it's nasty. Sanguine Incorporeal Fortified. Okay, yeah, Incorporeal is not too bad for this. Like, this comp has so many good tools to use against Incorporeal. You have Sleepwalk from your Evoker. You have uh, Polymorph if you need it for your Mage. Shackle and Dominate Mind from your Priest. Uh, you can take things even on your Paladin to deal with it and your Druid. So, it's the Incorporeal other two shouldn't be too me, bad. Give yeah. me the worries, exactly. to be honest. Because Fortify in this dungeon, okay, but Fortify Sanguine... Ooh, you're in for a treat uh, wow. of, of the bad kind. But so here goes the first hope. pull. Don't care. Going big right at the start. Yeah, they're going to take the first cage pull on the left into that second cage pull over on the beach. Grouping all those mobs up, you can see a knock coming out. This is going to be their lust as well. All cooldowns being used. There goes that breath of eons. So in a few seconds here, this should pop for some massive damage on this pack. They've got all their cooldowns still rolling a little bit longer, but the mobs are starting to die. It's going to be all about sanguine management here now from Dorky. Okay, the good thing is the mobs run away when they're low nice. HP. The bad thing is the mobs run away when they're low HP. <laughs> they're going to drop these puddles everywhere, but the team is doing a fantastic job at handling it. They're going to chain pull here, make sure we can make the most out of it and even pull the pack that's up there. Really, really cool to see, bringing everything together and in the background the fighters will be killed off eventually. One is coming uh, awfully close into the Rage Storm and will spawn a puddle there, but they can manage and get them out of it. Nicely done by NA's Last Hope. It looks like a lot of Sanguine healing on the meters there, but a lot of that went onto mobs that they just brought into the next pull anyways. So they haven't been slowed down too much by the Sanguine healing. I like what they're doing up here, and very quickly they're going to be making their way further in. They haven't freed any Tuskar yet, though, so at some point they're going to have to send somebody back to those cages. That's okay. I'm sure we can find a time to do the cages while the rest of the team deals with Fish Phase. Ooh. Not sure how you're feeling on the issue, but I demand Fish Phase. Yeah, Fish Phase is, of course, the people's, uh, the people's champion. <laughs> Hopefully NA's Last Hope will be engaging Fish Face. For those who don't know, a, th a mob worth a solid, like, 5% count that yeah, is like available in the starting 12, area. I believe. Yeah, yeah it's uh, Lots of count. very far away from the, the normal path in this place, but, you know, I wouldn't so be shocked if, if Fish Face got pulled at some point. If you want to know where it is, if you're looking in a top left corner, you basically go straight here and then you go and you go and you go until you're like all the way to the left hand side and up. And that's where Fish Face is standing. So he's not nowhere near anything that we would like to go to, but I still think there should be a Fish Face found. Yeah, we'll see if, uh, if Fish Face gets pulled at all this weekend. It looks like NA's last hope for now are sending people to open cages while doing this pull, and you can see they've actually gotten all five. So they did a bunch of trash, and then they went and all each opened like one cage, it looked like, or one or two. And now they have that boss spawned, so they're ready to get that pulled. And this is a pretty quick first area of the dungeon for them. If they can minimize the Sanguine healing on this pull, Goop gonna use that Evoker Racial, or that Drachthia Racial, rather, knock those mobs away. They've got, wow, ooh, a Sleepwalk as well. Really close, but... That's can nice. Get it under control. A little bit of sanguine healing popping off there on that very last berserker, but it's not going to be the problem. And we can move on to Hakos Warband. This is the first time we're seeing this dungeon in the TGP. And I believe when this dungeon was on the PR back then, uh, it caused a lot of trauma, this boss in particular. <laughs> yeah, this is a nasty boss, especially as we get to higher key levels. It is pretty dangerous. A lot of the damage comes from the Gash Frenzy, which, if you're in a group like this, ideally you're going to have defensives rolling before that Gash Frenzy even hits you, which makes it a lot easier, because then it leaves a bleed on you that only gets removed when you get topped off. Uh, but obviously if you press the defensive before the initial hit, and then you have that defensive active on the dot, it's a lot easier to fully heal you very quickly. So the whole group pressing a defensive if they need to on that, external cooldowns being used on the target of Marked for Death, uh, and then just a bunch of damage to get them out of this fight super quickly. Here comes this totem overlap, which is where the t tank and healer both get CC'd. 
Master Spell tends to be pretty useful against this if you don't just have enough beacons to instantly delete the totem, which <laughs> it looks like NA's Last Hope do. Yeah, usually we have them on the Holy Paladin and on the tank, just making sure you have a lot of on-demand damage whenever you need it, which in this case is working out just fine for them, and you can see they're not worried about this boss at all. Of course, it's just a 22, but we're gonna see this boss iteration on the higher key levels, and I suspect that as soon as we get that range of like 27, 28, it'll start to do quite some damage and then particularly higher up you might see some some very dangerous situations with it yeah right now they also they do only have those beacons on their tank and healer but as the key level gets higher they may start to look into putting one on goop for example uh, to get a little bit of extra damage not just on that boss's totem but on the last boss's totem it's really valuable to have uh have extra beacon to the beyonds although you know, they may have it optimized enough that they know they won't need it up until a very high key level on Fortified in particular. That may be something that they would need more if it were tyrannical. Here comes a nice pull in this uh, this rotten tree area, the Rotwood, I believe it's called. Very dangerous mm -hmm. enemies here to the group if you're not careful. But when you activate one of those little cauldrons nearby, you can get a uh, disease dispel or a poison dispel on everybody as well. Uh, and they've used that. Actually, Goop gonna go head over now and brew up one of those nearby cauldrons to get everybody one charge of that dispel uh, if they want to, and they can even stay by the cauldron to get multiple uses of it, which makes the area a lot less lethal. And one thing that is so lethal about this, especially with these affixes, is yeah. these oaks. And you can see why. They just take forever to move. They do their stomp. They sometimes just stand around and look like they're looking for where they want to go, thinking about it. They, they take their time. And if you have a sanguine puddle spawn into them, that is going to be a lot of healing. So seeing that NA's Last Hope is sprinting here right from the get-go, it definitely makes sense to try and get those puddles somewhere else. Last moment in the bottom left have also moved into Brackenhide Hollow. So we will see how that goes for them. Uh, they are currently in third place by score. They're sitting only on a one chest in their Algathar Academy, but they did get the two chest in the 27 freehold. So last moment are not in a bad position across our weekend, as you can see there right now. NA's Last Hope definitely in the best position, uh, but a lot of other teams are close and are within, you know, one, two chests away. Look at that! Last moment! They're doing it! We have a Shaman on board, Elbro running it back. This is his main. He's known for being a, a life uh, Shaman player. He plays it in his guild as well. They rate fairly high. And uh, they qualified on the back of this shaman. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, interesting because the synergies with this composition, I mean, it works fairly well to slot the shaman in in place of the mage because they both do a sort of similar thing. Like the shaman can be the target of that power infusion uh, and carries it reasonably well and, uh, you know, works well with being augmented as well. I think the mage, you know, I'm not surprised to see most teams going with the mage, but I am sure that last moment are going to be able to make this shaman work out pretty nicely. It does have some strengths in some of these dungeons as well, so we'll see how those end up working out. Here's a quick look at, there's Fishface, you can see in oh, our, uh, you, our route up in the top left. I appreciate left, it. Uh, is where Fishface lives, so we it's a little bit of a run. We just need to fly over the water, and then we can pull Fishface. Yeah, it's, you know... It's not the easiest enemy to get, but you've got druids in these groups. They could go aquatic form and get over there, tag fish face, come back. You know, there's ways to get a uh, fish face included into your pool. And yeah, 4.1% is the count that it offers if you're willing to fight it. And, you know, I'll, I'll save the fish face mechanics for if it ever does actually get pulled. But there are some fun ones for sure. I, I do want to give a shout out, though, to Elbro because he's streaming right now. So if you want to check out is quality off meta play with the shaman you can check him out it's elbro ttv on twitch and we also have the team card of course he's not the only player streaming their runs but he's one of the ones that i know are online i think Royben is yeah shelly as well i think right now yeah and Shelly. yeah so uh, if you want to see personal pvs you can but of course uh if you want to have all of the information at once you can always stay with us 
Yeah, definitely recommend checking out the player streams, especially for any specs that you play. Uh, it's, you can learn a lot of stuff by watching these players, you know, just the little things they do, uh, as well as obviously some of the big maneuvers that, uh, that you learn from watching these TGP runs. So that's going to be uh, going to be cool to see. Up in the top left, though, last moment, or sorry, NA's last hope, are approaching Treemouth and have gotten it engaged. And I'm curious here if they're going to deploy the Wernstone tech against this boss, because we've talked about Wernstones in Algathar Academy. There also is a strong use for that talent on this fight, though, which is every time somebody gets consumed, they can Wernstone out uh, of that consume and just instantly break it, stop taking damage, and remove the shield from the boss. So that's going to be something to watch out for as Dorky is frantically trying to prevent Treemouth from getting any Sanguine healing. Any other mob getting some Sanguine healing wouldn't be a big deal, but it looks like Drogo's going to go into the boss here. And it looks like just going to tank the consume right now, so they're not going to immune out or pour it out. They're just going to deal with it, and uh, maybe so stuff is on cooldown. The Wernstone. For anybody that's not familiar, it's a new spell from the Augmentation Evoker where he crafts, or they craft, a stone on another party member, and then you can basically like click it, activate it, and you pour it to the other stone holder. It's always a pair. And I believe the cast is on a cooldown of one minute, but the usage is on a higher cooldown, so it's a little bit weird in, in like the timers. So maybe it's just that they do this with every other consume, because the timers don't work otherwise? Yeah, it's possible. Uh, you can, because you can use it with, like, what the Evoker can Wernstone to somebody, and then somebody can Wernstone to the Evoker, so we may see it here. It looks like Goop is going in, and yeah, casting yeah, activate Wernstone and ports out, and it looks like uh, Dorky is maybe the partner for Goop here. And it may just be that cooldowns are desynced in this higher level, or in this lower level key, or they're planning to use Drogo's immunity on the first one, but Drogo's immunity isn't up because it's a low level key. Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. you can see Go uh, Goop bestowing another Wormstone, Wormstone rather, uh, onto somebody there. So a uh, lot of use for that ability. Dorky has pulled Stink Breath and is now Wormstoning away, followed by Melding, followed by Goop still being in combat, followed by Goop dying. One has to imagine this isn't how this is supposed to look here for NA's Last Hope. But it's okay. Still on pace for this 3-chest. They're gonna mount yeah, up and keep their way going. Yeah, a unfortunate there. Mm. Curious to see how they're going to make up for it. But, of course, at the same time, we have other teams trying to speed through their dungeons. And Ready Check is actually pretty close to finishing off their 27 freehold here in the top right corner. They just need to finish this trash and then the pack that's upstairs and then Harlan. Which all in all during that time might get a little close with the timer do you think? Yeah the two chest timer they're looking for here is 24 minutes. I think they're doing okay. I mean it's it is a 27 tyrannical Harlan so that is going to take I guess it's going to take most of their remaining four minutes. Maybe they need to pull this trash pack into the boss to have a chance of this. I suspect that they are thinking about that right now. You can see the way they're moving and waiting to get these things killed off. And yeah, here come some cooldowns. I bet Harlan's about to get tagged into this as well. There it goes. Oh, yeah. Ready checks are getting going. Now they're not going to have their lust here on pull. Is that three minutes or five minutes until it's going to be ready? Because that matters a great I deal. I believe that is a three. You know, I'm squinting really hard. Yeah, to I can't see. see it's that, too far away. Shit, it just I'm, got closer to the. All right, I'm sitting up. Hang on. It looks like a three to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think so too. Okay, so they will have a lust available for the final burn before a two chest expires for ready checks. So, I think they probably are okay on this, but it is going to be awfully close. And yeah, we can see now in the beautiful minutes. high definition, it is three minutes until that lust. So, yeah, it's going to be close. 24 minutes is the timer that they're looking to beat. So from now, they basically have three more minutes to finish all of this trash and Harlan. Of course, there is going to be two phases that buff up the damage a little bit here on this boss. So towards the end, it's speeding up significantly, but... Still, this is a lot on a Tyrannical 27. The new scaling makes these bosses much, much more lethal and much, much longer, and the first breaking point hasn't even been reached just yet. 
Yeah, 21.30 now, so two and a half minutes remain for ready checks. They have dealt with most of the trash, but I'm starting to think that the damage check on this boss is going to be really nasty. Like you said, though, when it reaches 30% health, it is going to start taking double damage. So, effectively, 15% of the boss's health disappears for free out of the 100%. So... There may be okay here. It's going to be very close. We'll have to keep watching as it gets to the end. This is, uh, this is going to be extremely, extremely close. Meanwhile, NA's Last Hope in the, up in the top right also getting to the end of their dungeon. They're nearly in position to pull Decatriarch Rathai. And it looks like they're getting ready to just bring this uh, last enemy into that boss room and get the boss pulled. So that's going very quickly for them. Cool Beans and Legendary at the bottom of our screen have just started their runs. Cool Beans in a 22 Freehold, and Legendary in a 25 Nelf Slayer. Both teams are sitting on 27s in two other dungeons as well, so uh, that is pretty good for them in terms of their pacing throughout this weekend. Arguably even better pacing than uh, NA's Last Hope, although NA's Last Hope have challenged some of the harder dungeons, so they still have that nice Freehold in their future. But ready checks up in the top left are now approaching that go time of their lust. It's all going to come down to the last minute here for ready checks. It is. Can they do it? 50% to go. It is going to be incredibly hard as we do a little switcheroo. But we have a rise on that team. Top right corner, one minute and 48% on Harlem. I am not so sure, but Bloodlust is ready and is going to get used right now. Everything is flying into this boss, trying to knock him out. In comes the cannon barrage. They can, of course, outplay that easily. Just step together with Happy Little Field and the Swirlwind Saber. But, ah, uh, this timer, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work out. We are going to get a buff, but 30 seconds? Yeah, they need to wait as well. This is a... a if they've been holding cooldowns for the last phase here, maybe. They've got a lot of beacons and stuff, but that's actually not optimal to do. It's not optimal to hold stuff for the last little bit of this boss. You should just send it earlier in the fight to get to the last phase seconds. sooner. I mean, it's equally good, so I don't think they're going to have it here unless stuff is just about to come off cooldown. If they have three Four, beacons three, that they all press two, right now, one, they could do it. But no. alas, it is going to be 10% too much health on this boss. Tragedy for ready checks. That's only going to be a one chest on their timer. Still, though, could be worse. It could be a deplete. They are at least going to get those points from the 27. Meanwhile, NA's Last Hope is picking up points from their 22. And last moment in the bottom left, one thing that they, they were doing while all that was going on, they actually did a really smart thing at the end of their Tree Mouth kill. They didn't have anybody soak the Tree Mouth uh, consume at the end of the fight. The boss was like mm -hmm. sub 5%. If you don't soak... The boss gets a damage buff, but you avoid the shield on the boss entirely or having to, like, press anything. So as long as you are going to kill the boss in the next few seconds, it's actually really clever to do what Last Moment did there and just say, you know what? Everybody just stay out of this. We're just going to kill the boss. It's going to die before it does too much damage as a result of getting that buff. Yeah, that's really nice. I like that they're doing that. I think that is to be expected from all of the teams as long as they can survive the couple seconds where the boss is doing a little bit more damage. But they're speeding through this Brackenite as well. Already on Gutshot 13 minutes in and Gutshot Half-Life. Of course, this is the 22. I really like how they're speeding through it. And PXL is also in that. Now, Theron Slayer, after finishing off their Freehold at 27, we can see if we're looking across all of the teams, that the 27 is where they kind of park the key, go to another dungeon, and then eventually we're going to see them revisit these dungeons at the end of the day. Yeah, right now it's a lot of getting yourself set up for the rest of the weekend. Not just getting those 27s, but getting them with a two chest available so that you can come back straight into the 29. Even if that's not today, that's something you can do tomorrow. We are now halfway through our day. It's... Uh, Two and a half hours in, two and a half hours to go. So I actually think that some of our teams are going to be coming back to their 27 dungeons during today. Uh, like NA's Last Hope. You know, they're already working on their 25 Bracken after, and maybe they're taking their break right now, but that's probably the next place that they'll go to. And, you know, there, there won't be too much time left in the day before they are just getting back into these really high keys uh, that they've set themselves up for. So 
that's always the thing about being the, the team in first place, is you are the first team that kind of has to go to a 30 or a 29 uh, and test the waters and see how hard they really are with these affixes. Yeah, we can see them fight their way through it. Legendary back here on their way to Ula Rock and looked a little bit weird there on Tobo for a second, but it seems to be that they're going pretty big. Above them, last moment, finish with Gutshot now, are on their way to the Katriarch. The cool beans in the bottom right are just finishing up on the Council of Captains. We are going to see that Augmentation Evoker skip come out here out of Dranico, moving all the way through this little hallway here, and then he's going to activate, or I think, yeah, no, he's going to activate the event before the next boss and Wernstone back to his team while they're fighting the Council of Captains. Yeah, the problem with Wernstoning back to the team is that you can only get just on the other side of that little house. You need the other person to come like all the way up to where that house is uh, to be able to get the Wernstone. So sometimes we just see the Evokers literally just start this RP and then AFK over here. And there's not, mm -hmm. not much else to be done in some cases. But if they can get a Wernstone target within range, they can rejoin the group. Usually by the time that's happening, the group is about to pull mobs, the mobs that are between them and the Evoker anyways, though. So uh, even then, it's not, it's not necessarily something that needs to happen. We'll see, though, if Dranako decides to... It looks like he's just, yeah, he's just chilling here. He's going to help grab the pig if it drops, but uh, he's going to meet the team here. And actually, it's Zotzi that's going to take the Wordstone to get to Dranako Ooh, and to get ahead of where I the like group that. is. That's cool. That was cool. Yeah. Also, um, I've been informed it's not just the pig. That's lightning you're speaking about, so put some respect to its name. It's I the see, first I see. challenger in the ring of booty. Yeah, de <laughs> definitely one of the one of the higher DPS uh, enemies you could face in here. Yeah, a lot of people have. Uh, there's some good tech you can get as well. You can bound, you can bind, like interact with mouse over or interact with target uh, to a scroll mm -hmm. wheel and just spam it on the pig. Try and catch it super fast and uh, reliably. You can see it looks like cool beans though. Ending up running around chasing the chasing lightning for a little bit. Are gonna be able to get it eventually. Dr. J grabbing the next pull for them. As they are looking to just keep doing stuff during this RP, avoiding any downtime where nothing is happening and they are just waiting. Absolutely. So we are gonna see them get through this eventually. Pixel top right is currently in the pull that We've seen the, a little bit of a challenge, but it is the 22 for now. I think it's going to be a little bit harder later on when we get to the higher levels. For now, this team is just chilling here, having a good old time, and the pool is dying off as it should. Some avalanche is coming in, but we're not too worried about them as the crocodiles have fallen and the group moves on. It's just a spiteful horde that's chasing them. Yeah, those spitefuls, uh can be a, can be deadly this season they're a little bit less likely to kill people as they were in previous season legendary actually having a death here though it's going to be lapan going down on this nasty trash pull here they are able to land the res oh wait no it looks like he's maybe running back and they are kiting okay yeah so this has are. happened to my group several times in this dungeon as well this is actually a fairly deadly trash pull uh that you can deal with and so they're having to kite around here. Now that Hulk is really nasty because it does a frontal, but they've killed it off. The other mob there, the Breaker, also has a frontal into the avalanche thing. Now the Breaker won't really actually good cast break. its frontal if you can keep it from getting into melee range of anybody, which looks like they are trying to do, and they are able to get Lapan back, but one of those frontals did end up going off and caused those avalanches to land, causing uh, Cauterize to get extended, or to get expended yeah, by so Tobo. Happened was it was Tobo kiting it. It got too close. It did the frontal, knowing that that was going to hurt. Wexy gripped him, and while the grip was cast, an avalanche came through, and they both got hit with the same one. So a little bit unfortunate, but it was only the cauterize. So they did have that cheat death, and they did preserve their battle rest, which I think is a really interesting choice here. Just knowing that you can kite it out and survive despite, you know, not bringing Nellies into this uh, TGP. We're really good at kiting stuff like that. Um, shout out to my Melly friends. But yeah, they did it. 
Great to see, and we're going to see them deal with Ulrich now as they are moving through that dungeon. We're going to have a look at our leaderboard, and the first three teams have finished three dungeons, which means they're going to rise up in the overall score, but other teams can, of course, still catch up once they have finished their new dungeons, and it looks like they're all working on that third dungeon right now, so soon enough, everybody will be back to the 76 points mark. Yeah, the score column can be a little bit misleading and sometimes, especially if there are teams that have done different numbers of dungeons. Even when they've done the same number of dungeons, you also have to factor in the difference between those two, three, and one chests. So looking at a team's scoreboard, you can kind of give them effectively one bonus point for a two chest and two bonus points for a three chest that's currently on their board if they have the time left in the day to actually go back and you know, realize those points by doing that higher level key that has that they've earned. Um, so right now that's not relevant. As we start getting to the end of our day, that is likely to be extremely relevant for determining which team comes in sixth and which team can survive uh, until the next day. Right now it is Ready Checks, Pixel, and Cool Beans that are all sitting on one two chested 27 and one one chested 27 that are in the most danger. Each of those teams is working on adding a third dungeon uh, to their scorecard, but if anything goes wrong for any of those teams, that team is going to be in big danger of elimination. Absolutely. You wouldn't want to be in those shoes. Being in danger of elimination, usually never a good sign. Pixel now dealing with the Dominator pull here, and it seems that on the 22 they decided, oh, we can just pull everything. But they're also not adding the, the pack on the side, right? It's just everything that was standing here or is there a little bit of nameplate no it's just what was standing here right yeah yeah it looks uh i don't see a a sheep looks like they've got it under control for the most part as well and as these key levels start to get higher these pulls are going to get more and more deadly but i think we're going to see a lot oh, of the same ones even as the key goes up too so they control minded it I see. Yeah, one right, of the I was the, looking the for that one. I was like, where is he? <laughs> yeah. That that mob is uh, pretty deadly. It's pretty much a pelter. It loses the pelter ability to disengage that the pelters have. Pelters, if they're attacked by melee, will disengage away, which can be very annoying. Luckily, this comp can just not attack them with any melee and still kill them. Uh, but the trappers in this end area instead just get a cast, uh, but they still have the, the throw like the pelt ability, which is the big killer. Uh, so Pixel being careful to avoid fighting that at the same time. They've got to kill off now these shades, and we'll see if they're able to execute this mage invis boss pull strat that works for most but not all teams here. They've got it sorted out, it looks like. And they are into this last boss with a bunch of time to spare on their three chest timer. I actually really want to see the split timers for Brackenheit that we have so far, because I want to know how Last Moment was doing in comparison to the other team that we saw in here already, which uh, I believe was NA's Last Hope. So obviously strong contender, but with that enhancement challenge, I kind of want to get a little bit of orientation on how we're doing, because I think it's just really cool that they're doing that there in the bottom left corner, you know, giving the people what they want. I was looking at Elbro's stream, a little bit earlier today and people were like you know you usually like mostly play shaman why are you not playing it today and mods were saying like you know it's it's only mage today because it's tgp and i was already like oh <laughs> are we not going to even see it so it's really great to to have it here now yeah it's uh it's good to see it you know i think we we'll probably won't see it in all of the dungeons but uh, no probably it not. is definitely nice in the dungeons where they are able to make it work this is a nice place for it. You got an extra DPS with an off healer cooldown, which can be nice. Ancestral Guidance, pretty powerful. Although Mage these days with the mass barrier does kind of have a uh, off healer cooldown as well, if you think about it. So, <laughs> you know, maybe not maybe not a huge uh, benefit to that AG. Sure, sure. But still, it's a it's a cool spec to uh, to get to see here. It's actually a spec that was doing very well. Oh, Dranako going down for cool beans up in the top left. Looks like they're still going to be good for this 18 minute three chest timer. And they do have the res, it looks like, waiting until after this cannon barrage to be used. And yeah, they're going to yeah, be okay. It's just, 
too much AOE patches on the floor. I think the rest has gone out. We're just waiting to accept it. And here he is. He was actually back there in the fire, but is going to fall over eventually. 22 plus 3 for the Cool Beans. And uh, we were actually asked about one of the names here on this team, which is Café Bona Femme. That actually means Coffee Bean Fen. So, nice little nod there. I like it. What language is that in? Is that... That's German. Coffee German, bean. okay. Coffee Bona? Mm. That's cool. That's, uh, that's good lore. Oh. That's good. Is Fem German? I thought it was... No, uh, I, 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 so. I don't know. One of those other Euro Maybe places. Maybe there's another language. Oh, Swedish also uses it. Okay, okay cool. Same word in Swedish. Wow. All right. It's chat, pretty close to the English if you think about it. You know, coffee bean, coffee cafe bean. bona. Yeah, I mean, I mean there's a couple of vowels you guys got wrong, languages, but pretty you know? much most of the way yeah, there. Yeah, we got them wrong. Yeah. Sure. Americans I guess too. one of the consonants also, but most of the consonants are right. <laughs> pretty good. I've seen worse. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen much worse. <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> but Legendary finishing off Naraxas here on a very good timer as well. In their 25, they're going to be moving towards the roll. Once this boss has dropped and dropped, it will with 5% to go. That should be an easy pushover. And uh, I think we're going to see one more Nelthair and Slayer out of them. Maybe even a second one, seeing that NA's last hope did the 28. But then we should also see them in the Bracken height, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, Legendary are in a great position here because they have already done two other dungeons as well. So that Bracken height will be the last dungeon they need to go to. And they've still got more than two hours left in their day. I agree they'll probably want to run the 28 or 27 that they get out of this key. It's going to be interesting to see whether they have the damage to actually make it possible to get the three chest here, though. It's going to be close up in the top left. The three chest timer we're looking at is uh, 21 something, right? Something in that um, range? Yeah, sure. I like that you're asking me you about know, numbers. I know, I like well, I know you have, the, you have that spreadsheet. And the calendar. Um, yeah. The... I like making you frantically tab between all of your different open it, it, uh, pages. Yeah, I can tell. Brackenheit plus three is 21. How about, um, how about Neltharian's Lair? Uh, that would be 1948. Okay. You know, okay. Somebody called Dratnos actually gave me that. Well, I don't know that, if you know him, but that he sounds does, reliable. He does then. a lot of math. He so the bad news math. here yeah. for Legendary then is that that's only three minutes away. They kind of need to get this boss pulled really quick. I mean, it is fortified instead of tyrannical, so they can maybe get this boss done sub three minutes. But they now have three minutes as of right now until that three chest timer expires, and they're not particularly done with this pack. And you can't pull the boss in very easily because your mage has to go and grab the other pack and then invis. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the middle of fighting a different pack, you're going to have heals landing on that mage. You're going to have all kinds of stuff going on that's going to make it so the rest of the group gets in combat with the other two mobs. So they're actually only going to have two and a half minutes to kill this boss. Painfully, they have to wait for these spiteful shades to go down yeah. as well. This is going to be extremely, extremely close up in the top left. Uh, hopefully, the skip works out. Turbo taking so All much good. damage there on the left hand side. Cauterize is proking. Okay, it's fine. Uh, but that, that's one way to skip it, to yeah. be honest. We do have that battle rest just in case. Now we know why Lapan uh, wanted to walk all the way back there when that death happened, but still, they recovered it. They got in fight with the boss without getting in fight with the mobs. What's five seconds here? Except that you're already on a very close timer, and it's like two more minutes, a little bit less than that, to finish all of their gruel on 25. Yeah, they are going to get one more round of offensive cooldowns, their power infusion. That's going to line up with their Lust here and their Breath of Eons, and that's going to be their last big damage burst. Now, the question is, how much are they going to be able to line up on Dargruel? I think they have to just single target boss and cleave down the Magma Sculptors at this point if they want to have a hope of getting this done in the next minute and a half. They do have, they do have Lust. Yeah, Lust. They're holding the Lust here for the, the cooldowns, right? So Breath of Beyonds yeah, is PI, now available, combustion. but they're holding that as well for power infusion and for combustion. And they want to just line everything up because they're not going to miss a use of Breath of Eons or power infusion at this point by holding on to them uh, within that three-minute timer. 
So there's no harm done in sitting on them for Here a little it is. bit. There is that bloodlust, and now they are going to be send sending all those cooldowns. There's the Ebon Might cast by Splat as he is lining up for the breath. As soon as that Molten Char skin comes out, lines up exactly with when he would naturally want to cast the Breath of Eons. The Power Infusion has been used as well, Combusting Tobo as well. A lot of damage is coming out onto these mobs, but is it going to be enough to get Dargrel dead in the next 30 seconds? 40 seconds, I guess, is how long they have on this yeah, timer. Yeah, 40 seconds. To be honest, you are using this bloodlust extremely well here. This boss is melting in front of her eyes. 10% to go. We're still in lust. It has wow. now run out with 5 seconds to go. That is massive conjurement of damage on the side of Legendary, and it will get them the 3 chest eventually with 20 seconds of room. Yeah, not even close, says Legendary, as they get that dungeon taken care of. Very good news for them that that was a three chest rather than a two chest, as that's going to let them skip straight to 28 instead of needing to do a 27. Uh, both of those key levels are ones that we know are two chestable as well, so that's going to be their next challenge, unless they decide to head to Brackenhide and put a timer up in that dungeon first, which at this point, with less than... Uh, with about two hours left in the day, I would not fault any team for just going to their fourth and final dungeon and getting something on the board and coming back to their other dungeons later. I think they they still have time to go to Nelsar again, but I wouldn't I wouldn't mind a Brackenhide either out of Legendary. So we'll see what they decide to do. We also I'm not sure what our break situation is looking like. It is required for all teams to take 20 total minutes of break during the middle three mm -hmm. hours of each day. Uh, and so that might be something as well that, that some teams still have to take care of, uh, or else they... Yeah, you, you just have to, you have to take it or else you get a big penalty. So it looks like there's still oh. 10 minutes of break for Legendary, Last Moment, Cool Beans, and Pixel to all take. Mm -hmm. NA's Last Hope and Ready Checks have taken their whole breaks, though, which uh, is good for them. That's an extra 10 minutes of the day they have. Yeah, and it's definitely something you need to keep an eye on, right? We saw some teams last weekend dragging out this break until the very end when they couldn't really drag it out any longer. So uh, it, it's good to see some teams get ahead of that and just make sure they have it ticked off, taken their breaks, ready for the rest of the day because you do not want to get a point deduction for not taking those mandatory breaks. Two teams done, three on half of their breaks and we are moving on, approaching that three hour mark. now. Something that people might not be familiar with, with this competition in particular, is how the end of day works, because they can run for all of the five hours, but once the clock strikes the end of the five hours, they can still be in their very last run and complete it. So there's a little bit of like dead time that they can utilize if they're smart about it. So thinking about what dungeon you want to run like last of day, allows you to maybe get back if you have a good run there. Yeah, the strategy changes a bit depending on if you, you know, 20 minutes before the end of the day, if you finish your run, now you have 20 minutes of like free resets in whatever dungeon you want. So you probably want to go to a dungeon with like a risky first pull. Whereas if you get to the end of the day and three minutes before the end of the day, you finish your last run, you probably just want to go and head somewhere where it's ideally a nice long and high key, but not something where you're likely to need to reset several times before you're going to be able to put a time up because uh, you, of course, will not have the opportunity to do very many resets at all. This season, most dungeons are pretty similar in terms of timer. In previous seasons, sometimes we've had dungeons that are like 45 minutes and others that are 30, which... Uh, has made a huge advantage if you could line up such that you just started a 45-minute dungeon right as overtime began. This time around, I think it's more going to be about making sure that you have a nice high key uh, that you've just started mm -hmm. off at the end of the day. Yeah, I agree, and we are seeing that Wernstone tech coming out of last moment in the bottom right as well. Uh, I believe it's the Priest that has the Wernstone on him, so Volker and Priest are switching it up and teleporting out of that consume to make sure they're not getting stuck in there. It's really, really cool. Yeah, not only does it save the person from taking damage of the consumption, but also it removes the shield from the boss instantly, so... Very mm -hmm. powerful thing to do. Looks like this time around, they're gonna again... Oh, actually, they've had two Ooh. people consumed, both their evoker and their priest, which unfortunately yeah, means it. that if one of them oh. had the ability to Wernstone to the other, well, 
They're both busy being consumed, so that's not going to help very much. That's a. Uh, I was trying to shut them out. I did them a disservice. I'm so sorry. But a oh, little oopsie uh, there for I the believe... last moment. It's not going to cost them though, probably. No, I believe there was a little bit of miscommunication going on, but those were the two weren't stone targets, so somebody probably should have been in there. <laughs> um, that ended up in there. It's just one person too many to make that teleport work, and they are going to move on. I'm curious okay. if there'll be more tech on their side. Number of teams makes us curse so far. One, thank you. Uh, the timer for uh, the counter for Zyro is also at one. Just saying. So look at this. They're going to rescue their druid now, who's on a three-seater mount. Well, actually, it's not going to be rescue. It's going to be life grip. Uh, but mm -hmm. on the three-seater mount, making that cooldown effectively work on three people to get them over the bridge there and dodging past Stink Breath. Nice maneuver for last moment. <laughs> you you want to skip almost this whole area if you can. A lot like of dangerous like enemies. Stink bit, like... Breath, chief among them. We are seeing that skip being deployed in the freehold as well. Um, every time they... You know... Back in the day, it was always the Warlock, where we would put a portal and we would portal over to make sure we don't get in fight with some of the mobs that are standing at the entrances to the bridges. And also towards Harlan Suite, where you want to go up. Now, they're doing the same tech that you just saw, where they have one person go on a mound, two people uh, join in on the three-seater, and then they actually rescue them over. Yeah, it's a... Uh... A lovely little piece of tech. One of the big reasons to go and pick up a three-seater mount if you don't already have one. Uh, of course, good reasons to just grab one anyways. You can get that yak from Mista Pandaria, and uh, it's mm -hmm. got a transmog on it. It's got repair. You can get a mammoth from Wrath of the Lich King. That one doesn't have transmog, though, so I would recommend getting the yak uh, if you can. I think it's from Kunlai Summit, so you know, make your way over there if you haven't already uh, gotten that on your account. It is one of the greatest mo mounts out there. And then if you've got a lot of extra gold to so that you're sitting on, you can try and look at the Black Market Auction House and see if that Brutosaur ever shows up there if you want to get access to a Auction House mount. Very expensive usually, though. Do you own one? Yeah, I, I got one back in BFA. Okay. With the, Me too. <laughs> yeah, the back, back before <laughs> it was on the Black Market Auction House. Yeah, was, uh, I remember but, doing math on like whether or not a mount like this was going to come eventually again soon, like with the auction house. It's like, oh, so the Yak came then and then, and the Brutusar came now, so probably it's going to be like this much time until they release like a mount like this, so <laughs> I eventually paid for it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's expensive, but it is nice. It's, it is one of the best things to spend uh, excess gold on if you have mm -hmm. that excess gold, of course. You know that's that is the hard part, uh, and then of course now you have to you have to wait for it to pop on the black market auction house as well. True. Ready checks are making their way in their twenty two Nelslayer up in the top left towards Dargrul now, and they've got most of their count. They're just going to be setting up this four enemy pull. We'll see if they decide to dominate the mind of that trapper or just kill it. Looks like right now they are just going to kill it, and this is going to be a easy three chest for them if they can avoid a wipe. Uh, to this boss. They could probably even afford one... Well, yeah, they've got six minutes from here, five minutes from here. This is the, they, yep. don't, they don't have that much extra time, but they are going to get a nice three chest. Meanwhile, NA's Last Hope have gone back into Brackenhide once again coming out of their break. They are, uh, they are in that 25 Brackenhide in the top right. Already almost 15 minutes in as they are getting to the third boss. The question here is, is three chest possible in 25 Brackenhide? I think the answer is maybe going to be yes here for NA's Last Hope. They've already pulled this boss. They only have like one trash pull and then one boss after this. So I like their chances. I like them too. I'm just looking at their 22 timers. So that was 17-4, which means they had one minute, right? Oh no, they had, they had four minutes. Excuse me. They had lots of time. I think the three chest might be possible here, yeah, just based on that. Because 21 minutes is that three chest timer that they're trying to beat, so yeah. they have six and a half minutes from now to deal with one and a half boss fights and 20% trash, which the, a lot of that will come from a pretty big pull that they're about to do after this. If they can minimize sanguine healing on that pull, and if they can get the last boss pulled promptly, 
I think it is on the table here in this Brackenhide for, for NA's last hope to put up a three chest and head straight to that 28, which would be crazy. Especially after doing it in Nelf Slayer as well. And we're looking much closer there for last moment, who are also in favor of doing that, but I think with the missing trash count and the Decatriarch that still needs to be pulled, the 21 is looking extremely tight and probably not on the menu. It's going to be a much more solid plus two, I think. Yeah, it's it's going to be... We'll keep our eye on it, but it is looking pretty pretty sketchy here, I think. Uh, prob probably not. Ready checks up in the top left are nearly done with their dark roll as well, well under that three chest timer in the 22, which is, you know, an expectation, I think, to be able to three chest the 22 in here. So good news for ready checks that they are able to secure that. The question is going to come when they replay this key at 25, if they can also replicate that feat. But that is a nice score for them, bringing them to 76, along with last moment, a couple points behind NA's last hope and legendary, but tied with Pixel as well. All of those teams are in danger of elimination. And right now, I can't even say which team I think is in most danger of elimination. You can see our leaderboard has four teams at 76 points yeah. with less than two hours to go. This is getting, this is gonna be an awfully exciting end of our day. And uh, in order to facilitate that excitement, while well, NA's last hope has two deaths, we are going to bring back Tettles here to hopefully avoid some caster curses now that Zyra and I each caught one. Uh, I guess you get one per caster, so choose wisely, guys. I'll, I'll see you later. Is this thing on? Hello? Testing? Hello. Oh Farewell my gosh. This thing Welcome, Tettles. NA's on. last hope instantly cursed by the appearance of Tettles to have Goop and Junkrat going down. No, 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 no. It, it, was, it makes cursed them on her way out, man. Please get it right. I'm the here to support NA. This is why we have the, the America broadcast right now. Pa All right, so... two patriots. The three chest is certainly now off the table, I think, for NA's last yes. hope. They are, they are just going to be uh, collecting their two chests and going home, and it remains to be seen if any other teams might be able to, especially Legendary, if Legendary can maybe get that three chest in a 25 Bracken, that would be exceptional. Uh, but NA's last hope will have to settle for the plus two I here. And then the question is, do you come back and do Brackenhide 27? Or do you depart and head to the Freehold, a dungeon that so... does need to get done today? I think the NA's last hope has been making the best pace. Them and Legendary, I feel like, have been making the best pace on the day just in general with like how fast they've been able to do all their dungeons. Uh, also, where they're sitting with their their break timings, too. Somehow they're done with all the breaks. I don't I don't really understand how that's happened. Um, so NA's last hope have really been having a phenomenal day. Even if they miss the three chest here, I, I think they probably do this on 27, then they go to freehold. Yeah, they are missing the three chest for sure, right? Two minutes until that, there's no way they can yeah. deal with uh, Decatriarch. And this trash pull in now a minute and 40 seconds, so that's going to be the question for them. I mean, they are also still sitting on two chests in Algathar and in Nelslayer, but presumably those would have to wait until at least a freehold 25 and probably 28 or 27 uh, was finished first. So we'll see what they decide to do, though. How, how have you been feeling about Cool Beans? So you, you, you're saying, like, right as Mix was leaving, that you didn't really know who was in position to get eliminated at the end of the day. I feel like Cool Beans, with uh, the one chest on the AUG 27, like, that might not be problematic for them today. But, like, if we go to, if we go to like, tiebreaker of, like, time or something like that, I feel like just some of their, their two-chesting and three-chesting of dungeons is going to be a little bit sketch. Especially since they also have that 27 Nelf Flare, where both... We're, where last NA's last hope has that twenty eight, right? Where because they were able to three chest the the twenty five, and now legendary also in the top right able to three chest the twenty five. Yeah, pretty early on, we're seeing legendary and NA's last hope consistently putting up the best runs in these dungeons yeah. and getting like extra break points. Last moment have also been doing a good job of moving reasonably quickly, although L last moment pixel. are also sitting on a one chest at Algathar 27, uh, but they've kind of had a little bit more hustle in terms of getting more keys on the board. Ready checks, Pixel, and Cool Beans all are sitting on one one chested 27, though, which it's just for Ready checks and Pixel, it's Freehold, whereas for Cool Beans, it's Algathar. Yeah, I think I think if Pixel is able to three chest this this 25 Nelth Slayer, that puts them in a really good position 
compared to like cool beans right so yeah the fact that they were able to three chest this is actually very good for them because now they're able to go get this dungeon done on 28 which is plus one key level um and and so that that means that i think cool beans might have to rerun something at the end of the day if they want all of the uh possible score that some of these other teams are going to have yeah they'll have to i mean they're going to have to use all their time right because all three of our bottom teams are so close actually all four are so close yeah they are all gonna have to be running up until the end of the day it's good, like and securing points every single team does currently have a dungeon that they haven't done yet as well that is going to become very urgent for everybody over the next hour uh, to get in there and collect the early three chests in whichever dungeon they haven't done yet for most teams that's brackenhide hollow uh but for na's last hope it's actually freehold which is very last nice moment, nice for them. And for last moment, it's Nelsler, which also I think is nice news for them. So I think both NA's Last Hope and Last Moment are probably better positioned than the scoreboard would make it appear because they have more easier potential points in their future. I mean, Bra Brackenhide's the problem. Okay, so first off, it's just the longest dungeon in terms of time on the weekend. In addition to that, I think it's just going to be on average the longest com uh, like the longest dungeon to take to get a completed run because it is Sanguine Fortified. And that can always throw a wrench in your plan. Um, on top of that, like the dungeon is easy to time, but I would say a bit harder to two and three chest in some spots. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that the two and three chest, like two chesting this 25, for NA's last Doable. hope, you know, they have four deaths. It was definitely possible. But it would have been really hard. Every yeah. single team is only going to get one try at it, right? It's a, a bit of a different thing between like timing a 30 and three chesting a 25. Because timing a 30, you can try 10 times at the end of the weekend, right? Yes. Three chesting to 25, if you don't do it on your first try, you're not just going to zone out and reset and try to three chest again. You're just going to complete the two chest instead. So uh, it is, it's going to require very high degree of relatively low practiced precision from yeah. every team if they want to secure that three chest in a, in a dungeon like a 20, in any of the 25s, really. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just circling back, I still think Cool Beans is probably in the, the sketchiest spot because we've seen their Nelth Slayer, right? We, we saw the fact that they weren't able to three chest the 25. Now, if every other team is able to three chest that 25, that puts them in a really bad spot. Yeah. Again, the end of the day is a little bit different than the rest of the weekend, right? Because... If I'm sitting sure. on a 27 one chest and you're sitting on a 27 two chest, that doesn't actually matter much oh, for the end of the day. It's if, about being able to unless go to, we go to tiebreakers, right? right? It, it, well, it's about going to the 28 versus. Yeah. So Cool Beans did the 27. Yeah. So that is the thing is it does matter when you go to that higher key, but if that's not today, then it's sure it can be a problem that you deal with tomorrow, right? And yeah, the, it, it, even if you're a team that's sitting on a bunch of good two chests, you still need to worry about being eliminated at the end of today because. You, those two chests are potential points. They're not actual points just yet. Mm -hmm. uh, they only matter if we do get to tie breaks, which uh, is possible. I mean, again, this this group is very close. Right now, ready checks are three points behind. Pixel, Last Moments, Legendary, and Cool Beans. But they're in a three chest uh, run right now that they'll be able to put on the board probably in about you know 15 minutes. And I think they've also done all of their breaks as well. So... You know, when you factor that in, every single team here is within, like, one Bro. key level of each other. The main differences are those two and three chests sitting on the boards that mean there's different potential points. Uh, and mm -hmm. then potentially, I mean, potentially we're going to see a time tiebreaker elimination at the end of the day. I, I think it's actually pretty possible. Legendary absolutely blasting this Nell Slayer right now. So, NA's last hope, they did have a couple of deaths. Uh, Dor Dorky died going from second boss to third boss, so from Ularog to Naraxxus. But NA's last hope killed... Ulara Crag Shaper at 1301, where Legendary killed it at 1210. So 50, 50 some odd seconds ahead already. And then there's going to be a little bit more time because of the fact that they've had less like crucial mistakes. So, I mean, Legendary are absolutely owning this Neltharian Slayer. Definitely going to two chest this, assuming that they don't have any major mistakes. Yeah, which is good news. It is not a big advantage relative to na's last hope to be like two minutes faster unless it makes the three chest happen which obviously is not not possible on this 28 keystone level so it's good news for them that they're playing well it's going to save them a couple minutes of like real time but because it's not going to move them over a two or three chest breakpoint, 
if you were NA's last hope, you would choose to like have a two minute time loss basically in that twenty eight. That was a that was a great place for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Didn't cost them much at all. And yeah, you can see legendary nearly done with Naraxis here. It's gonna be is this gonna be a sub eighteen minute Naraxis that they're gonna put up here? Yeah, it's looking like it. We're in his last hope is at nineteen eighteen, by the way. Yeah, so, so very, very rapid dungeoning coming out from Legendary as a Breath of Eons gets sent here at the end of the fight. So yeah, as long as they can clutch this together, this is going to be very, very good, uh, very good pace that they're on. And once they put this on the board, they're going to head to Brackenhide, I think. I don't, I don't see anything else for them to do. Similarly, NA's last hope, once they put this 27 Brackenhide on the board, are going to head to Freehold. And they have like, what, like two hour, uh, an hour, 50 minutes left in the day? So then they can come back and, you know... Yeah. What was the dungeon? 20, 29 Alg, maybe? So you, you need to spend probably an hour and 15 minutes in either Freehold or Brackenhide, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. So you'll only have, like, maybe 30 minutes at the end of the day. And, yeah, I think I think you run into a dungeon depending on how much time is left in the day. It, if you if only really have enough worried. time for one run, I think you want to... Mm -hmm. But, like, you have, like, 20 minutes left. You want to do a dungeon where you can, like, attempt a big first pull over and over again for 10 minutes it, and keep resetting it. Uh, but maybe they'll really be worried about like, tiebreakers. If you're really worried about tiebreakers, you could you could go thirty. Neltarian's yeah, I don't layer, think but NA's, I don't think either of these two teams are though. I think I think yeah. NA's last hope and legendary are our safest teams. It's the other four that could all really get eliminated. Obviously, NA's last hope and legendary aren't safe safe yet. But I think they're well, they could, in ha they could have shape. like major mistakes that put them in position where they're not yeah, safe. Exactly. But I think like that... if, if they were to to choke for the next hour and like have something go horribly wrong and like deplete or one chest to 22 or something like yeah then then all of a sudden they're back <laughs> if, on the chopping uh, block if they have to reset the 25 a couple of times or some shit yeah exactly in, something something like that would go very badly middle. for uh yeah. for the teams here so hopefully they'll be able to avoid that and i assume they will there's a, a reasonable amount of wiggle room built into these keys so legendary are going to be passing over this three chest timer but you're still, uh, still well vibing for making a nice, solid two chest in their Nelslayer. How? And then they still have to take a break as well. So they they still have to take ten minutes of break, I believe. After How do this. you feel about the enhancement shaman in the Brackenhide Hollow? I feel like this was like, if uh, so, if this was played on the last patch, I think enhancement shaman is actually one of the best DPS in Brackenhide Hollow. This, that spec is very, very good at first off killing totems, but just how they do damage in this dungeon is so solid. Yeah, enhancement shaman works out nicely in terms of their damage profile here. The challenge is that Mage also works out pretty nicely. <laughs> right? So it, it's, you know, you look at the damage readers and like Elber is going to be doing really big damage on a lot of these pulls. Once that bear burst gets <laughs> gets beaten by the DPS uh, actually pressing their buttons, uh, Elber, is, Elber is usually going to ascend to some pretty nice numbers. Um, but so does Mage. So I'm curious what the advantage is. Ma Maybe, especially when we get to the highest keys here, that totem damage from Enhance is going to be really nice. Like, I think they swap pretty nicely and pretty quickly uh, and can dunk a reasonable amount of damage pretty quickly into those totems on the last boss. So that might be a nice advantage of it. Uh, does, do, do you play Beacon to the Beyond on Enhancement? Is that a... I mean, I'm pulling it up right now. Okay, yeah, because... Um, he's, know not, you... he's not right now. He's playing Chronomatic Essence and Neltharians. Okay. Yeah. So how many beacons do they have? It's going to be the tank and healer always, and the, the flex spot is usually the evoker. So neither the evoker, n none of their DPS are playing it currently. Okay. Yeah, so I think in they're Tyrannical, they're you want your evoker to probably start wearing one, but on Fortified, even all the way up, you may be able to get away without it. Mm -hmm. I think it's really good. Like the, the, funnel da the funnel damage from Enhance and, and yeah. just with how some of these packs are set up is, is really solid. Like... Think think about all the trees that you have to pull in this area, like the the large oaks, the uh, the withered oaks. Enhance is probably much better than Fire Mage at being able to kill those off. That's true. So the funnel you're talking about, whenever there is like a high health target surrounded yeah. by a bunch of lower health targets, yeah, the Enhancement Shaman gets to deal a bunch of extra damage to that high health target. Fire Mage kind of used to have that damage profile because they used to just be doing single target to one mob and igniting a bunch of other mobs, but that is not how it works right now. Now Fire Mage is, I mean, they'd lose quite a bit of AoE to do that to, instead of be flame striking. Uh, so is it is a, a little bit of a difference than back in 10.1. Okay. Legendary, the actually, it looks, like, it looks like Legendary had a incident up in the top left of maybe breaking one of the, okay, no, no, they're fine, they're fine, they're chilling. They're going to get another set of spikes here, so everything is good. 
And they've got their lust going. Oh, oh wait. wait, they broke it. Okay, so are they going to get another the spike charge. before this magma wave is the question. What, what set is this? They, they almost certainly will. I think they do. Yeah, we're, we're going to see here. So here comes that landslide. You're making they have me, their you made me panic. It's a molten crash. Darkle's getting pretty close to full energy. I think he's about to put his spikes out. Yeah, okay, we're fine. Yeah. This, this isn't the okay. danger set. Yeah, and okay, they're not going to see the spikes. danger set on 28 Fortified, but... Uh, no. Well, maybe they will. Maybe the next one is the danger one. They lost so, it on their twos. I think they're com I think they're committed to killing the boss here. Yeah. What we're talking about is I think it's the fourth magma sculptor of the fight. Often only gets two crystal spikes instead of three between the magma waves on that one. Yeah. So you need to only use one instead of two to stun the ad, uh, and that is very nasty in terms so of how much time or pressure it puts on you to kill it. They're going to do one of two things here, and what I think they're going to do is probably option one. So first option is that they just uh, use both of the crystals on the ad here, and they continue to commit to the boss. I think that, that looking at the boss's HP makes the most sense, especially since it's 28 fortified. Option two is they uh, bop and sack the person who is going to get fixated, and they, they keep the second crystal spike up. Um, but yeah, they're clearly going with option one and just fully committing on the boss, and they're saying that we have to beat this magma wave. It dies or I die. And... Oh, they actually killed the ad. Yeah, the ad did end up going down here, but they're not going to get another set of spikes here before the... Oh, no, they are. Okay, so this is maybe the third ad. Nice. Okay. Uh, sometimes, I think, even the fourth no, ad, this it's, is, it's this RNG, is the right? One. Yeah, okay, nice. It's, it's not pure RNG. There is a way to spell Q into it. I don't know... I don't know how. I've okay. seen some, t some tanks in our region... Um, have apparently figured out the way to make it consistently Q up that spike there, but I don't know what it is. Okay, some some secret lore on uh, on keeping that boss under control. I gotta find out what that is because that has wiped many an elf slayer for me. It's, I mean, you can go phone up the Nerf Tank Television for the hidden tech if you want, but yeah, like, I don't I don't know how he phone. does it. He was saying that he knows how to do it on stream the other day. That's cool. Yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll check the uh, check the tapes and see if I can figure it out. But in the meantime, that is going to be a twenty-eight two chest for legendary, a solid minute and ten seconds faster. Then NA's last hope in that dungeon. Now Legendary just have a break and I believe a uh, Brackenhide Hollow in their future. That's good. Yeah. They're, they're really having a great day. So I think that they just need to make sure that they are consistent in the Brackenhide Hollow. For like, a, what, a 27? And then they, they're probably able to go do whatever they want. Yeah, just whatever they think is the easiest points. The lowest hanging fruit, probably. Yeah, I think that's that's going to make sense. And they'll probably have about 30 minutes to play with at the end of the day once they have 27s or 28s in all dungeons. So it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do with that time. Once we get closer to it, we'll sort of have a better idea of exactly how much time they have. Because if you have 25 minutes, I think your calculus is a lot different than if you have 35 minutes, for instance. Mm -hmm. If you have 35 minutes, you really want to be able to try and get two dungeons done, right? Whereas if you have 25 minutes... You know you're only going to get one dungeon one, uh, done in that time. So you just want to pick something with like a nasty first pull that you can bash your head against a bunch. All right, up in the top right, ready checks. Working on Nelfler 25 <laughs> as well. Looking to secure a three chest in this 25. I think probably not going to happen for ready checks. I this mean, has they, happened they, for a few they're teams. leaving the trapper unmind controlled and yeah, they're taking the double breaker into this pull. So they're going for broke here with this pull. I think if there's any way that they were going to be able to beat the, the three chest timer, it was this. Uh, the, the three chest timer is 19 minutes and 48 seconds. Yeah, so, so they have a little like bit less than up, three minutes here for the boss on 25. 250 and they lost on 240 something and they lost on pull. I think they could, I think it's doable. Well, two minutes aren't up for ready checks so they're only gonna get one set of two minutes into the boss okay so we lost on our coolies i don't think we lost on pull then right which i don't think that the i mean may, it's gonna be very close we're gonna have it's to watch doable. ready checks closely this is it is doable they have to all oh, painstakingly they have to wait oh, for these spiteful sh shades. shades to die oh ah, like two spiteful why why do you do okay, this to okay us? we have two minutes 20 seconds we, have, we gotta hurry okay here we go there's the Beacon to the Beyond going into the boss. Unfortunately, only one Beacon to the Beyond cast is going to be available uh, before the timer expires on the three chest here. Oh, we missed it's the fine. ad. But not a big not deal. deal. Yeah. Get a little bit of free cleave into it here for a while. And they are just blasting into boss. 
Two minutes left in the dungeon for ready checks. So they will get one more press of all of their two minute CDs. I They're think we holding press Lust, on, uh... Breath of Eons, and Combustion, it looks like. Well, combustions, I guess, are getting used as they're coming up. Uh, but for yeah. power infusion, they're going to line everything up with that power infusion and breath of eons here. It's looking like second ad. I think there's 10 seconds left on that power infusion. So we're going to, after we come out of this next phase, Lust, oh, we're, we're actually ripping Lust immediately and just sending it all of it into the boss. Yeah, so no the, the mage the had, a, had a SKB combustion ready, and they could not afford to sit on that, uh, that powerful combo. So... Just sending it with all their other cooldowns, not saving it for the ad. Trying to get this boss done in time. It is just going to be a question of if it is possible. 18.30 on the okay, clock now, so on. one minute and 15 seconds left. As they have the boss now sub 50% health, but those damage cooldowns are starting to expire. Bloodlust has a few seconds left on it. Combustion is over. Power infusion is over. They no have a minute. They have a minute left on well. the timer on the two chest. So... We kill this they Charskin, kill and then we commit boss, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure we kill the Charskin, full commit boss, and then we're going to be real close. <laughs> it's going to come down to the wire. Oh, we, get another, we get another combustion. Oh my gosh, this is so good for us. Yeah, Mage's Wait combustion uptime very high this patch. Entering those free combustions as well with those Pyroblasts very frequently if things are going well, which... Looks like they are for ready checks here. 14%. Okay, I, think I, think, I think we're cooking the boss. 30 seconds left, and they just have to go boss. Here comes the crystal spikes that they're going to hide behind. Last Evan Might cast of the fight comes out from Shelly, and he's just going to do his best now to extend it with those eruptions for as long as he can. Dargrel now at 5%, and they are just barely going to be able to do it, it looks like. Oh my gosh, 3% on the boss. <laughs> there they go. Right. Three chests secured for the ready checks. 10 seconds to spare. Well All done. All right, that's... That's huge. Okay, so that means that Cool Beans so far in the 25 is the only team that has not three chested uh, 25 Naltharians Lair. Now, it, it, like, I think that's really bad for them, Dratnus, because every other team is also, after the 25, gone and done the 28 almost immediately after, except for Cool Beans who had to go and do the 27. Right, so we might be looking at a scorecard at the end of the day of, say, 27s in every dungeon for Cool Beans. And then 27s with a 28 in every dungeon for uh, for the other teams, which would mm -hmm. be very bad news for Cool Beans. That would lead to their elimination. Here you can see a look, though, in our bottom left at our beautiful splits graphic for Naltharian's Lair. You can see those timers that different teams acquired. And Ready Checks putting it as close to that three chest line as possible without going over. Well played by them. <laughs> a very fast Dargrel split as well made that possible. They really knew they had to hit the gas at the end of that dungeon. And to their credit, they were able to. So uh, they are able to secure that three chest. Last moment, still a question mark if they're going to be able to, to three chest the 25 and the 22, I guess, in that dungeon as well. Uh, that's going to be an interesting thing to look out for that team still does have to head over there probably right as soon as they finish the 27 brackenhide that they're on right now up in the top left uh yeah dude last moment is they're having a deathless brackenhide hollow which there are ways that you can lose a decent amount of time that aren't deaths in this dungeon but deaths are incredibly costly because the run back time in this in this dungeon is normally very very high depending on where you die um so more often than not you just kind of have to like full send a battle res um so last moment having a bonus battle res is available making sure that their sanguine management is impeccable those are the important things here like you really have to watch the bear and the vultures into this boss and i think that their their tank is going to do a good job of kiting out the pack and then typhooning those mobs last minute to make sure that they uh get like away from the boss because if you heal gut shot you're very sad yeah sanguine heal full sanguine healing a boss is something that i've Gutshot in particular, I feel like this it happens on so it, often as well, because yeah. you always bring this bear and these vultures in. You can see some knocks are coming out for last moment. They are going to be able to avoid the sanguine healing on Gutshot, it looks like, so oh, well wait. played. But <laughs> Elbro is going to go down. Does have an Ankh available, one of those benefits of being a shaman, so that's nice at least. Melee, melee on this fight are is very challenging. Like, melee and Holy Paladin in general, so the hyenas... They work, uh, whenever they get trapped, they work similar to like, you know, mobs in Classic, where they'll just melee the nearest target. And uh, so whenever whenever you have them in that trap, you need to make sure if you're playing a melee that you need to just peel out. Just get get oh really far away from those hyenas. Elbro goes down again, probably to that same thing. So that one there's no Ankh available for is going to be a battle res. 
Luckily, fine. Last Moment still does have another battle res, and a, another one is about to be recovered for them as well. So uh, they are reasonably safe here still, chilling pretty nicely. And the two-chested plus 27 dream, I believe, is very much alive for them in this dungeon. Hmm. Two-chest timer okay. is uh, so 27, I think, or 28. 28 oh, probably. Uh, two chest. Hold on, I have it. Uh, 35 yeah. minutes. 28 even. 28 even. Yeah. So they they're yeah. they're in good shape for this. They have eight minutes for the end of this dungeon. That is very nice. Na's last hope also looking good for so, a two chest in their 27. Na's last hope has more count than last moment. So I think Na's last hope probably has somewhere in the order of like three percent more enemy forces. But last moment was a bit faster on the first boss and about the same to if not a bit faster on Tree Mouth. Yeah, they're going to be, I think, a little bit slower on the Tree Mouth death time here between the two teams. Uh, they, okay, yeah, you're right. But it's uh, very close for sure. Both teams, this I think, like are 40... well in that two chest range. Yeah, okay. Which is very so good. 30, two chesting a 27 Brackenhide is impressive out of both of these teams. They're now making would their you go, way further down. Would you go 29 Brackenhide after this? Uh, I would not. I would be looking at that fourth dungeon and be like, okay, I've got to. I've got to go and put this fourth dungeon on the board to avoid potential elimination here. Ooh, okay, so Dorky's manually skipping uh, Meld skipping yeah. that mob. He's going to use Shadow Meld to do it. I saw, and, him, uh, I saw him Warren stoning earlier, and that that went wrong for them. I don't I don't really know what happened with it. Maybe, yeah, maybe... somehow Goop got in combat too after the Warren stone yeah, before. I don't really see. I don't really see how though. Yeah. Oh, in his last hope, getting the worst end of the patrol timing here. Yeah, you hate to see it. You're not trying to pull either of these two patrolling five packs. Some nasty enemies in both of them. So they're going to make their way between yeah. there, thread the needle, and head up around the side. What's, the, what's, in that what's, the, what's in the patrol? It's like a scavenger and then like two hyenas and stuff like that? Yeah. Two or something? There's, uh, yeah, a lot of those animals that fixate on whoever gets thrown meat on them. <laughs> and then yeah. uh, just a, a lot of ranged damage landing on the the whole group whenever you're fighting that. So it's got the double very, with very the bone, deadly. Yeah, the bone bleed, which is exactly brutal. Yeah, those are those are mobs that you like to avoid pretty much at all costs. Absolutely, very, very dangerous enemies. So uh, Na's last hope gonna be expending the extra time to skip around them. Legendary in the bottom left have finished their last break. It looks like and are now okay, heading into good. Brackenhide Hollow as well. They're starting off at that 22 keystone level, and we'll see if uh, Fish Face gets added to this route yet. We've yet to see a Fish Face pulled, but this could be the one. The problem, okay. The problem with Fish Face, okay, he, he, he by himself, he's fine. The issue is where he's located is awful, because there's a bunch of, like, uh, packs wait. with... Three they mystics skipped. in it and stuff. So Lapan there, they, they used Mind Soothe and just opened the cage. They skipped that pack that a lot of people I, pull uh, right by the beach by what's often that second cage. So they're going to need some extra count. And you know, I know of a mob that gives 4% count that they could go so, and grab. You were so cringe. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm saying. You were you were so cringe. Half fish, half face. All power. <laughs> no, up no, in the, no. Up okay. in the top area of that uh, first dungeon. Or first part of the dungeon. Well, well, one of the big parts about this, though, is that like your priest, technically, if they stay out of combat, can just mind soothe and fade and open up your cage, correct? Yeah. So they don't they don't actually need to pull any of the mobs here if they don't want to. Exactly. So they should only pull the mobs they do want to, which uh, right now a they have skipped a little bit. They, they're going to be coming out of this behemoth. first area potentially with a little bit less. We'll see. They're doing a good job, though, of managing the sanguine. Lapan is saving a lot of time by preventing so, these mobs from sanguine. I mean, look at this. Sanguine healing nowhere to be seen on that HPS meter for Legendary. That is incredible given how finicky these mobs are. Sanguine is aggressively annoying in this key because a lot of the mobs flee whenever yeah. they're low, particularly like the fighters and whatnot. Legendary, oh my gosh, they're actually just... So, they're just doing one trash pull while Wexy opened up three cages and now Wexy's going to open up the final two cages for them. They're going to pull the boss. I think once Trick Totem dies, I have a, a sneaking suspicion that they're going to probably pull... Uh, the trash pack that they just mind soothed into the boss because that that pull is pretty reasonably doable i think they have to cave dive after this boss though to get the remainder of their count dreadnos 
Yeah, that could be that could be their plan for the future here. They could also pull some trash into the end of the this boss, is... but I don't think you do that in plus twenty two because the boss is just gonna die so fast, and the sanguine healing is just such a nightmare to comprehend here. So this is a route that I don't like in a twenty two, but I think it scales much better as you go higher. Yeah, it's uh. Okay, so... And, and why I say I don't like it in 22 is because our expectation is for them to 3-chest the key. They're still probably going to 3-chest the 22. What are they going to look like in the 25, right? Are, are, are they going to be able to 2-chest or 3-chest the 25? What are they going to look like in the 27? Are they going to be able to 2-chest that? Like, what? How, how does this scale as you get to, like, higher key levels for, like, 2-chesting it? Yeah, it's, uh... That is the question, and I agree that skipping more stuff at the start and having these pulls where Sanguine is doing zero HPS, that is a really valuable thing that's going to scale really nicely I, into the higher keys. I think, I think that as they go higher, the, the zero Sanguine healing route from the no fleeing mobs is, is very good. <laughs> I, sanguine here is annoying. Yeah. So that. look at this. Okay, right as Trick Totem dies, then they pull this trash pack. This is... The teams do this on live. You're really scared about, like... Um, hack claw whenever he's porting around and putting Grievous on all the all the players and that mark for butchery from Gash Tooth. But beyond that, like the trash pack itself, you just have to make sure that you get the kick on the the fear from the war scourge. There's not a ton going on here. You kind of have to CC the fighters, but you're you're mostly fine to take this trash pull on the boss. Don't heal the boss though with Sangman. <laughs> that's that's uh, mission critical. Yeah, that is one of the biggest biggest things to worry about uh, in this dungeon. Uh, we can take a look, actually, potentially, though, at the route used by NA's Last Hope in their plus 25 okay. as we talk about this. So uh, can you see the see this uh, this route here, perhaps? Ooh. No, I don't see the route yet. Where's okay. the route? Hang on. We'll, uh, we'll get it pulled oh, up perhaps I found the route. here soon. Okay. Okay. I, fa so I found your route. This is what Dorky's team, NA's Last Hope, were using here uh, with the... This, is, this route's... Uh, been created from their run using uh, some cool new tech from Raider IO and Keystone Guru as well that sure. uh, is pretty nifty. And you can see they got to 35% when the first boss died, including all of these uh, these pulls at the start. That is a little bit more uh, than we were seeing in the run we were just watching. But even with that much count, you still have to pull so much stuff in the rest of the dungeon because uh, uh, you can't really realistically pull any of the stuff in this middle area, right? And then you want to get most of this. You could, in theory, grab a little bit more at the end. And then, mm -hmm. like you said, there are some caves into which you can dive uh, if you need a little bit more count here. But I think if you're getting much less than 35% at the start, you're going to be setting yourself up for a lot of so, uh, difficulty getting the count you need. What do you think the most important part of that, that NA's Last Hope route is? Or do you think that that's something that's just like pretty standard for what we see on live? Yeah, I I think it's pretty standard. I think that the first pull working out is pretty two chest, nasty on Sanguine. That's uh that's really a hard part of this. So, uh, grouping it and then preventing Sanguine from from overhealing stuff is a big challenge. But, um, I mean the Rotwood looks scary that you're pulling this big, but it's actually not that bad uh, in this area of the dungeon. So, I don't. Know, I mean I think I think this is a very good route that that NA's last hope had. I do like the idea, if you can, to cut a little bit from the start, if there's good stuff to add later on, but I don't know if there's any good stuff left in the rest of the dungeon. The last area is pretty efficient, right? But, but they're already playing all of that. It's tough. It, it's, it's, it's a tough route to manage on Sanguine, because like you were saying, um, just like the Sanguine healing is, is very precarious with the mobs that flee at the beginning, particularly like the fighters and stuff. If you ever have those mobs, like flee and then jump into sanguine for whatever reason they they start to end up in a really awkward spot um so while you were showing off that route last moment was able to two chest their brachinite 27 so that means that na's last hope also like very likely to two chest their brachinite 27 yeah absolutely that's uh that is good news we're also seeing cool beans in the bottom right a vital two chest i would say for them in this freehold 27 because right now a 27 two chest is what Legendary and Last Moment have achieved. The one chest is what Ready Checks and Pixel have achieved. But Pixel and Ready Checks both two chests of the 27 Algathar, whereas Cool Beans only one chest of that. So if Cool Beans, Beans can get the two chest here, then they will at least have a strength to go with their they, weakness against these they other They don't teams. have count. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> that, they're at that's three ninety nine out of four. Oh, dude, had did they miss a neutral mob somewhere? They, they probably did. Yeah, count? the plan was probably oh, one more deckhand somewhere in the middle of this my. dungeon, which is this catastrophic is so potentially this for them. So bad. I, I mean, sixty percent on the boss, it's over. There's no way they can get this done and go and get a mob killed in forty five seconds. So cool beans are going to be putting a one chest 27 freehold on the board here Ooh. and they are getting tremendously under the gun already in our competition I, here i feel very concerned about their ability to be able to stay in the tournament yeah this is oh, a tough. tremendous danger uh, apparently okay sometimes our count is wrong in this dungeon is it wrong here it, we're not sure but sometimes our evoker is out of range, or sorry, our observer is out of range of seeing some count die because they are watching the evoker <laughs> during the ring of booty. Uh, so sure. that's some fun lore about how, about our behind the scenes process. So if the I'm... timer does stop, it means they did actually get one extra one extra count somewhere uh, when our observer was far away. We'll we will see. Either way, uh -huh. the two chest has passed, but. Uh, that is something to be be on the lookout for if it ever looks like a team is missing count in freehold, as that might be what's going on. Dude. And his last hope finished Brackenite Hollow a minute faster than uh, last moment. Wow. Wow. -y. Absolutely blasting that dungeon. Yeah, that two chest goes oh. on the board for both teams, but it is much, much closer for last moment than it was for NA's last hope. NA's last hope now will be uh, presumably making their way over to Freehold. 82 points across three dungeons, but they're going to need to pick up the, the points from that last dungeon uh, to avoid elimination today. Janice, a wholesome chatter asked, can someone explain why it looks like they're letting the incorporeal go off? So, so there's incorporeal it, it, in Brackenhide Hollow specifically, right? It's in two of our four dungeons actually today uh, as well. I believe it's also in the Freehold. Um, the reason mm. for that is because there is a priest that is casting Dominate Mind on them fairly frequently. When mm -hmm. you do that, the mob keeps casting, but it's now working for you instead of for the uh, the dungeon. But it does put a nerfed version of its effect on the enemies. And okay, it's in Brackenite and Algathar. Sorry, Brackenite and Algathar are our incorporeal dungeons uh, today. And uh, of course, yeah, you can see Freehold has... How nerfed is it? Yeah, like, so how, it what's the DR effect? When, when you get an incorporeal debuff on you, it's obviously very bad, right? It's 50% reduced uh, damage and healing. When an yeah. enemy gets it on them, it's only 5%. Uh, so it is... 90% uh, less effective than it is on players, but still it is very nice for uh, a lot of the boss fights in particular to get a free 10% DR from two stacks of that uh, on them. So usually that's one of the higher prio CCs is a Dominate Mind. You got to be a little bit careful with using that in your pugs because if you cast Dominate Mind and somebody else is casting Polymorph at the same time, you're going to Dominate Mind a Polymorphed enemy and so it's not going to cast for you. But if you can coordinate it such that you cast on one that nobody else is CCing, it's a really nice extra bonus. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, explanation. Makes sense. All right. So looking around, Andy's Last Hope has entered the final dungeon that they need to complete to be able to get all four dungeons completed on the weekend. They have entered into this freehold. Uh, mm. They did something kind of similar to what we saw last weekend, where they uh, pre invis potioned the start of the key. And then um, they they now just do the double enforcer pulls, the first pull of the dungeon, and then they lost the very beginning of Sky Captain Crag. Uh, this allows you to use all of your offensive CDs on that double enforcer pull. The double enforcer pull, not that deadly on 22 Tyrannical, very deadly on 30. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's something that you definitely want to be popping your, all of your CDs on. And once we get to plus 30, you'll probably be able to get your two minutes in Lust still on Sky Cap and Craig, which is not yes. going to be possible for everybody on this 22 key, but not going to be an issue either. So, in addition to that, uh, you can outrange the shout from the enforcers. I think it is a 50 yard range, if I remember correctly. So that's definitely something you're going to see teams start to do, you know, 30. <laughs> like once, once you get to a 30 on Tyrannical, you're probably going to see them outranging it a lot. A lot of teams are going to fight Skycap and Crag over in this area because there are, uh, there's a, a easy way to then have your evoker just bait all of these uh, sure. all these poops without there being too much danger for the group. A uh, nice little spot for everybody to be able to spread out as well around the boss. I do so, caution you against using this on storming because if your tank gets knocked by a storming <laughs> here, you might reset the boss. Uh, no, that's never happened to me. <laughs> yeah, it couldn't be me, but uh, uh, otherwise it's a pretty nice area. Okay, so looking around in the top right, we have Pixel in uh, 
28 Maltherian's Lair. Looking pretty comfortable for the three chests. They had a 20 minute split on Naraxxus, which is not the fastest we've seen thus far, but it's definitely within the three chest range, right? So the three chest timer on this dungeon is 26 minutes and 24 seconds, and teams have come, you know, a minute and a half, almost two minutes under on that on that three chest on that two chest timer. So Pixel should be more than under this, assuming that they continue to play this clean. Yeah, nice work here by Pixel. And you know what? Pixel are actually not far behind NA's Last Hope or Legendary. The only downside on their board is they're sitting on a one-chested 27 I, freehold instead of a two-chest. Yeah. But, you know, that's not the end of the world. That's like one point, and it's not even a point that's going to matter today. It's going to matter in the future. So if Pixel can hold on and can put up some good Brackenhides quickly, I think they're in good shape to be pretty safe through till tomorrow. Their, their second boss split was just like rather slow on the side of Pixel for Freehold, which is why they ended up uh, only one-chesting that. I wonder what I wonder what it ended up happening, because it's it's not an issue right now that they one-chested it, but it might be it might become a timer issue as they start to get to 30, because last weekend we saw this dungeon um, get pushed rather high, and like it felt like it was like stuck at 30, but some teams really struggled to be able to time that 30, where some teams were, you know, multiple, multiple minutes under the timer. Yeah, exactly. And that's the kind of thing where there may need to be some adaptation and some yoinking of routes and pathing from other teams if you down. kind of realize that you are systematically a little bit slower in one part of the dungeon. Ooh, 2% for ready checks as Ularog goes down into another intermission. That is not a good feeling. Hate to see it. And they actually Did got an unlucky totem there near that pack they're trying to dodge, too. Do we see what happened to Cool Beans' count? Uh, we didn't know. What we do know is that Cool guess... Beans have just started a break. They've started what is going to be the final break of the day. So once Cool Beans come back from their break in about five minutes, all of our teams will have finished their mandatory breaks for the weekend. Okay. There's Goop actually going to use that Wernstone back tech to Drogo. Not a fan of the sitting in the ring and waiting tech that we've seen some other teams use. And they're actually waiting over here to... Uh, what is he they're pulling? doing this rather huh? early. Drogo what is, is going go on? Yeah, okay, so Dorky's going on an adventure here, and they are setting up in a spot as well. Oh, look at this. This this is good tech. <laughs> this is good tech indeed. So okay, by smash. standing on this little sign of this storefront, what? the duelist dash ability and the sea surge ability aren't going to hit them. You saw Smacked ended up getting hit because he was a little bit too far. Actually, I think he got hit by somebody else's swirly spawned out on the uh, main part of the building. But this yeah. is a nice way to just let your DPS freely DPS here. Those duelist dashes you don't care about. Dorky's playing on the other side of the pack from where they're charging. Drogo's melee, so he doesn't get targeted How by those. How does the padfoot work? Okay, the padfoot still goes on you. So so look at Goop's debuffs. He still yeah. gets that padfoot debuff on him, which is not great. Yeah, it's, uh, it is a little bit of damage that they do have to look out for. Goop does have obsidian scales rolling right now. Seven stacks of bursting on Goop. There's going to be a beautiful mass of spell landing from Junkrat, though, taking all those stacks off of everybody. Goop is just cycling through these obsidian dwarf. scales, granting himself and the party health. Junkrat and Smacked both hit their dwarf racials, clearing all of those yep. debuffs off themselves. And wow, wow, that was a cool pull. Okay, so that one very good tech, two absolute Giga Chad bear pull right there. Okay, and then Goop just rescued Dorky up to the top so he could grab some more mobs down yeah. and take it into the council caps. How does this scale up to the higher level of keys? Also, get Fish Face off the bottom left of the screen. What are you doing? There it is. Fish Face for Cool Beans as they're going to be making their way into uh, into a Brackenhide, presumably. Okay. Do, do you think that that pull is doable in a 20 or in a 30? I think like, so, yeah. I don't see why not. Like, the Padfoot debuff was looking kind of sketchy, but they could have healed more I, and used more stuff if they needed to. I'm kind of sad that I couldn't try that on live this week because it's bolstering. Yeah, yeah I mean, you could briefly well, you start killing some yeah, of the mobs in that pack. It would be quite brief, actually, at the yeah, point. Yeah, I fear you might be correct. Legendary are putting a three chest on the board in this Brackenhide Hollow in the top right. Nicely done by them. That is going to advance them to a solid, solid point total. I believe that is the first team to finish all four dungeons as well. So uh, nicely done by them. Currently in the lead, and they're in good shape to be one of our top two teams coming out of the day and maybe the weekend. Of course, top two teams make it through to Global Finals, so that is what they are all playing for eventually, but you got to survive till Sunday to have a chance at it.
We're now seeing uh Ooh, last moment's playing Enhancement Shaman in the Neltharian's Lair, too. Yeah, cool to see. This is a nice dungeon uh, for the Enhance as well. There's some mobs like Pelters and Dominators that are mm -hmm. hoping to get fixated or to, I... get, to get funneled into. Uh, works Enhance pretty nicely also... on this first boss as well. It's really good at this first boss, yeah. It's really good at this first boss in general, just... Like, so the Shadow Priest just wants to permanently be hitting the boss and like passively cleaving the Skitters if at all possible, where the Enhancement Shaman can easily target swap to the Skitters and probably solo them. So that's that's what you're going to be looking to do is just having that Spreest really owning the boss here. Yeah, that uh, is an important thing to do. We've got ready checks up in the top left as well, getting started on Naraxus, the worm boss, as they drop their uh, their puddles here. And some pretty, actually, one of those devout is going to miss the puddle, so they're going to have to actually focus a void torrent into that. That's not good. They are going to be able to get it killed off in time, but you'd much prefer to have those getting hit by those poisony puddles. So wait, similar to the similar to those puddles dropping in, I heard that we just dropped in a new caster. Hello, Nagura. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, uh, Nagura may be muted. Oh. No, am I? All right. Oh, good. Wait. Oh, oh, there we go. Hold on. All right. Is this thing on? <laughs> is it on? Is it on? All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, perfect. Yeah, so looks like we're seeing some Nell flares and some Reckon Heights. Did Fishface get yeah. pulled? Not Did yet. I miss it? No. Nah. You missed nothing. Uh, oh. how, how have you been feeling while you were on, that br on your break? I mean, I think it's like the one thing that I think that is the most interesting is that the bottom teams are also close to each other. So it's going to be. Okay coming down to the wire and who gets eliminated, right? Um, the top teams definitely look pretty solid, right? An Ace Last Hope, especially a Legendary, looking really good, even Pixel as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, some of the bottom teams are kind of close, so anything can happen. We were, uh, we were a bit concerned for Cool Beans with the, mm -hmm. uh, the one chest in the Freehold and the one chest, or in the, the failure to be able to three chests the 25 Neltharian's Lair because then they had to go to the 27 Neltharian's Lair. Now there's a question as to, is last moment, how are they going to do in their Nelth Lair? Are they going to be able to three chest that on the 25? Yeah. Because that that could be the big crucial point for Cool Beans this weekend. Yeah, that's going to be pretty important because uh, Ready Check is one of the teams that has like the least amount of points right now, but they have two chests at the Academy, right? And Cool Beans did not. So that is something that uh, they probably have to worry about as well. Uh, ready check on the timer is looking fine, right? For the two chests, they're looking okay. I think uh, so. I want to say it was Pixel that killed Naraxis at like twenty-one minutes, even, and they were still fine on their their two chests yes. on the twenty-eight. So I think it's definitely still doable for ready checks. This yeah, dungeon let's see. Okay, is one that. Okay, we have the leaderboard up, uh, right? Let's let's take a look. Um, so ready check is getting the three points here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the problem is the one chest in academy as well. Like we were talking about this at the start of the yeah. day, where it was last moment and cool beans not being able to two chest at twenty seven, but then uh, last moment did catch up a bit in the other dungeons, but cool beans didn't necessarily. So yeah, they're gonna be a little bit in trouble. But it's still doable, of course, depending on how the Breckenhide goes for both Cool Beans and Ready Check. I, th I think right now the two teams that are the most likely to get eliminated are between Last Moment and Cool Beans. Those mm -hmm. are the ones, but their fate is ab the fate is absolutely still in their hands. And on top of that, any team can have like you know a major blunder in the next hour, forty five minutes, or something like that, and and completely have like a catastrophe happen. Right? If 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 you have a team that ends up like having to wipe and reset a key in like a 25 or something like that, 10 minutes in or 20 minutes in, that that can definitely be a problem. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying if Cool Beans goes into Brackenhut okay. and the okay. Cool Fish Face, <laughs> I think they can totally make it. So they might be the people's champions, but will they be the champions of the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> but here's the people. Nope. <laughs> All right, so Ready Check's now pulling that uh, Dominator pack with the two breakers. That pull, I mean, <laughs> I like this pull a lot because I feel like, like the breakers do nothing, right? I mean, uh, not nothing. They have the avalanche, but that is not necessarily something 
you have to worry about because it's fully lined up. And it's so, a bit more yeah. tank damage. It's also you can also fully outplay it. I think I think the big thing is first off, yeah, like you were saying, it's only tank damage. You can fully outplay the avalanche. And on top of that, since you're running this composition that these teams are running, it's predictable as to who the avalanche is going on. The avalanche is always going on to the range players, meaning that uh, the tank and Roybin are never going to get the avalanches on them. So, like, you, if you know that in advance, I mean, Roybin is able to just bomb heals with that dominator being out, and and like, you just. If you're the healer there, you just tell the DPS to not come anywhere near near you, otherwise you're gonna have to move and not gonna be able to heal them. Yeah, that's like I also learned that the avalanche only goes on ranged. Because I didn't yeah. know that. I thought it goes on everyone. And I was doing <laughs> I was doing an L player and I was playing with a melee player, believe it or not. And I was kind <laughs> of standing close to the melee. So I was thinking, oh, I'm just gonna stack up with him. So I'm not we're not gonna spawn our avalanches like, you know, sandwiching each other or whatever. So I stack up with the melee player. And he almost dies because he gets hit by the avalanche. And then on voice chat, he was like, oh my god, Nagura tried to kill me. It's like, huh? <laughs> and then he told me that they don't actually get the avalanche. And then people always say melee have it harder, right? Unbelievable. I think that, I think that melee just believe that they have it harder because any time that they're not able to have 100% uptime, they just think it's the end of the world. <laughs> it is true. There's a bunch of things that only go on melee, though, or they... Like frontals, for example, it's well. It's always that's deserved. They just deserve. Yeah. Like, if they're just playing well, they don't. They don't even get hit by the frontals. Just stand behind the mobs. It's not that hard. Okay, I'm starting to believe that this double moon can cast was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first clue? <laughs> All right, let's see. Ready? Checks can do the skip. There we go. All right, no problem. We've seen some teams um, have an issue with the skip. Which I also, like, I also just uh, skip sometimes with Shadow Melt. And apparently if you have like, uh, the Evoker has this like ability that echoes your spells, right? Or it has a okay. chance to echo your spell. And that's what made me not like Shadow Melt it. And I didn't know that. So if that's something, if you ever Shadow Melt this pool or you invest it or whatever, make sure you click away your Evoker buffs. Because apparently they have a lot of uh, things that echo things and they keep you in combat. So should we do that? Okay, well, that's. Uh, I'll write that one down for myself for later, I guess. <laughs> thank you for uh, thank you for telling me. In his last hope in the top right, absolutely owning this freehold. Fifteen minutes in that twenty-two freehold. Fifteen oh two is the final time, and you, they're immediately hitting the town portal. Go, gonna immediately jump into that twenty-five. Are they able to three chest the twenty-five? I wonder with that large bear pull. Mm, maybe actually. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be very close. It might be like the same situation that we had in Academy, where uh -huh. they're just like barely over. But I think it's technically possible. Yeah, I saw that pull and that seemed, that seemed really good. That I, was I, a good I was pull. Also, yeah, I was also really <laughs> impressed by the Master Spell, because they're bursting, of course, in, in Freehold. And whenever you stand on one of these ledges that give you um, this kind of like no path available area, it's also really difficult to hit any kind of um, ground targeted abilities on that area, right? Like if you yeah. want to do master spell, you have to target the ground. So what Junkrat did is that he targeted the area and, like on the house next to them instead of on like the latch, which made him uh, do the master spell, which I thought was really cool. Because yeah, sometimes there's issues with like putting anything on the ground. So looking at the top left here, we have ready checks um, dealing with dark rule. Are they going to be able to two chest this key? I, I'm a bit worried now, Nagura. Looking at uh, the, the, the amount of HP on the boss. 26, 24. Well, they have 30 seconds. Approximately. Yeah. Let's see cooldowns. They have no cooldowns. Ooh, no combust, no nothing. Uh, okay. I mean, oh, just, this you, is not looking good. Oh, 12%. You commit to the boss, to to the to boss here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so 15 seconds left. I think it's. Oh, it's like. They can do it, they can do it. Oh, they have no cooldowns, they have nothing. F five seconds, oh, no. five seconds, five seconds for five percent. Oh, 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 no. oh, no. oh, oh, did they get they it? Did oh, it? My God, they got it. They got oh, it. my God. 26, 24.9. Oh, A very, my God. <laughs> very generous rounding in the TGP. We're very generous to the players. Nobody can ever tell us any. Nobody can ever tell us otherwise. 
generously rounding down. Yeah, the to game always rounds down. Yeah. So they were 0. <laughs> 0.1 seconds off of not making a two chest. Oh like, my that, gosh, that's, that's insane. Huge. That's saving them like one full, like, okay. That's saving them like one 27 minute run in Nelt Slayer later on this weekend. It's not going to save them a bunch of time today, but it's definitely going to save them a lot in the long run. And Pixel, having that accident, bo accidental body pull of this uh, five pack here with the Stalker and the Hyenas, a very mm. dangerous pull. Um, they're probably still going to be fine at the end of the No, at <laughs> Look at stalkers the are dangerous. Vol like the volley. Look at everyone having this bleed effect on them, just doing so much damage. We have a mass barrier coming in, trying to help out. But yeah, that's if you do that on a hierarchy, you wipe. Like these stalkers, they're just illegal to pull. Yes. Put insane bleeds on everybody. It's crazy to deal with. But, but uh, thankfully, in this key level, it is okay. That's an insta sack that person. That that that's got nothing to do with me. And then you walk away. <laughs> Overall, though, I think in a 22, Pixel should probably be on pace to still three chest this dungeon. I don't think it's something that we're overly worried about. No, they're definitely fine, yeah. The last area doesn't take too long, so they should be okay. And let's take a look at the last moment on the bottom left. They're also somewhat in danger of getting eliminated, I guess. Uh, of course, Albro mm -hmm. playing that Enhancement Shaman there. Uh, but they're for sure three chesting this 22. Unless they have any major issues, like not being able to reset the um, Scorpion pack, which, by the way, they don't have the mage, right? So they need somebody to Shadow Meld, which mm. I presume is going to be the Priest. Priest is playing Night Elf. So, that seems likely. Yeah, so one of the issues with resetting this is that almost, like, a couple of seconds after you pull this boss, you get the first Crystal Spike. There we go. Yeah, so what you have to do is after this person pulls away the Scorpion, they have to somehow get back to the group really quickly to make sure the crystal spike doesn't spawn far away from the boss. Otherwise, uh, the boss has to move really like a lot, and then the boss does a lot of damage from moving. The ad might not be spawning in it, and so on and so on. So you have to either rescue the person back in, or you grip the person back in. Yeah, and that was not an issue for that. But I see that happen sometimes where the people pull, shut them out, and then they stand oh. somewhere. Oh. Spawns. Dude, the boss is dead for the last moment. Yeah, the, that boss just exploded. <laughs> I guess it's a 22 fortified, but man, they just murked this boss. Yeah, that is kind of crazy. Like, the Enhancement Shaman doing so, and Shadow Priest as well. I mean, they're just doing crazy damage somehow. Is Enhancement I mean, Shaman OP? I mean, I don't know. Look <laughs> at the damage meter. Like I mean, it. is Enhancement Shaman OP? Yeah. This, this is so much damage. I'm actually like, because they do get the extra damage from hitting the at when it is in the pillar, of course. And it bolsters your damage a little bit because of that takes extra damage. But still, I mean, this, these are some insane numbers we're seeing there. Yeah. Of course, Augmentation Evoker, PI, and whatnot, but still. Yeah, that was fast. Enhance was a spec that before Temple 1.5 that I, I think that we were going to pretty consistently see during the TGP. It might not have been played in by every team or by every composition, but it was definitely a spec that we were going to see a lot of um, before God Comp showed up. And uh, now it's seen a little bit less, but I, I still think it's a spec that is very, very good and does a large amount of like overall DPS and, and how it does damage is also incredibly powerful. Yeah, one of the really good things about Enhancement Shaman, at least in Season 1, was always the fact that they could funnel into a target a lot, right? Yeah. Biggest problem they had is that on really big pulls, like if there's uh, 10, 20 mobs, then they, they're just capped, right? So they couldn't do like any larger AoE pulls really well. They could always funnel into like a single mob. But the thing is, the Shadow Priest is also really good at uh, hitting a single mob, right? In an AoE mm -hmm. pull. So the usefulness of having two classes that can do that is maybe like diminished a little bit, especially when the third. DPS player in your group is just bolstering your damage and not doing any damage by themselves, really. And we don't have bolstering as an affix in any of these keys, so... <laughs> oh, thank goodness. <laughs> it, it would be even better then, though. <laughs> uh, have you done keys a lot this week? Bolstering is so hard some, in some of these dungeons. Like, Halls of Infusion and bolstering and Uldamon and bolstering is so hard. I yeah, actually think it's really hard, but one thing that I notice a lot is that people, because it does not give HP anymore, I think there's quite a lot of people that um, like don't respect it as much, and they just like okay. full out AOE on some packs. 
instead of focusing like the higher HP targets. Because I think some some people or some damage dealers could for sure like focus at high HP target and like not do as much AOE. But people know, ah, oh, you know, it doesn't give HP anymore. It doesn't slow us down. And then they have this like super bolstered mob at the end and it's just going to kill the tank or whatever. Yeah, I feel like people respect it a lot less nowadays compared to what it was when it gave HP as well. I mean, even even look in the bottom right, like last moment there, the Shadow Priest is doing a large amount of it. Uh, like overall DPS, so the Shadow Priest is going to be the one who is like uh, AoEing in a lot of instances, but a lot of the Shadow Priest AoE is, is priority damage, and then the Shadow Priest and Elbro, knowing that the Hulk, like once the Hulk dies, the rest of the pack will quickly follow, they just kind of focus down the Hulk, and they were able to kill that off with insane speed, probably the fastest out of any team in the TGP right now. And so yeah. since they were able to kill off that Hulk as fast as they were, like they were able to get the, the boss pulled like incredibly quick, and it's off of what Nagura was just talking about. Hold on, can we get uh, NA's Last Hope back on the screen? I wanted to see if they were going to do that bear pull again. Oh, yeah, look at look. Oh, there it They're is. It. Oh, my gosh. It's so sick. The one thing that is a little bit of a downside about this pull is the setup time, right? Like, yeah. It takes quite a while. Like, you can see them just standing there AFK, right? Which is never ideal. But of course, like, it takes time for Dorky to run around and gather up this whole pool. And, I mean, it is insane. I like it a lot, this pool. But I do think, like, it's. A little bit, like just the setup is a little bit slow. I'm a bit worried also about how many pad foots are in this pull and like how it scales into higher levels, like particularly like the 30 level. Um, it is a disease. Oh no, is it? It's a disease. So they have two disease dispels with the paladin yeah, and the two. priest. Mm -hmm. but and a cauterize and dwarf racial. Are there three pad foots in this? It's a lot. Of, there's three swabbies. We see three debuffs. There yeah, I think. I think there are three pad foots, which means I think that somebody's going to end up having that debuff perma, and then you can't really... At some point, you don't really want to freely dispel for Drogo because you need to wait for the dispel because you're not getting the mass, and so you want to dispel the bursting off yourself, and then it's like how the pack is going to die. You have the mass one, and then you have to dwarf the second uh, set of like the bursting stacks. I don't know. It's, True, it's, it's a yeah. bit weird. And bursting makes this... Um, like They probably are not happy about bursting here because of this, right? Because they mm -hmm. have to... They maybe have to use the dwarf racial for bursting instead of the it's, debuff. I'm interested to see if they're able to do this in thirty. I'm in, I'm interested to see like how how their strategy is going to like adapt as they go into higher levels. Are are they going to be like the first team that we've seen during the TGP to time a thirty one in this dungeon? Because they're very yeah, fast. Maybe. This, this this strategy is the fastest we've seen. Well, okay, so I think that the thirty one is just going to be a big a big issue on how you survive the first boss. Like the okay, first boss, not only one shoots okay. you with pistol shot in the first phase, like you have to chain defensives to make sure you don't get one shot. But then I'm pretty sure the asteroid shot in phase two also one shots you in a 31 tyrannical. So, I mean, this trash push pool is nice and all, right? But you have to survive the bosses. And then Eudora probably one shots both the cloth um, players as well with their uh, with her pistol shot. So um, I'm not sure. On Tyran, I think without pressing a defensive, uh, Eudora starts one shotting the cloth. He's starting at twenty eight. Yes. So. Oh, well, maybe on, pe on 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 yeah, maybe like twenty nine for them because they have like yeah. full gear and everything, right? And yeah, it could could be like twenty nine, but even they're gonna have to play it like super clean. There, there's a question as to whether or not you would spend too much time. Like, it's not a question of is it timeable. It's more like how much time is it going to take you to to do it. Yeah, that's a problem. And then with this comp. Yeah. Um, like the 31 that it did in time trials, of course, was played completely differently because of the <laughs> yes, <laughs> because of the friendly fire of the cannon barrage. But then they also played a comp that had so much like single target damage to nuke through the first phase of the first boss, right? To make it as short as possible. Like they, they had the warlock in there and everything. So, and not to say that they don't have that much burst, but Shadow Priest maybe like not as good. Mage still good, but it's not like a demo warlock with like all buffs. So I wonder if they can do it. I'm very interested if they would actually survive that. But I would love to see it. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to see. It's it's something that we're definitely going to see. Like, uh, That's probably like a day three thing. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, that's not going to happen today. So looking at the looking at the last you know 50 minutes of the day or so, let's, let's talk about like how, how the end of the day is going to close out. So one team is going to get eliminated at the end of the day. It's first tiebreaker, or it's not first tiebreaker. A team with the lowest score gets eliminated. 
Then first tiebreaker option is uh, highest dungeon. If one team has a higher dungeon than the other one, uh, if they're tied, the team with the lower amount of dungeon, like the lower dungeon, gets eliminated. Then it goes second highest dungeon, third highest dungeon, etc. And then it goes cumulative time if they're all the exact same. Mm -hmm. um, what are we looking like for the next, you know, fifty-five minutes in terms of potential eliminations? Because right now we have ready check and cool beans at the bottom of, at the bottom of the list. Do you think it's just those two teams? Yeah. So the problem is that uh, cool beans is now working on their Brackenite, right? And the it's 55 minutes left. There's not that many dungeons you can fit in there. So they have sure. to, there's three chesting this, this key. Then they have to play the 25 afterwards, which is going to be at least another like 23 minutes, right? And then they can do like two or th maybe three more dungeons if they're really fast. No, actually, it's only going to be two afterwards. So they have mm -hmm. to. I would. Yeah, I guess they could do the 29 Nelf. Because they want to have a, like a high key somewhere, right? They want to have yes. a, as high as possible to win that first tiebreaker in case it comes to that. And then the problem is that all the other dungeons they have are one chest, right? They don't want to do the freehold because it's just one point. They don't want to necessarily do the academy. And it's also not a high key level either, right? It's a 28, which is not necessarily that high. So they want to go for the Nell Flare or the they want to go for the Bracken Heights, depending mm -hmm. on what happens with their 25 key. What's the deal with overtime, right? Because teams can play a little bit past the uh, the timer cutoff if they already have a key started. So I believe that if they're in the dungeon and they're like they say they want to play it and then they're ready, then they can go a little bit later, but like okay. only a minute or so. Like there's a little bit of leeway, but not like that much. Okay, but the teams don't get like dragged out of the dungeon if they're. Uh, still mid run, correct? Oh no, no! Like if if they start a dungeon before the timer is done, so before midnight EU time, then uh, they can finish the dungeon, of course. Yeah. Midnight EU time, yeah. All of Europe, <laughs> well known for being in C -E CST. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of EU. <laughs> well, it's server time. EU server time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good point. Good point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your server time actually? NA server time? Uh, there's two. And so one oh, of them is. There's two. Okay. Yeah, one of them is Eastern and then one of them is Pacific. Ah, I see. Okay. Even though the East. Even though the <laughs> EST servers are in Chicago. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Don't run it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's strange. Don't worry. It's, it's a soul play. By the way, as I'm looking at uh, last moment uh, doing Ola Rock. I have a little bit of a tip here that I've seen some of these teams do. I haven't seen all of them do it, but the first time Ulara goes downstairs and he does this like mini game, the shuffle game, where you have to find the correct uh, pillar to kill, um, he spawns like the normal face pillars that you have to kill, right? And then you, the tank can actually determine where they spawn, right? Because they're in the tank's location. And what if, if, if you just spawn them where the boss is right now, then it can confuse you in the demission phase, right? Because the boss pillar will move into the pillars that they have to kill, and then there's like, like a million pillars around, and you don't know what's going on. So what I see some tanks do, which is actually really smart in my opinion, is that if you move the boss like pretty far away from the middle, like to like a corner, and you spawn the idols there, then mm -hmm. the shuffle game will not interfere with the idols from the normal phase, and it's like less confusing. Uh, usually okay. it's like the healer that looks at them or the tank because the damage dealers are killing um, the idols. But if they're on the side, then even the damage dealers can help look because it's not going to like walk into them or like shuffle into them, which in my opinion is very smart. And I've seen some teams do it because uh, you don't want to embarrass yourself on TGP and uh, kill the wrong idol, I guess. <laughs> Have we seen somebody kill the wrong idol yet? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Actually, I think we've seen this in, um, like, in Legion, in one of the MDIs. I think so. Oh, because, okay. Because we, like, yep. specifically talked about this. Like, I'm sure they're not going to make a mistake like that. And then it happened. <laughs> I think that, I don't remember which team it was, though. Uh, do you, are you an idol looker in your groups, Nagura? Sometimes. But I also, like, lose it very easily. Or, like... 
I'm always like super uncertain. It's like I think yeah. it's this one, but I don't want to like mark it because I don't want to be the wrong that the one that is wrong, you know. <laughs> I always, I always, uh, I always look at the idols. An idol, idol looker. Do you always get it right? Um, you, you, we'll say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll say yes for broadcast right. purposes. I'll need some I, confirmation on that one from I get it right teammates. most of the time. <laughs> I would say I'm, I would say I'm trustworthy to look at the idols. All right, all right. Ooh, what did Lapin do there? Wait, wait. Looking uh, at bottom they right. Were, they uh. they're soothing. So they they actually do a different strategy. They only do two pulls in this whole entire um, first area. Or, yeah, so they only do two pulls in this whole entire first area. They do the first pull to dungeon, which they use Lust and all their offensive CDs. They do the mm -hmm. second pull, and meanwhile, Wexy is off and opening a bunch of cages. And then the third pull of the dungeon is into the first boss. Uh, after Trick Totem dies, they take that that trash pack that's on the left, and they, they pull it into the boss. But they don't do... Basically, they're three-pulling this first area. Um, it's like two pulls plus the boss. Yeah, I like that. I was just, it's, like, I thought for a second that they're going to go over and pull fish face, but it didn't happen. A lot of teams are getting somewhere in the order of 30% enemy forces here, and then Legendary is only getting, I don't even remember, like 19 or something coming out of this yeah, first area. Interesting. Uh, I didn't see what they had to pull last time. Maybe if we had the maybe if we had the route, we can actually see exactly where they make up their other count. Um, maybe we'll be able to pull it up in a second. Because it's, it, there, there's a question as to where they're supposed to get the remainder of their enemy forces. Yeah, exactly, because uh, especially with Sanguine, you don't necessarily... Like, it's not ideal to pull a lot between first and second boss because of these oak trees just being so incredibly annoying to deal with with Sanguine, right? So Sanguine's problematic in this dungeon in general. In the first area, Sanguine yeah. is like... It, like, ma the fighters flee. And you're just like, you're really stuck. Okay, if you give me a sec, I will pull up the route for us. All right, go for it. In the meantime, we can take a look at last moment on the bottom left. They're now dealing with their 25 now flare. Let's look at the timer. So they're 13.04, Naraxis on 60%. Yeah, they're looking good. Yeah, they can three chest this. If nothing goes wrong from here. I mean, Albro is blasting the bosses somehow, like... I don't know what's going on with this enhancement shaman, but uh, he's somehow absolutely blasting bosses. So bosses are just melting for last moment. So they should be fine on a timer. Could be a little bit close. We'll take a look at um, their timer in a second. They still have to do one trash pull, of course. Pulling um, one of the scorpions with the breakers and the trapper. And then they have to do the shadow priest uh, melt rescue tech. Shaman? No, shaman can only dispel Curse, right? Or can it do poison as it's well? It's just decurse. Yeah, yeah. Shaman yeah. can only decurse. Yeah. That's correct. Okay, I have the route. If we can pull it up on the broadcast. Do you see it? I can't see. I can't see what our, what our cast repeat has, Nagura. Uh, no, it's not up yet. I'll tell you when it's up. There we go. It's all right, up all right, now. All right. All right, all right, our producer doing a little bit of trolling. So it looks like they actually went and pulled a bunch of the mobs out of the caves, right? So they grabbed a bunch of these shapers. Um, they pulled pretty much everything oh. in the second area. There was there was a couple of packs that they skipped, but it looked like they grabbed pretty much everything because, like we were talking about er earlier, in that first area they skipped. I don't know, they three pulled this first area, mm -hmm. and then so they, they had a to make of caves, a which is something a lot of people don't know. Like between the first boss and the second boss, there's like caves and there's mobs inside that he can pull. Mm -hmm. Which is, I guess, uh, they did. But yeah, that's something you can do in live keys as well if you're missing some percentage here and there. Yeah, I mean, the the, ca the problem with the caves is like they have th these packs right here, like the Speaker Mystics and the like Hyenas and Hunters. It, so they can be a bit dangerous, but if the, the teams really know what's going on, they should be more than prepared to be able to do that kind of thing. How many, like, are they called Rot Speakers or Rot Texers? Are they pulling at the end? Oh goodness, I can hold on. Uh, go back and look. Give me one moment. Um looks like everything at the end. Okay. And so oh wow, they're grabbing pretty much everything except for the patrolling war scourge even. So they're they're oh, grabbing wow. this as like Yeah, I like this uh rot texture pull that they're doing the one is highlighted right now. Because there's yeah. um a cauldron there. And a cauld where is it right here? Yeah. It's like it's right, right in front of the cave entrance, I think. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you activate a cauldron with um, alchemy, 
and then everyone can just keep clicking on it and remove their debuff from the raw textures. In case you guys don't know how the raw textures work, they put a like a random disease on a person, and then they cast another spell. And if anyone has that disease while the other spell is going off, then you just take an insane amount of damage. It is survivable, uh, but on a high 45, it's for sure just going to one-shot you. But if you have this, uh, this cauldron, you can just keep clicking on it, keep using the extraction button and remove it. And then, of course, they also have the disease to spell from the paladin and the priest. So you only want to pull these raw taxers if you have enough diseases and you have enough coordination. Because otherwise, people are going to die for sure. It, it's it, I think that Brackenhide is one of the dungeons that it has probably the most route diversity um, that yeah. we're going to see across the whole entire weekend as to as to what teams are going to pull because like NA's last hope came out of the first area at thirty five percent enemy forces like we were talking about earlier and then they were skipping a lot of stuff in the in the second area so I, I think it, this is a dungeon that's uh, definitely a lot more free flowing in terms of what you're going to see teams pull yeah sure last moment on the bottom right now on uh, Dargul. And they're fine on the three chests. So if nothing goes wrong, they're for sure fine. Which is a really good sign for them. And did that means they immediately want to go back to do that, the 28 afterwards, right? Did NA's Last Hope uh, three chest or 25, or did they only end up two chesting it? That was something I did not see. Oh, um, I didn't see that either. I would, assume, I would assume they two chested. Looking at it, it looked like the three chest was going to be really tough. Oh, you um, are we talking about the freehold? Yeah, the freehold. Yeah. Okay, so they only two chests of the freehold. They were 27 okay. seconds over. Yeah. I, 27 seconds even, over. Yeah. Crazy. Even with that their pull so sizing, close. it was just. Uh, it's just. I mean, it's just hard to three chest that dungeon, I think, on a 25. That, that's the problem for like a team like that. Like, depending on the two chests and the three chest timer, if you're so good to do the dungeon, but barely don't make it. For the three chests, then it doesn't necessarily give you that much of an advantage, right? Sure, like, of course, okay. it saves you a little bit of time, but um, if another team <laughs> does the dungeon in 20 minutes, it's the same thing, right? So, and this well, happened twice. The 27. It happened in they're Academy and the, the Freehold. That is true. Like, it gives you an advantage in the higher, in the 27, yeah. Yeah. Might, oh, Cool Beans having some issues as Fem goes down on one of their pools. They might have to oh, reset this 10 minutes oh, in. Oh, no. Zats are going down too. In <sighs> Ooh, this seems oh. like a full reset. Oh yeah, it's my only gosh, the Shadow Priest yeah. alive here. It's only Fragments. He does die on purpose here. It's not Night Elf. Cannot Shadow Melt anything. Looks like they're going to keep going, but that's a bit worrisome, right? Because they do want to get the three chests, right? Or uh, we have three chests in the Brecken High 25, right? Uh... Wait, I'm trying to remember. Bracken High 25, I think, has only been oh, it's the two, two chests. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I think it's yeah, only been two chests. Yeah, because the two still, chest it's... timer is going to be easier even with a wipe here. Yeah. I, I don't think that. I mean, a lot of teams were close to the two chests. Yeah, yeah look, look at this. Look at the split timer that we have on the screen. The two chests on the Bracken High 25 were. The two chests on the Bracken High 25 wasn't that close, but the two chests on the Bracken High 27 was kind of close. I, guess, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Then, then, they have I think they can deaths. still do it. With this run back, I'm not sh ah, ooh, mm. This is really bad. If Cool Beans does not two-chest this, I, the timer. I think they get eliminated if they don't two-chest this. Timer's 28, right, for two chests? Yes, exactly 28 minutes. Okay, 28. And I still have to do Tree Mouth as well, right, in this whole area? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was a tough call, right? Because they're, they're technically only 11 minutes in, so they would have had the time to... Reset, do the 25 again, get the two chests easily, then do the 27, and then... Yeah, I don't know. So I don't if, they know tree mouth, if they can have Tree Mouth down by s about like 17.30, maybe like 18 minutes, and then have Gut Shot down by like 20 something, 20 minutes-ish, 20, 20, 30, I think that they can still do it. Um much higher than that, and I'm concerned with their ability to be able to two-chest the dungeon. So it I also think, I just lasted now, it seems. Possible. Okay. Hmm. Which well, they're gonna get... fine, I guess? I mean, they only get one get more one last more. anyway, yeah. But that's why I mean, like, it, they could have lasted something else, technically. 
Because at first, mm-hmm. what they did, it did seem insane. But maybe they were out of defensives. Maybe they were worried about Fem because he did just go down in the previous pool. That's why they wiped. And maybe he was didn't have too many defenses of it. Because these pools are actually really dangerous for a tank. Like some of these pools that you do in this area between first and second boss are actually doing an insane amount of tank damage. And um, I, I see that happen a lot. Tanks just flop because they're running out of cooldowns or uh, casts are not being interrupted and so on. So yeah, pretty dangerous. And with Sanguine as well, you constantly want to kite out of Sanguine. So you might want to, like, technically you want to kite to survive, but then you want to kite to make sure Sanguine doesn't heal. And it can mm-hmm. be a little bit dangerous for tanks for sure. Uh, dude, these these oaks are so unbelievably easy to heal to Sanguine too. Oh, it, it's so and, weird and look at Cool Beans. It's literally healing it. Oh my gosh, yeah, we just killed okay. the oak. <laughs> I don't understand how these mobs work because they cast, and then after the cast is done, they still don't move. They just stand there. It's yes. so weird. Well, and you're like yelling with... at them, move already, like, <laughs> <laughs> and they just don't. How they work in my groups is you're moving the mob, you kill any mob that's not the oak, Sanguine drops underneath them, they immediately plant and they start casting for 15 seconds. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happened, and the next thing you know, they're full health. Like this with. Get out of the Sanguine, man! It's just standing there! Please move! Oh, no. It's just bathing in it! Please get out! <laughs> oh, this is so unfortunate for Cool Beans because they need to make up so much time for that two chest. Because of that full wipe they had and okay. the extra deaths, they can, just pull it into the next kill tree mouse. I think can they, they have kill tree to. Mouse by 17 minutes. Can they kill yeah, by 17 I th- minutes? I, th- I think they can. I mean, yes. It's a 25. I think they can. Like, You don't want to chain these mobs into the boss, right? Because you have oak trees that need to be interrupted. Um, and then you have sanguine as well. But they have to hurry up somehow. Like, they have to do something. Wait. Last moment's play Prot Warrior. <laughs> oh. oh, they they finally I mean, swapped sense. to it. So, yeah, it makes sense. For, for those well, at home. That's it, though. They, yeah. Like, well, uh, it's not bad. So, I, I think that Prot Warrior, also, they had a death right now, but they can battle rest. So, I think that Prot Warrior up. makes the last boss easier. Because, yeah, the way it works is that you can spell reflect. I think it's the Molten Crash. Right? Like the tank the tank mechanic from the last yes. boss, you can spell reflect. And it does a lot of damage to the boss. So I think it makes the last boss easier, but I think it makes the rest of the dungeon slower. Because you're missing Mark of the Wild, first of all, which is actually a pretty big damage buff to everybody that uh, people, I think, underestimate a lot. Like 3% versatility makes everyone do more damage, um, mm-hmm. which I think is one of the best class buffs uh, there is. And then on top of that, of course, um, Guardian Druid being a little bit tankier, being able to do some of the bigger pulls uh, that maybe a Prod Warrior cannot do. So Pro- I Prod Warrior think... also can spell reflect the dust on Naraxxus and do insane damage yes. to that boss. Yes. Um, I, I mean, this is just a great spell reflect, spell reflect dungeon. The downside are the Hulks, for sure. Uh, the, the, the damage that is dealt to Prod Warrior from the Hulks, I... It's pretty scary. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. It starts to become in like, I need to bubble taunt this territory for if you're playing a Holy Paladin with a Prot Warrior. They need to, if they have a bunch of the Hulk's frontals going off on them, if they don't have Spell Reflect available for them, they're they're in grave peril. It's a good point that since they are playing the Enhancement Shaman, the AP Shout is not wasted completely, right? Because in the normal comp where you run a Mage, then the AP Shout is just completely wasted and you can't do anything with it. But uh, in this comp that last moment is running, at least Elbro is going to make use of the AP shot, so it's not like a complete waste of a class buff. But yeah, I, I still think versatility is better, like the Mark of the Wild is still better for them. So I personally think that for the rest of the dungeon it's worse than compared to the bosses, but honestly it doesn't matter. Like if, if it makes them, like if it makes it safer and they can do it, like why does it matter if they're not going to miss the two chests because of the warrior? And I think it's totally valid to play it to make the boss a little bit easier, or at least the last two bosses. Yeah, I mean, at the end of, at the end of the day, it comes down to is Bear going to speed up the key with things such as Mark of the Wild, or making the first pull of the dungeon easier, or you know, making making those breaker pulls? Like, what is what is the safety of the the Bear Druid look like versus how much damage you're gaining from that spell reflection on the warrior? The spell reflection on the warrior is insane damage 
Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I, I, I like that they're doing it. I like that they're trying it out. And we'll see how fast. They're going to kill the last boss so fast. They already killed it really quickly in a 22 and a 25. And Nana 28 is probably also just going to melt. They have so much single target damage with this com. Team uh, and then the spell reflect on top. Teams were talking about uh, taking in the Tyran. I mean, it's... No, Fem. F oh, okay, so no. So Fem going down for Cool Beans. That's not great. They killed Treemouth in 1802. Um, the three chest timer in the dungeon is 28 minutes. Now, if they can make up a decent amount of time on gut shot, I think that there's a chance that they're still able to two chest this key. Uh, they have 15 deaths currently on the board. Ugh. It's going to be tough, Nagura. I think it's possible, but I it's going to be so real as well. tough. They're, just, they're also having issues uh, skipping stink breath here because the patrol time was a bit bad. Yeah. And yeah, it's going to be very tough. I think. It's possible, but yeah, very, very close. And this is important for Cool Beans because they're one of the teams that are in danger of getting eliminated because, of course, we are nearing the end of today and uh, the team with the lowest amount of score is going to get eliminated. One of the three points on Cool Beans right now. If the two chests of the time this, they will get three extra points, though. They're up to 106. And there's some other teams that are also... Oh, Legendary actually are having some issues on the top right. As Eagle does go down on this gut shot pool there. They have a Every, rest, though. Everybody having issues, apparently. NA's Last Hope having seven deaths in their freehold. Oh, yeah. Looking like everybody's kind of having problems in some of their dungeons. Well, the thing with NA's Last Hope is that they... Huh. Is this one is that? Right. We... Hmm. Can they still two chest this? Uh, some teams have two chested it. Not all teams have two chested it. They they would really like to. <laughs> yeah, like I I'm not sure if they could two chested with seven deaths. deaths. Yeah. I mean, their route is really quick, but since the, the two chest on a twenty seven is a bit close, I'm, I'm a little bit worried. I mean, I'm not worried for them generally because obviously they're gonna make it to tomorrow at least. But uh, not two chesting this is gonna be a little bit of a downside for Nays last so But they played perfectly for the rest of the day, so if they miss this one two chest, that's going to be the end of the world, of course. Because they did get all of the two chests and three chests that any other team got so far. So they had a pretty perfect run today, very similar to Perplex in Group A last weekend. All right, so now looking around the board, we have uh, ready checks on the top right, still in Brackenite Hollow, um, having 104 points. Um, I think that the end of their day looks like they two chest this 25, and then they go and hopefully two chest the 27 Brackenite Hollow. I think that's the remainder of the time. Um, maybe they get a third key in if they're really mm -hmm. fast, but I don't think that they'll be able to get a third key in because. Uh, the 27s are like 26, 32 on top of, uh, you know, like a 20 minute, 22 minute, uh, 25. So I think, I think that they just have two Brackenides in their future to be able to push them all the way up to maybe 108, 108 points, which would be good for ready checks. I think that that puts them in a spot where if they don't have any mistakes, they should be safe at the end of the day here today. Yeah. yeah I think ready checks looking good so far. Ooh, dude. At least better than Cool Beans, because Cool Beans, um... Last moment had to reset their key. Oh no, oh no, they were in there. Now Flare, ooh, this is actually interesting now. That's because, bad. Uh, yeah, that is very bad for our last moment. Um, because as we said, there's only 32 minutes left. And they can do that, but that means they can only do this Now Flare and one more key. That's it. So... Yeah, they need gonna to time this Now Flare this run. Yeah, so if they time their Nail Flare now, they get three points up to 109. Okay. And then they can get another two points from something. If they time it, of course. Sure. So I think cool that they, need, they need cool to time beans. this I feel like their run is run. Uh, very important to watch. Can yeah. we get Cool Beans somewhere on the screen? Because they did just kill a gut shot. Do you oh, we could go down for Pixel there in the bottom left. The, I feel like they should reset. Losing your spree lost is bad. Yeah, yeah. I think that's not good. Okay, twenty one forty five. That's a bit over the twenty thirty that we budgeted for uh, the two chest timer here. I'm, <laughs> I'm very concerned now, Nagura, for yeah. Cool Beans in the bottom left. 
Say five minutes, right? The boss on a 25-45 will take around It's 28 three? flat. Yeah. Around three minutes for the last boss, I would say, no? Approximately. I would, I, I would, yeah, I think that you could be generous and give them 230, but yeah, something like that. I would say three minutes yeah. is reasonable. They have to kill the rest. Of, I mean, they have to pull some trash onto the boss, I think. Like, they have to risk it now. I think it's... What do you think? Is it important more for them bolts, to two right? chests? Wait a second. Is it important for them to two chests? Yes, I think I think they have to two chest this key and then do this dungeon on a 27. But, yeah, but wait. What if they just time this? They get the three points. And just then they do, go 29, like, the 29 melt melt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, the I guess. they want to fit in <laughs> another key, right? Like The problem is they yeah. don't want to just do one more dungeon. They want to do two more. Well, I think the 29 Neltharians is... Okay, the I think it's definitely right. doable, the 29 Nelth. It's I don't doable. think that should be it's... a big issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you know what? I but... think that that's the way to not get eliminated, is they do they finish the dungeon on a 25, and then they go to the 29 Neltharians, and then they'll have tiebreaker over pretty much all other teams if they time the, the 29 Nelths. Um... Or at least they force the other teams to also go Nelth. Okay. If they want to win the tiebreaker, the... right? Every other team has the possibility of going to a 30 Neltharians, assuming that they're two-chesting this 28. Yeah. <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I think they have time cool. to two-chest this anyway, right? Hopefully they, they have two-chest this. Now. Tw 28 minutes. Uh, they, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I think this fine. is doable. Yeah, yeah. They, I think they're fine. Oh, bailed Unless out. Unless they have issues. <gasps> I'm actually dropping really low there. Do not die. Do not <laughs> die. <laughs> they do have battle races. Which is weird because they have 15 deaths, but they have three battle rests available. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it, all is forgiven if we two chest this key. Now, do you think that they still have to go to that 29 Neltharians layer to avoid elimination today, or do you think they're okay to just do the 27? Because I think they're still just going to be playing down a point over all of the teams. Unless. I, I, so I think that they have to go to the 29 Neltharians layer, even still. Nigura. But what if. Okay. Like, I okay. think. For them to not get eliminated, they have to do two keys. Because there's 29 minutes left today. If they can mm -hmm. do the 27... Which dungeon do you think? It's probably Nelflare, right? I think they have to do Nelflare oh, wait. in less than, than like 25 minutes. And no, no, then they, they have to do the Brackenheit 27. Well, Brackenheit so Brack 20, 27 can be done in 26 minutes. 26.30. I s uh, well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it just depends what's faster. Like, which, whichever dungeon they think they can do quicker, okay. they have to do that. Uh, and then still do the, the other dungeon as well. Like, I think they have to do both. Okay, so Cool Beans has potentially two dungeons, but they have to be able to do this uh, next run of Brackenhide Hollow or Neltharian's Lair in, you know, like 20, 26 or so minutes. And But they also have to do the travel time. The menuing has to be insane. Yeah, they have to be super fast. Like, they have to <laughs> port out, go back, immediately start the key, and then do the same thing for the next dungeon. They're, they're in a precarious position. I think that they have definitely been in better spots to not get eliminated here, but I think that if, if, they, time, if they time the 27 and then they time the 29 Melt Slayer first shot, there is a decent, decent chance that they are safe on the day. Well, it might Ultimately, even make though, sense. Sorry, it might even make sense for them to do, like, another dungeon to just get one point. Like, obviously, okay. the Nelflare at the Breckenhide give them two points. Okay. But if they risk to only do one dungeon, then they only get two, and that's it, right? But if they do, let's say, a Freehold or an Academy, which only has a 30-minute timer and is much easier to do within a 25-minute window, then they get, like, three points rather than only two. Yeah, I don't know. Like, this is a tough decision for Cool Beans. I think they have to discuss this and <laughs> quickly discuss this. They're definitely <laughs> the team something. that's on the back foot. If they don't make any mistakes, I think they might be okay for Last Moment of Pixel, though. If, if either of those teams make any more mistakes, if Last Moment has to reset this Neltharian's Lair, that's not great. It's still possible that they're safe, but that's still not great for them. Uh, for mm -hmm. Pixel, they got a they got a hustle in this Brackenhide Hollow, but it's definitely doable within this timer, and they're able to uh, start another key. Oh no, ready checks tank on the bottom left, fell off the bridge. 
Well, thankfully, we do have what? a rip coming from the Shadow Priest. We rest. We <laughs> Getting them back up. All good. They can continue on their 25 run. Looking pretty good on the timer as well. They for sure can two chest this key. They have three deaths, but not too big of a problem. Well, Legendary Town Port. Oh, yeah. They two chested the 27. Recognize, yeah. Looking, okay. I mean, Legendary and NA's Last Hope, they're just insane, right? And Aegis Last both Hope safe. on the bottom left. Yeah, there are two chests yeah. in there. Three holds. Actually, no, they're not. I don't think they're two, chest two chesting this. They're missing it, I think. They're still in Shroud Fact. I... Ha. Well, they have all trash, right? Hmm. Okay, that's that's good. It's uh, tyrannical. They don't have Lust. It's tyrannical. They also only have three minutes to kill this boss and Harlan Sweet. I think yeah, it, I think this is doomed. Do that's not great for them, but I th but I don't think they're eliminated today. I think that that's unfortunate for them in the sense of uh, they there are teams that two chests of the twenty seven, so that's not great. But at the same point, they're not going to get eliminated today. They have enough time banked up just by like an excellent four and a half hours at the start of the day. Um, they're kind of chilling. Yeah, I wonder why they didn't reset. Because they're safe for today, right? So I wonder, like, I after know. they had this, the wipe or the deaths, I wonder why they didn't just reset and two chest it. Because they know they can do it, right? But oh well, I mean, it doesn't okay. necessarily matter that much. Anyways, uh, anyway. Negro, I'm getting pinged. Uh, yeah, apparently sorry. it's your I'm time leaving. to go. Okay, fine. I know. <laughs> I we, enjoyed we the Double Moonkin desk. We were having such a great time. <laughs> yeah. we, we got a bunch of pings, apparently. <laughs> fine. <laughs> All right, enjoy. Yeah, Thank unfortunately, you, it's time for Nagura to go. And even more unfortunately, it is not time for Tettles to go. <laughs> Luckily, Mix and I are here as well to help even things out as we get towards the end of our day. You know, that's the least we could do after a double Moon King cast. Yeah. <laughs> Even things out just a little bit. Things are going reasonably well here for most of our teams. It does look like Cool Beans and Ready Checks are the teams that are probably fighting for 6th and 5th place between the two of them. Is that fair to say, Tettles, you think? I... Th yeah, that that's... Uh, I, I, would, I would believe that. I think that there's also a chance... I think that Cool Beans was supposed to stay in the Brackenhide Hollow mm. and do that dungeon on 27 because we saw teams do that dungeon in 26 minutes. And so I think that could have meant that they were going to be able to get another key. But Cool Beans oh. having a tank death at the very beginning of Nelth's Slayer, okay, that's, that's fine. not that's what you want to see. So they um, definitely only have one more dungeon, which yes. means they are going to, if they time this, advance to 108 points with a 29 as their best key. A pretty good position, but ready checks are potentially going to be able to overtake that here, so a little bit worrying, maybe. Okay, how does... Okay, so ready checks gets plus three off of this 25, and then they go... Uh, so assuming they two chest to this key... Um, then they need okay. to go to any of their... Actually, they well, could the, just go do the 27, right? They and could that do, would go do the 27, and then they qualify, right? I'm, pr I'm pretty sure points. that Cool Beans is in a really bad spot. I agree. I think Cool Beans at this point are hoping for the downfall of ready checks or potentially last moment in their currently active keys. Last moment are about to put three points on the board with this 28 Nelt Slayer, which I believe would secure them through to tomorrow. Cool Beans just lost off the 25 Neltharian Slayer, right? I, I think that's what happened. Like that's, that's why they're even in this position, yeah? I mean, that's not good, but they're, they're still going to be... Like, they're still in danger, even even if they were well, one key level higher there, they'd still be in big danger here. Mm. Yeah, that's true. To be fair, it doesn't help them that they, like, restarted that Nil Slayer yeah. two times now. It's just... Uh, the time Wait. is getting less and less. If they had done the very first one, they could have started another one, and Did now it is going to be really tough. They'll just get to finish whatever they're doing now. Did they, uh, did they wipe to the first pull twice? Yeah, so the first time they apparently had an issue with the affixes. Might have might have made a wrong key, possibly. Oh, and made the second the wrong time key. they actually right. Yeah. Oh, I hate that they made the wrong key. That sucks. Yeah. So so how this works on the tournament realm is like uh, there's like a keystone vendor and there's like scrolls that you put on the specific key to like make it uh, the correct level and put the correct affixes on it. Sometimes you'll see teams make incorrect affixes. It happened to Direwolves last weekend. Sounds like it happened to Cool Beans this run. 
very bad. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it, it can happen while we're at it. Shout out to the teams that put Fortify and Tyrannical as first affix on their keys. Last moment in Pixel, are you going to get a, a imaginative minus point in my head for putting Fortify at the end there, as you can see in our overlay? Yeah, it's you know, not it's too like big of a deal to quarter. reset the first pull a couple times now for them, right? Like, they only have time for one run anyways, right? So, at this point, any run that has just started, they're not. no team is going to be able to get another one after that. There are 20 minutes left in our day, and again, the way our overtime rules work is that you can finish any run that you're in once we get past that hour mark but you can't start a new one. So down in the bottom left, NA's Last Hope are going to be able to start a new run after this freehold. Ready Check's going to be able to start a new run after their Brackenhide in the bottom right. But Last Moment and Pixel in the top two screens, they're going to be cutting it a little bit closer, and then Cool Beans are not, they're definitely not going to be able to have time to get another run going. Very unfortunate for them. We're going to see what other teams do, though, because even though if other teams might not fight for elimination here, or for not getting eliminated, though I think it's still kind of close, you want to set yourself up for the best situation tomorrow, right? So what is something you can do today with the time that is given that will give you a better head start tomorrow when you get a new dungeon? I think, I think some of these teams are actually in really good positions. Like last moment, if they're able to time this key, uh, they should be able to get another dungeon done with the overtime. I think it's about maximizing overtime, potentially, on today. Um, mm -hmm. That will really be able to even out like a lot of these other teams, because it feels like Legendary and uh, NA's Last Hope have had probably the best day one so far. But I think with like a good overtime period, that really allows teams like Pixel and Last Moment to kind of square things away with all the other teams. Yeah, and A's Last Hope at 109 points now are going to be able to get another two on their board if they can time a 29. So that'll bring them all the way up to 111, which is nice. Drad, I have a question. So we see Last Moment in the top right running Prot Warrior in here. So you're able to Spell Reflect Sunder, Spell Reflect Naraxxus's Dust, and Spell Reflect uh, Dark Rule Slam. How do you like... Like, do you think the Prot Warrior is faster? Uh... I think it's, so in this comp, I think it's probably closer than in the other comps because you have a Enhancement Shaman to buff with your Battle Shout instead of a Mage, so. Okay. Uh, that being said, I don't know, makes you, you were hearing from the teams mostly yeah. that this was, uh, this is not something you were expecting to see too much, right? Right, so we had the fortified Nelthar and Snare last weekend as well, and I talked to a lot of teams, and I'm like, you know, is there any, like, secret class we could see, especially with this meta, you know, you're like, eh, anything. And something that a lot of teams have been saying going into this weekend and into last weekend is, if there is a tyrannical Nelthar and Slayer, we are going to see that part worried because of the spell reflex, because but of how Tyran, scaling though. works. Hmm? With Tyran, yeah. Yeah, yeah so not so on they the all said yeah. only in the Tyran, which is also why we didn't see it on the Fortified Keys last weekend. Now, I do agree with Dratnos that I think in this comp specifically, there could be more reasons to argue for, oh, in the high Fortified, you could actually run it. We've seen how hard the Fortified bosses can hit and how long they take in the higher levels. And I think I checked it. So um, Elbro is also running Wind Fury Totem which is going to buff up your Prot Warrior. And in return, the Enhancement Shaman is also buffing your Shout. Oh. So it's like a little bit of interaction that goes on in there that I think might make it better than in other groups. Now, if that is enough to kind of outweigh whatever other groups have seen, I think it's in the hands of this team. OK, so bottom left, looks like NA's Last Hope, the last dungeon that they're oh. going to be doing today is Algathar Academy. Smacked DN, breaking 2.5 billion DPS on this first pull. Nice sure. casual <laughs> mage numbers. It's light, it's light work for a man of his caliber. Pretty impressive numbers there on this pull. I mean, there's a lot of extra mobs there for all that living bomb, uh, flame strike proc nonsense that those mages get up to. Junkrat's damage also not insignificant, cresting 1 million DPS there for a while, even on that nerfed Shadow Priest. <laughs> nerfed, by the way. Yeah, uh -huh. the single target even nerfed. better as well. Yeah. Pretty exciting uh, 
for NA's last hope as they get the trash done. With less than two minutes spent in their 29, they're going to be able to get the boss pulled soon. There are about 15 minutes left in our day, so they, they can afford to wipe a little bit early in this dungeon, but not for too long before the dungeon run becomes locked in. And the question is, how high can Tyrannical Algathar Academy actually be done? These bosses were never done this high last season. Of course, we were never as powerful as we are now, but this is, uh... There are some very, very scary bosses in here. This boss, in particular, does so much danger mm, to the whole pixel. group. Dude, we're having some stink breath uh -oh. dilemmas. Okay, Mass okay. Res comes out. Looks like Pixel's gonna be okay. We, we probably lost, you know, 20 seconds to that, though, which is unfortunate. Yeah, there's Maybe still 15 more? minutes left for them before they can start another dungeon, which they're on track for. Uh, they're okay. on track for the two chests even here. They need so to be two chests again. Fine. Yeah. Last moment in NA's last hope, we're both able to two chest this key. Yeah, and I think Pixel are well on, pay on that pace. Meanwhile, Legendary in the bottom right have been resetting on the Ooh. first boss here of Tyrannical 29 Freehold. I I like this. I like this as a use of like your, your last yeah. key of the day and like your overtime period because this is a, a dungeon that a lot of the difficulties front-loaded. First off, double enforcer pull on a 29. It's not a joke. Like It's a very dangerous pull. And then the first boss, like your ability to be able to get one shot by it is is very high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so spending, you know, five minutes to attempt to not get one shot by the first boss and the first double enforcer pull. I, I like the attempts there. I also really like where last moment is in like the overall time for today. They're pulling their Raxus now. Uh, obviously they're going to do the dominator pull and then the goal, but they will be able to do one more key after this, once they finish this dungeon and just finishing this dungeon is going to give them three points in the overall score, which is going to be super good. Yeah. So where do you think they go after this? If they have the 28? Um, I think they that they're 27 on every other dungeon. So they could I think go... their comp and their team is probably the best adept at going to Brackenhide Hollow. Mm. I think that that, that is a 29? team that... Yeah, 20, 29 Brackenhide. I think that that is a team that is not going to have as much issues killing totems, especially with running the Enhancement Shaman in there. And so I think that... Going to Brackenheim is probably their best bet. That's it's it's I think better than going twenty eight Algathar Academy. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, either way, they will be one safe of the with one hundred and nine, right? Good. Yeah, you start it's like yeah. what are you going to start with tomorrow? Right, one hundred percent. Chat is trolling, asking about the darker color mage. I see you, chat. <laughs> darker color mage. Yeah, for Elbro, uh, they keep saying that. I guess, yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the Druid as well. We've just we've just got a filter on the uh, on the comp up there. It's like if you squint, you know, you could pretend yeah. it's a mage. Look at the damage meters, by the way, for last moment in the top right. You can see Yant putting up a cool 137k. They, they didn't reset for the yeah. trash pull, man. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> do not tell the people that you're going to do 137 no, no, on the tell ball. Them. Tell them. Look, look. That's okay. okay look at the, he did look that at the damage. It's holding. It's not going down by much. It, uh, okay. Oh. He was at 150 when they pulled the boss. That's true. That that I, I cannot tell a lie. He was at 150 when they when they pulled the boss. So he's he's definitely going down. But not he's by going, much though. He's going look, less okay. down. He's done 41 mil. Okay. I don't know if we have reflect for this one. Let's see. Yeah, we do. Okay. Watch the watch the flat damage number. Ooh. Bang! 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 Look at that, another another 500k just comes out from that Reflect. A uh, mil? We're executing, that's, we're executing. We're executing. That's a lot of damage. Big damn, big damn. That's really valuable. <laughs> I love that. I love that you're like, oh my gosh, he's doing 150k. Like, okay, hold on. I mean, no, okay, I look. It's not like? 150k, but, you know, probably doing a solid 100k or something on this boss. 110, 100, 115. So Pretty good number. We do have a couple of teams that did the 28 already, right? Four out of the six teams have done the 28 in the Neltharian Slayer, and then Colbeans did a 27. I really want to see where we come out for last moment here. Like, are they able to two chest us? Because I think we might get really close. It, it <laughs> has been done by every yeah. team that has done the 28, right? They've all yeah. two chested it so far, but yeah, last moment don't have an awful lot of time here. They do have. They have enough time, but they don't have so, enough time to make a mistake. They, 
all of the teams that were able to two-chest it had around somewhere between 18 and 19 minute splits on Naraxis, though. Whereas Last Moment has a 20 minute split on Naraxis. No, Last Moment, I, b I believe, are going to time this key. Now, how powerful is the Prot Warrior on Dark Rule, I think, is the real question, right? How, how much value yeah. is the Spell Reflect going to add? Are we going to be able to skip, like, an entire ad? If we're able to skip an entire ad on this boss, that would be just massive. Yeah, we'll see if that ends up being possible. Of course, first they have to get through this nasty double breaker, double avalanche. One of those avalanches is going to take out their priest. That's going to require a battle res. Sleepwalk actually being cast no. there for some survivability, but it's not going to work control. out. The evoker oh, now down we don't as have well. Mind control. We don't have mind control, control mind. up. No, no, no. Yeah, it's control got, uh, so it. Our priest died, and it's a 30-second CD, so we've got to wait for the CD oh, to come back no. up. But now we have a dead paladin as well, followed by a dead shaman. Oh, Breath of Eons is going to be used key. here. They need it. So, they need it real bad. They can, I mean, the timer is still fine, but yeah. the, the two chest is now gone. Yeah, Which that's what I mean. Sad. Like, I was worried they'd just turn around and be like, nah, let's do it again. <laughs> but, well, okay, okay, we're moving. You yeah, could, I mean, they still actually have time to, to do another key after this, so they shouldn't do that, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah if they, I mean, if they wipe again in the next few minutes, then they should, probably. Ay, ay, ay. That was not a good. chain reaction. Yeah, not good at all. That is a really nasty pull. Claims its uh, victims there. Nine deaths now on the board for last moments. They were able to save one battle res, which is nice. They, they, it's going to be good to have that for the last boss. <laughs> In spirit, at least. Top, top left, I think Pixel are uh, going to two chest this 27 Brackenite Hollow. Uh, the timer on this is 28 minutes, and on a 27 Fortified, the last boss should only be like, probably like a four minute affair, if I had to really guess, at like the absolute worst case scenario. So they should be able to get this boss pulled. Uh, with enough time. Their counts are actually looking a bit more sus now that I'm looking at it a bit more, but I think they're still fine to two chest this. Yeah, there's a lot of cash in there. You think that's not going to be enough? Um. Oh, I, is this the last pull? I think it is, but. I think so. The worst card came in like really late. All right, dying off now. Two more mobs to go. Ugh, it doesn't look like it yeah, is. It I'm pretty sure there's they another need pull. To pull something in Wrath yeah, of yeah. yeah. The I trash so. at the end of this dungeon is deceptively low count. Even that's a, this that's a, is like, uh, there's a chance that this is going to be like 99.4 or something. Like these these mobs, you get like 10% total from the whole <laughs> end cave. It's it is nasty. That's what I was looking at. It's like five mobs for. I was like for 10%. I was just like, I don't know, maybe. But. <laughs> I'm not mad. Yeah, we'll see here. Though, so. I'm I'm registering my guess that this is going to be like three count short, like point 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 four percent short or something. Let's see. Is still the rot hex. That, that's my guess. That's my guess. We'll see. I don't think we're two chesting this anymore. Well, I the, thought we were, but I'm pretty in the top convinced left? that we're. Yeah. Yeah, in the top left. Okay. Yeah, I guess Wrath Eye does take a little while. They definitely. This, this definitely needs definitely to be is count. Enough. Is it enough? Is the question. There is a war scourge. Okay, I think war scourges are ten. I'm pretty so sure. So I think it's they're. Enough. I think they're good. Yeah. Okay. I, I well, the filth caller is the only mod that gives count here, right? Because the slashers don't. Huh. This mobs they're don't good. They're good. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Uh, do you kill this mob? Or no, do you kill last this boss moment. in two forty-eight? Uh oh! Last moment. I've had another death here, and they're not playing a druid, so they don't have a battle res aside from their paladin okay, who has okay. died. But the mobs are nearly dead. We can surely we don't die here. Control mine. Everything's dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got, we got this. No worries. Just some spitefuls, and we can rest him. All right. This pull is not in our favor with that prop warrior. It feels like it's just so much going on. Hmm. They it's still have enough I... time to finish and do one more key. So it, it's unfortunate because I think they could have two chested this. Yeah, I think so too. And they are now going to be setting up with not a no mage, so they have to use their priest with shadow meld to dodge the last dominator pull. And we will see this damage soon. The first molten crash is going to come out from Dargirl. Watch the damage here from Yant after this charge back so in. Here's the molten crash. Bang! 
There's there. Actually, was that even reflected? It looked like wall no. was used, so maybe not. It was not reflected. Uh, okay. One of the big things that actually this team is doing is they are not spawning the first char skin immediately on the first crystal because uh, the second crystal is delayed a little bit relative to when the char skin would come out of the CC. So you want to have it walk like two or three steps uh, to let it get stunned immediately, or as opposed to letting it get stunned immediately. Yeah, on Fortified, it's a little bit less of important tech than it is on Tyrannical, but on Tyrannical, that is really big for getting a lot of extra free damage and stun uptime on that uh, enemy. There goes another Reflect into the boss Look as well. Look at his damage, man. Oh, wait, he's actually owning. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. It is big value. Very nice on Tyrannical, especially. Okay. On Fortified, Top still pretty good value, though. Top left, they have to have this boss dead in 45 seconds? They have to uh -oh. get Wrath Eye to 5%. Elbro down for last moment. That's going to be Ankh used. Looks like they're still okay-ish. But yeah, like you said, Wrath Eye up in the top left. It's getting a little this. bit dangerous here. One of those casts Ooh. is going to go off. Destabilizers are being... Okay, they've, they've controlled the mind of the one that is not CC'd. So they're actually going to get the damage reduction onto the boss instead, helpfully. 23%. Do they have the damage for this? They have to they kill these have totems, to I think. They have one more totem. Yeah. 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 Probably two more here. totems need to be killed. Ay, ay, Unfortunate ay. for Pixel to not two-chest. It's still good to be able to get uh, get the dungeon timed. And the, one of the big crucial points is that they're able to go to another dungeon from here. So they're able to go and do something else um, with the overtime period and get a very, very generous overtime period because they only have five minutes until the end of the day. Yeah, that is some nice value for Pixel. Looking at their board, whatever dungeon they go to is going to be a high key as well. It's going to be a yes. 29 probably, or I guess potentially a 28 Freehold or Brackenhide, because they should be safe with this 109 points. Although, yeah, I guess they will, right? Because we, we know that Cool Beans are capping out at 108. So 109 here for Pixel is safe through to tomorrow. They could afford to go and do one of their one chests instead of a two chest if they wanted to. I think the only the I think the only team that saves cool beans right now is Ready Checks depleting this Brackenhide Hollow after the timer is over. Yes, yeah. Or last moments wiping here in the last moment of this no, boss fight. No, 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 I will not allow you to curse Let's them. See. They will finish this boss, 5% to go, one more time they get spikes, and they will kill it He did off. 130k. No oh, curses. I mean, yes, he, dude, I'm telling you. He was kind of owning. Wait a second. Dead. Oh, ah. elbow down. That's okay. He's, That's he's greeting so, so much during these magma waves. You uh, Eventually, you have to look at his POV during this. Well, he's just greeting it out. I don't think he's greeting. I think that his team is baiting poorly. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> Last yes. moment at 109 points as well. So only ready checks and cool beans aren't at 109. Ready checks are at 107 and will advance to 109 if they time this key. Which means that if they time this key, Cool Beans are eliminated whether or not they can finish their 29. Uh, that oh, they are dude, in right Inna's now. Last Hope is having an issue. They had the uh -oh. maybe the worst, top one worst incorporeal spawns ever. Like, the incorporeal spawned the moment Dorky was trying to group up this pack. And, and it forced the remaining members of NA's Last Hope to, like, run around to the side. I think they have to reset this key. I think they're resetting the key. That's fine. Oh, it looks like they're going to revive. Hang on. Yeah. Maybe they know that their timer is Omega Fine. Yeah. And they just like got to finish the key. They got giga griefed by Incorporeal. Yeah, it's going to be minus one minute or something from them. But maybe they think the timer is just super fine because of how big you can pull trash in here. Two minutes left until the final run of the day. So they have to make that decision soon if they want to start again or if they want to keep this run going. I Depends would... on how dangerous they think the, the stuff they've already done is and how safe they feel the timer is right now. So their boss two split is not bad. Like, other teams in the 27 put up boss two splits that were comparable to what NA's Last Hope has on Croth. Um, like, with that four... There was a team that put up... Ready Checks put up a 1459. Legendary put up a 1412. So I think that NA's Last Hope is in a really good position to be able to time this key if they pull off this this pull. What, what are they... Where are they stopping to pull? So they were lining. <laughs> they were lining on that little... Uh, little outcropping there and now they've got it all nice and grouped up this area is pretty easy for them mob. to line as well 
Yep. They've got it all. Oh my, can you not get lunged from up here? You can line around just by taking like one step to the left if you need to. So look at this, Smacked is gonna get it targeted on him and just walk uh -huh. a little bit to the left and easy. He invis, but yeah. Yeah, that works too. <laughs> Ooh, I, was I was thinking the small I was thinking the small foragers not being able to lunge you. Top right are getting some like, difficulties and you yeah, you might be right. I see the small foragers. The small foragers aren't, aren't lunging them. Okay. Everybody's up here and it's only going on dorky. That's so sick. Ah, nifty. Yeah, the dor the dorky pull. That's pretty cool. That is good. It's good tech. So legendary up in the top right, you can see a crusher is in combat with them. That is not normally. We try and avoid those for the most part in these runs. They actually lost a couple of deaths to this as well. They are going to be able to still get on Trothak here, but one wonders how safe their timer is, is now in this 29. They could restart the key right now if they wanted to, but they are running low on time to make that call. Every team only has a few seconds left uh -oh. to be in their final run of the day. It looks like they are probably now finalized, although we will get the final word from the admins when that is the case. Of course. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be too far away. Maybe they're just waiting for whatever last moment is phasing in to oh. call in for all of them to be finished. One more death for last hope here to get them back up. But I mean, six deaths and they're just chilling in that 29. I respect it. Yeah, they think their timer is, is good. And if that is true, I think this dungeon has serious the plus pack? 31 potential. <laughs> mm. that's, so, that's what I'll say. So on this pull right here, they're triple pulling the Vex platform, which is so dangerous. You have to line up your CC chain perfectly, and they're even utilizing things such as Bull Rush. Yeah. <laughs> Never before seen technology <laughs> coming out of the High Mountain Torrent. That's a big move. Bull Rush is underrated, I'm telling you. My bear's been a, been a bull for ages. All right, so I that like is it. it. These runs are, it looks like, all the final ones now. The middle two that you can see there for Pixel and Last Moment are the ones that have just started. All of the other ones are midway through or most of the way through their runs. Looks like Cool Beans up in the top right will probably be the ones to finish their run first, now over in the top left. Again, the end of our day here, we are eliminating our lowest score team, which will either be Cool Beans in the top left or Ready Checks in the bottom right. If either or both, if neither or both teams time their key, then Cool Beans gets eliminated. But if Cool Beans can time their key and Ready Check deplete theirs, uh, then instead it'll be Ready Checks who are eliminated. What do you think about last moment going to Neltharian's Lair 29? I, I thought the same thing. So in one way it does make sense because that is the two chase they just lost and they're kind of making up for it in their bonus time, right? So I like it from that angle. But also, ideally, you would have just liked to have that dungeon in the first place and use that time for something like the Brackenheit. But I think from like a mental game perspective, I really like doing that in Elslayer and trying to get that done. Naraxxus goes down for the beans in the top left. Drenako gets, <laughs> gets into the, uh, the bonus achievement treasure chest cavity there before getting all the way down to the bottom. And they are on the move here. Dronico on the way to the Dominator pull here. Now we did see this pull prove some difficulty or last moment in the key that they just finished. Let's see how it does for the beans. They really need to finish this and still hope that Ready Checks does not. So any mistakes here could come at a high price. Yeah, impressive for Cool Beans that they're able to put together this 29 as cleanly as they have been. Unfortunately for them, the rest of their keys have been pretty rough today compared to the other teams, which is leaving them without a 28 on the board. Uh, so far, so this is I'm, it's uh, going to be rough for them. They they need a depletion from ready checks to stay in this tournament. I'm a bit worried about legendary's timer, by the way, in this freehold. Okay, I am so, also and, worried. And just look at their count. Look at their count. Right, you you normally oh. want like ten minutes coming off a of trothak. That's like that's what you really want. 
I, I don't think you need that much, but... Uh, yeah. Nine? <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I mean, what do they have to do, right? They have one kind of big trash pull, and then the boss plus trash Bloss, at the end. Boss plus trash and one big trash pull, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, how, how long is boss plus trash on a 29 tyrannical? Probably like four and a half? Five, maybe five, five minutes? I was thinking five, five and a yeah. half, maybe. So, and then you got two minutes for the trash pull. You know, it kind of works out, like six, okay, seven, eight maybe. minutes. maybe, we'll see. We'll see. Be, it is going to be close. I mean, they have a lot of travel time, too, is the thing, That's right? true. That's yeah, very true. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough. I think that I think that legendary might be dead, but I think they if they're dead, they're dead because of their their deaths. They're not dead because of uh, uh, necessarily anything else. I think that they yeah. can come back tomorrow and do that dungeon on twenty nine again and be able to time it. All right. All right. The ready checks in the bottom right are also in a very important keystone there with the 27 Brackenhide. They need to time it, and they would like to two-chest it. That's where they're at right now. So, gut shot, two-chest looking is about like a 20 minutes. Like, if, if you kill gut shot around the 20-minute mark, uh, it's two-chestable if yeah, you play really yeah. aggressive at the end. Yeah, they have 74% count, which is a bit less than we've seen some teams have here, but it's still enough. I'm, I'm a bit worried about their ability to be able to chest it, but it's possible. I think if they play like really aggressive at the end here, they can two-chest it. To be safe for the rest of the day, they need to just time it, though. I think that that's Yeah, a I was going to say, would you like them to play super aggressive? Because I'd rather it be just play um, safe and make sure they move on. Because if they play like really play... aggressive and something goes wrong... I would like them to play whatever they're comfortable with at this point, but I think that two chesting it would be quite. I think I think not two chesting that is not great for tomorrow. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily an issue right now today, but it might be an issue going into tomorrow. All right, up in the top left, Doctor J pulls those scorpions off to the side, hits the invis, mission accomplished, gets the uh, life grip back over to the group as well. And they are now starting on dark roll. Five minutes for this boss should be more than enough, even though it's a 29 key, because it is fortified instead of tyrannical. So Cool Beans just have to execute here, and they will at least give themselves the opportunity to win oh. if ready checks do have a disaster. Okay, so Dratnos, it's just Harlan that legendary need, and they have 450-ish okay. for it. It's, uh. it's doable. Oh, okay, oh. it's less doable. It's a lot less oh. doable. <laughs> oh, this is a no. oh, this is a tragedy wow. for legendary. That oh. is depleto for sure. Oh my god, we just depleted the body pulling the trash. Yeah, so off. that that pack gets mind soothed, but the wait, dogs wait, wait. can't be mind soothed. So very often people will see the mind soothe and go a little bit too close to the dogs and end up pulling that pack. They are still going to try it because nothing else to do with their time, but uh, it is my belief that this is cursed. There's no way to kill tyrannical 29 Harlan Sweep in sub four minutes. We were budgeting yeah. five minutes just for like the boss. Yeah, like, I don't know. four thirty, and we could have a conversation. Four, I there's it's mathematically impossible, even with bloodlust. There's no way that legendary can do just that much damage. Surely they have Doctor Tobo Fish. They do the have Doctor Tobo Fish. <laughs> Few know this, but he named himself after Fishface, of course. <laughs> no, no, he did not. <laughs> you can't. That, it could well be true. It could. Yeah, you don't know. Mm -hmm. See, where did you can uh, the where did NA's last hope go? I saw they were they had just killed Overgrown Ancient last time we saw them, and they were walking up the stairs. They were looking okay on their timer. I think yeah, they were sure. just pulling all of the uh, mobs that are basically upstairs, right? Anything that you pull before Echo of Doragosa, just one big dorky pull and off you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool beans now, 50% on the boss. Timer! A little suspect for them, actually. They've, they're sitting on their lust, though, which is going to send the boss home here. So th I think they're fine. I think this 29 Nelt Slayer is going to be successful I for them. I think they're going to still be sent to him almost regardless, yeah. Well, so it's going to go, it's going to throw it back over to ready checks. So at least they'll have a chance for ready checks to have a catastrophe, uh, which we we'll have to check in to see how ready checks are doing at some point soon as well to 
to see because that is the the matchup for the end of our day here is cool beans versus ready check so ready checks in the bottom right 12 minutes left in their key zero deaths they're nearly done with it and if ready checks can finish this key let alone two chest it they are eliminating cool beans for sure so yeah i agree with you it looks like cool beans here credit to them they're going to be the first team of our weekend to put a 29 on the board if i'm not mistaken uh, but it is not going to be enough to keep them alive. They are they are going to be eliminated by ready checks with this run, I believe. NA's Last Hope also putting a 29 on the board soon here in the bottom left. Four minutes left, 66% on Echo of Doragosa. They just have to survive this boss fight, and uh, and they'll be good here. Yeah, one more Restorer that they're currently controlling that they also need to finish off. But that shouldn't pose any problems. Then they'll have that key done. Pixel actually making the most out of this. I really like this. They're going to spend so much time in this Brackenheit here because of when <laughs> they started it. It's just min-maxing the given time. I like it. Oh, oh, they got the money Brackenheit. Like uh, I, I think that how Pixel is, uh, yeah, like you're saying, maximizing their their end of day time. That really sets them up in a good position for tomorrow. I think uh, last moment as well. They have four deaths in their Neltharian's Lair. However. If they time this dungeon on a 29, I think that sets them up really well going into tomorrow. Uh, but, like, they need to time it. I don't, like, I think that they can't really afford too many more mistakes in the 29. Can we get ready checks instead of pixel? Is that possible? I don't know. If, I don't know if the technology is available. That would be ideal, I think, for us, though. Oh, wow, yeah, we, we do need to see, because ready checks are probably going to be... Ready checks could probably even wipe in their run and still get through. Meanwhile, up in the top right, Legendary are just about to push Harlan Sweet sub 30% here. That is the double damage, but look at their timer. It's not going to be enough. Legendary are not going to be able to add to their score here. They're going to be stuck at 109, a disappointing end of the day for them after a pretty solid start to the day. They, they look really good coming into today it looked like they had they were really building momentum off of their like mdi performance and they just had honestly a spectacular first day nothing to be upset about yeah uh on the other hand though na's last hope if they can finish off this echo of doragosa they are going to be getting up to 111 points ready checks in the bottom left are working on the decatriarch here they care about getting a two chest here that would be good so 28 minutes for that two chest is what they're aiming for but as long as they can at least finish by 35 minutes, they stay alive till tomorrow, which if they somehow fail to do that, they will get eliminated. What time, okay, what timer on my split sheet do you want to put off for Legendary? Because Lapan just died. 30.45? Uh... Huh? Lapan died at the end? I mean, okay, they, yeah. intentionally, they intentionally wiped it, right? I just want to put a time so we can... Yeah, sure, 30.45. That's not, that's 30, 45, not right, I'm good for that. All yeah. right. <laughs> She needs something for splits. All right. Ooh, in his, go in his last hope. Gonna yep, go down. We're killing that off. Danger. Danger is also in there. Yeah. See a little bit of targeting. Shackle. Make sure so, it's not doing too much. 30 is doable. We had a full wipe and lost, you know, probably two minutes to that. 31 less doable, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I think 31 is, is going to be doable here in, in Algothar Academy, or at least it's going to be something that might get attempted in the same way that Azure Ooh, Vault was wipe. really oh, hard. No. But Okay, last moment. A wipe in their 29 Nelth Slayer to Ularog. Okay, so they're dead. They are depleted at this point, I think, with 10 deaths. It's going to be close, actually. I mean, maybe you could still time this. They're no, going to keep going, of course, because you may man. as well. Uh, okay. Okay, the split coming off of Ularog that you need is like 17 minutes, probably. Probably like 18 something, like really. Yeah, but if you, may as well, you may as well keep going. You, you, it's, you're, there's enough of the dungeon left ahead of you that you don't want to spend the brain power thinking about if you're depleted because you're already in overtime, right? So there's just not much benefit to harping out. Just keep going until it becomes like 100% clear that it's over. You can also just yeah. practice a little bit too, right? Yeah, we, exactly. The, you're not allowed to practice on Tournament Realm after the day is over. But you are allowed to practice until your key is depleted. Once your key is depleted, we actually hearth you out if, uh, <laughs> during overtime to avoid teams just staying in forever to get that practice. But it was the only uh, time Pelter the only time teams were ever them. practicing was like junkyard, right? Yeah, there's there's been. I mean, it's it's not usually a um, something that that comes up. 
Yeah. So what they do is they pull this boss into the trash pack that you can see in the bottom right for last moment. And they had a lot of like chain yeah. cast onto the team, like Avalanche, Jack Disc, that... Avalanche, Jack Disc. Wait, they pulled the double pelts? Is that intentional? I... Or did they pull it by accident? Because See, I'm trying to pull... figure that out. That pull does not get pulled intentionally in groups that I've seen, at least. That would be yeah, incredibly aggressive on Yeah, I think it was an accident, Fortified. and they tried to resolve it. Mm. We'll see. Maybe they have some weird tech. That pack by itself is suicide. I don't feel like there's two way to win. Yeah, <laughs> usually like we see teams just mind soothe it if there's a nearby statue and avoid it. Ready checks do get their 27 Brackenhide finished. Unfortunately for them, it is just a one chest, not a two chest. They're 48 seconds shy of that two chest timer. But unfortunately for Cool Beans, that does mean that they now have no pathway to 109 points. And they have been eliminated here at the end of our day. A salute to I Cool Beans. Say, for ready checks going into tomorrow, I don't love that they one chested that key. Just looking at the uh Just looking at the like the one chest on the 27 freehold and the one chest on the 27 bracken hide, it's not ideal. The two chests on the 28 now flared. Pretty good though. I, I yeah. think that overall, Ready Checks had a, had a really solid day one. Not too much you can complain about. And dude, this group is stupid competitive. <laughs> every every team, it really feels like uh, probably could be top two if if they have like a different day one where just like a be they play slightly better, uh, slightly more optimal in one way or the other. Yeah, I agree. I think that's kind of what I was thinking going into this group as well. That it could be anybody's group, which rarely happens with events like these. Usually we go in and we're like, oh yeah, the top two seeds, they're pretty much guaranteed. But we're going to see if maybe someone surprises us. I think this group, Group B, just full of teams where no matter who came out on top or comes out on top, I wouldn't be surprised by it. So Pixel, uh, I think if they time this key, they're going to be in second place coming out of the end of the day today. With Yeah, uh, they will. They are going to be 110. 110 points. This is our last, like, realistic key of the day because last moment are, we believe, probably Depletos. Uh, yeah. So it is going to come down to this Brackenide 28 pixel are going to get get the most value out of our overtime rule here. And yeah, this this would let them overtake Legendary uh, with a, a time here. That would be pretty nice. Kind of puts them in a... So they would be one point over Legendary, but they'd actually be sort of one potential point under due to two chests. But still, really good spot for Pixel to get to. Meanwhile, you can see last moment here, they're going to be putting up a 20-minute Ularog split, which leaves them 13 minutes for the end of the dungeon. Now, there's two trash pulls, that they, or three trash pulls that they need to do in the dungeon, and two bosses, which they'd have 13 minutes to split between. It's going to be sketchy. Uh-oh! There's an evoker down in the slimes uh, below the bridge there. Does have to get a mass res. That's not where evokers are supposed to go. It's fine. All good. Meanwhile, okay. Ulrog is getting eliminated here. <sighs> I think 20 minutes is dead. I think you need this guy dead at like 18. Well, how long do you need for each of the... So you've got three trash bulls and two bosses. Yeah. The bosses are what? Four... Four and a half each? Something like that? So that's nine minutes between bosses, maybe? Mm, that leaves okay. you four minutes for three trash pulls? Yeah, I mean, I don't love it. I'm not I'm not trying to say that I love this timer, but I do think that they're within... Oh, my goodness gracious. Lay on hand sack. Lands on Yant there. Nearly just disappearing on it this pull. Like Yant this was is... maybe lagging. He was he was like standing in place for a second. He he weird. certainly got auto attacked by all the Nashers. That's what happens when your health does that <laughs> on these days. Well, yeah. <laughs> and it, so he's actually sitting here without a wall charge for a little bit as well. Once he can get back to that, I think he's gonna probably press it and be fine. But yeah, okay. It, it looks like it looks like he's okay. He's he's now got some defensives available if he needs them. Warrior very solid once the the pull is kind of going. He's got his things working. Is gonna throw that wall charge in. Shoots out an avalanche. 
the rest of the oh, room is taking so yeah. much damage. There's you know, a just looking here. at the party frame, I'm not so worried about Jan anymore, but about the rest. Jan, now finally also dropping due to all of this extra damage coming in here. But the Nashers are dropping slowly. Should be dying off here. Shaper is going to go down first and the rest will follow. And I'm actually so impressed how well they're handling this giant pole. We've even seen like some of the druids go down to it. We're getting, uh, we're also getting griefed by having this many melee. Yeah, it's a, uh, we're getting there a lot are of several mechanics. melee. Right, exactly. Yeah. So Avalanche will prefer to target three ranged players. And yes. by that, it, it doesn't look at their spec. It looks at, at if they're at range. But mm -hmm. in this comp, there's going to be at least, uh, you know, you have three players that want to be in melee, right? You have your tank, your enhanced shaman, and your paladin. So maybe what you want to do is you want to have your paladin run out to bait at range so that your melee don't have to worry about it. But, ooh! The other option is to just sacrifice your shaman. That's another viable <laughs> that's maneuver. Not, that's, that's, what I'm with. that's not viable. That's not viable. <laughs> it looks hey, it's working out for them. Yeah. Non viable strat. Meanwhile, Pixel working their way through the Brackenhide. 20 minutes and uh, 45 seconds have been used. So the two chest does not seem especially feasible here. And that, that makes sense given they already won chest of the 27. But the timer is omega fine, as they say for this one. They are uh, they are doing really well with this run. It is a nice and clean one. Ten minutes left on the clock for last moment in this Bracken High or in this Nelf Slayer twenty nine. Mm -hmm. This is going to be, I think, about a minute and a half short of the timer, which, given the eleven deaths, is impressively close. But I don't quite think they can get it from oh, this. Oh, that wipe was catastrophic. Yeah. <laughs> that that wipe was. was so bad. We'll see. I mean, I, you know, they have... So this is the reason you play the Prot Warrior is these two bosses at the end of the dungeon. So maybe That's they can true. make up some time on them. We can't count them out just yet. Uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's, I mean, the higher is, it goes, the more damage the Warrior is also going to do with the Reflex, right? Because of scaling. So That's true, yeah. It, it does, does the same percent. With it. As we're going up. So I mean, cool. Cool Beans finished uh, the dungeon at what, like thirty-two thirty, and uh, they killed off Naraxus at twenty-four sixteen. They didn't so have like a prot word. Thirty this is seconds true. before so, this. In the twenty-eight, MDI champion and uh, analyst Sarah has estimated about twenty million spell reflect damage has been done in their twenty-eight. So in the 29, that's going to be even a little bit higher due to scaling. Ooh, the final boss. they just let the first devout get eaten there by Naraxxus. That's going to be a little bit dangerous. Wait a second. Uh... Is that going to scale up the reflect damage, actually? Hang on. No, no, no. The, 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 no. Because the only thing that does that scales with the rage on the boss is the boss's melees. Okay, it doesn't increase the poison damage? I don't know why. No, it doesn't increase the poison damage. <laughs> okay. That's probably an oopsie. That's a shame. It's been that like that since Legion. It's always that been like be, that. That could be. A, I'm just saying, if it worked that way, that would be. That could be good tech. Let it go That's off not good and slam or reflect. I like here's that the, you here's thought the that. Way, here's the way yeah, that you know that good. it doesn't scale the poison damage because the circles would one shot your ranged. Or one -shot well, those your aren't poison. That's a different. Those are different uh, effects, right? Uh, no, the wretch is attached to the circle. Is it? No, no. There's there's the oh, rancid maw, maw and the toxic okay. wretch. Those are two different abilities. Anyway. The, the, the enrage is only affects melees for whatever okay. reason, even though it reads on the tooltip that it, does, it affects everything. I, I believe you. I believe you. I'm just saying, you know, it, it would be cool. It would I be agree. something. <laughs> I like it. And hey, if you're playing... No, no, that one has to go through. We spell oh. effect, you know. Oh, Loquan going down. Okay, it's that's okay, fine. We'll another devout, devout get eaten. <gasps> All good. Oh, another I'm one. I'm so scared right now. <laughs> we can stop. Uh, well, <laughs> how many stacks does our take at one shot? Uh, so each auto that it appears to be taking about 60% of his health right now. So two another more? two stacks and it's over. That Shadow Priest is fighting for his life. I'm just telling oh, you. Oh, yeah. Th that is, that is rough. <laughs> yeah, each Holy. of those uh, rocks is doing a lot of damage. Whenever they land, on, especially on those uh, squishy members of the group. Preventive desperate prayer going out here, making sure you take as little damage as possible. Yeah, this aye, is one aye, of those aye. fights like uh, like Skycap and Crag, where you just kind of have to press your defensives randomly and hope that they cover some of the damage events that are going to hit you, because you can't really see when they're landing on you. Another devout here is getting in range of the boss. 
Is I'm it gonna die people. in time? Please. Nope. <laughs> Naraxxus is getting another tasty treat here. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pixel are about to go in here, but I, I think our tank might be getting one shot soon for last moment. Yeah, I think so. Honestly, each auto I'm tremendously worried about for them. To be fair, the boss is also dropping, so that yeah, maybe they so can kill the, the boss. The boss is going to enrage now. It's oh, frenzying. Oh, oh. oh, elbow down. Okay, now Yant is not full health Tough here. One for the team. Sends the rally. Oh my God! Mm. Each of these autos, their shield wall, shield 10%. wall, and rally going ten percent on the boss. Can Yant survive? Each of these auto attacks is doing so much. He's at two health. Will anybody heal him? It's a mystery. Another wall charge is being committed here. Priest down, Shaman down. Ankh is used, Battle Res is used, but we are now out of stuff. Shaman oh. down again. Yon no. trying to live. And the no. tank is down, and last moment is down. 4% on the boss. Three consumed devout worm speakers. It's going to be three too many for last moment. They are going to have to hearth out of there with a 109 to end their day. Not a bad score, but now that leaves the opportunity to Pixel to potentially put up a 110 and move into second place in our scoreboard. To be honest, I did appreciate that they kept going after that Ola Rock wipe. I thought yeah. that was already game over and they just kept it going. Uh, I am a little bit worried for them tomorrow, though, if this is how, how their damage on the ads is looking. Well, <laughs> well, they may have made a call of just, like, our timer is super bad. Okay, Let's yeah, commit maybe. boss more That's and true. hope they get cleaved down and die just before they get consumed. Mm. You, don't need uh, to, you don't need to hit the ads if you drop the Yeah, the so they were dropping properly. their puddles just... further forward than I would have liked, because they, they didn't yeah. get very much travel time onto those ads, so that might be something they could change, is, is their puddle drop positioning a little bit further back uh, along the, the paths that those mobs walk uh, could be very big for them to get some extra free damage. True. Sure. We'll see. All right. I'm sure they're going to revisit for tomorrow. Of course, the Nalthaeran Slayer was one of the dungeons they didn't know was going to come. So I expect lots of teams to kind of go back and look at VODs and compare and see what they can do better. But Pixel, definitely the team that has made the most out of the overtime here with their Brackenheit run in the 28. But eventually, they also have the full count together and are on their way to the final boss, to the Kate Tree arc. I will say, I think the teams are going to be most in the lab in the Freehold, looking at the route that NA's Last Hope did in that dungeon. I, I think that Freehold and Alg Academy are, the, are probably the dungeons that teams can probably write down some tech and be like, oh, wait, hold on, I should probably be doing that in my dungeon. Hmm. All right, so it's all going to come down to Decatriarch Rathai for Pixel here. They have seven minutes for this, which is uh, a solid amount more than they'll need. Although they don't have time to, like, wipe and run back uh, unless they died, like, right now. The hard part of this don't fight is killing it. these totems before they explode. Especially with this comp, you often are a little bit light on, on quick swap damage. Looks like Maskin, though, had the... Uh, had a combustion rolling for that one, which made it rather easy for them to uh, to eliminate this thing pretty quickly. As they get to those later ones, you're going to start seeing Velo and Lamike using their Beacon to the Beyonds to help delete them. How many how many uh, beacons do they have on right now? Let me let me pull up our inspect. Yeah, we can tool. use our new uh, extension. If you're watching on Twitch, we have a yeah. extension that you can use to investigate those sorts of things. Or in my case, okay. you can wait for Tettles so to go and find out. Their Aug Evoker is running it, so they have three. Nice. That, that is the adaptation I was expecting to see in Hierarchies, was for the Evoker to start putting it on for a little bit of extra value. Mm -hmm. Evokers would rather not be running the, the beacon, but they don't mind wearing it, and it's not as painful for them to put it on as it is for the Mage or the Priest. Uh, and the Tank and the Healer already kind of just want to be wearing it if they can, but uh, the Evoker, yeah, is definitely the third person to put it on. Pretty cool to see. They got this Incorporeal taken care of. The boss damage is slowing down a little so, bit here, but they're getting back to their next two minutes soon, so if they can kill this totem, the next one should die pretty much for free. I have an inquiry. Would you ever expect mm -hmm. to see a team, instead of playing a Fire Mage in here, swapped to Frost once you get to, like, 30? The Sanguine? <laughs> That's a good point. Frost Mage against <laughs> well, Sanguine is not nah. a combo. <laughs> well, if I... <laughs> 
What about killing the totems? It is good for killing the totems. I feel like at that point, you might just consider something like a Destro Lock uh, for the whole thing. Although, Destro Lock against Sanguine is also a catastrophe, so maybe that's not... Maybe that's not it. I don't know how no, no, no. It's familiar you are with those blasphemy studs. It's, yeah, bla it's a blasphemy, well, not a it's, catastrophe. It's not good. <laughs> it is not good. That You're is you just hear your Destralock say, oops, and then like 10 mobs get stunned in a Sanguine Puddle a second later. It, uh, on live, um, okay, so so something that something that's a rule that we have in TGP that's not consistent with live is like on live, you would have a lot of mages like, you know, zoning out and swapping and going frost uh, for like the last boss or like the last mm -hmm. area of the Katriarch Wrath Eye just, just for the totem damage. However, teams are not allowed to zone out in TGP. And so that means that you have to, if you're playing the dungeon as frost, you have to play the whole thing as, or if you're playing oh. the dungeon as fire, you have to play the whole thing as fire. Yeah. Totem goes and off. A we are in danger off. now. Not great, but boss is like 20% HP. That's so we're true. Probably okay. When one, to like 20% is not high enough to commit boss here, they're going to have to kill the next two totems probably. And they have this big dot now, so now their healer can't be doing damage uh, as easily. And the group is also yeah. doing less damage as a result Come of this on, they debuff. They can do this. They can do this. The easy, first easy, one easy. goes down easily, but now their combustion is gone. Are they going to get back to another Sun King's blessing? Dude, Lamike beaconed that that ad that we uh, had go off. Also, we have four battle reses available on the side of Pixel. That's true. So something catastrophic, I think, could happen here, and Lamike would just be able to res us all. That's true. They are able they to kill that totem. One. With that rotting burst, they are going to be clearing their stacks as well. And from here, they can just commit to the boss because this boss dies at around 5% as well. So they are just tunneling boss, kicking one of those incorporeals even. They don't need to worry about it finishing its cast now because it is dead. The dungeon is over. Pixel will be moving into second place on our leaderboard with an impressive one-shot of this 28 Brackenite hollow. Good. Uh, it it's really it's really good to set them up like that for tomorrow too because uh, other teams last moment na's last hope two chested the 27 so it's like um a pretty big deal even legendary two chesting the 27 so it's like a pretty big deal that teams are able to actually get that dungeon two chested whereas for pixel since they only you know one chest of the 27 being able to utilize and time the 28 with like an insane amount of 30 minutes of overtime <laughs> being able to one chest that that's great for them that's huge yeah they're now kind of tied ish with the the people that got those two chests you know comparing their scorecard to na's last hope it's pretty much the same except they haven't done that 29 algathar yet so maybe I, 30 minutes behind uh, na's last hope which is not far behind the first place team for pixel uh, and legendary there are about equally far behind i would say so really i, I would describe pixel and legendary as pretty much tied ish for second uh, given this scorecard, and then ready checks in last moment with those one chests on both of their boards mm -hmm. are in a little bit more. They're maybe an hour behind NA's last hope instead of thirty minutes. I think that I uh, legendary that... has more unrealized yeah. two chests. That's though, true, right? You yeah, so they, they they're maybe ahead of Pixel still a little bit. Um, Compared to, and you know, one advantage that Legendary has against both NA's Last Hope and Pixel is that freehold two chest 27. That, yeah. that is, if they can do a 29 freehold cleanly, that's good news for them. The problem for Legendary is they just depleted a 29 freehold. So we yeah, have solid evidence that they can't just go in there and one shot it because they didn't. So uh, they mm. need to clean that up for their next attempt. If they spend more than one attempt in a, in a 29 freehold tomorrow, uh, that is very bad news for Legendary. Oh, cool beans. Unfortunate. Unfortunate end of the weekend. Look at that. They had the the highest key with a 29 Nelf Slayer. Yeah, they were the first to finish a 29 as well. And NA's Last Hope did one afterwards, but that is uh, unfortunate for cool beans. It was great to see them in the competition. I hope we get to see them again, but they are indeed eliminated, which means we will be coming back tomorrow and revealing a new dungeon at level 23 for these teams to fight on with a new set of affixes for? as well. What am I hoping for? Hmm. Yeah. I know what uh, I want. What do you, okay, what do what you, you want? want? 23. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Bolstering. You're going to get that? Bolstering. Yeah. Tyrannical Uldamon. Okay. That's kind of nasty, but I, I respect is there, the is there a bolstering? Is there a bolstering Tyrannical? What? I think there is. Why? I think there's a, what is it? Uh, not Which entangling. It's one of the other affixes. That's why. Yeah. 
That's just like to see them. It's suffer pretty masochistic, or... yeah. What okay, are some of the other ones we uh, we can see? Bolster on sucks, so I actually really hope we don't see Bolster on that, that is a cursed dungeon. That's what I was thinking. That's very cursed. I, I do want to see Oldamon. I like. I want mm, that dungeon. Fair. Hmm. Yeah, we haven't seen. We didn't see that last weekend, right? So that could be a yeah. cool one to uh, to have. There's some other dungeons as well. We still haven't seen as well, right? There's another season two. There must be one more season two dungeon we haven't seen yet, by my calculations. So that could. Yeah, it's I guess probably, there's Nelthera's, uh, uh, and then there's also there's also a couple of the there's under oh I guess we saw Underot last weekend okay yeah mm-hmm. yeah we you saw Underot and VP last weekend that's true okay so we've the, seen everything except for Nelthera's and Oldaman uh, from this season's yeah. pool which that should be that should be fun maybe we'll see a repeat though of something we saw last weekend could be a Vortex Pinnacle coming back maybe flipping it from I think it was Tyrannical last weekend maybe flip that to Fortified oh, uh, see dude. how that goes. What if we saw some people snapping hey, mobs into Neltheris chains? Oh, oh. I was I was asking for the tyrannical Neltheran Slayer, but now that we're getting the Prot Warrior without it, I'll have to find a new dungeon where we can put like some spicy class in or like some spicy spec. I'm down. Maybe a well, Brackenhide that's not sanguine. We'll just give them that. Hmm. Well, we already saw Enhancement Shaman. Can you not be thankful for that? No, be grateful. anymore. Be grateful. More. No, <laughs> more. <laughs> all right well that is going to be it for us here on day one of uh of the great push group b we will be back tomorrow we'll see what that new dungeon is and we will eliminate one more team before we go on into uh into our sunday thanks both tettles and makes for joining me here and to zyro and nagura who were on earlier and will be on again tomorrow unless zyro's house has melted <laughs> which is a distinct possibility we will check in on that uh, to see if it's worked today. out we'll check in we'll check in we'll check we'll find